uh, training workshop, as we like to call it, for uh, VDC 111. As most of you are uh, uh, teaching this course for the first time, at, uh, and uh, several of you have requested, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to have this uh, training session so that uh, we can uh, kind of uh, get on the on, on kind of the same platform and uh, make sure that we are uh, teaching the course uh, the way it is. I I admit I appreciate also that we are in the last uh, two weeks or so of the course, but at least we can do a slight bit of course correction especially when it comes to uh, uh, comes to assessments and and final assignments etc yeah uh, we are also doing this as part of our uh, e club activities because we are uh, 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 kind of categorized workshops trainings uh, uh, etc un un under this uh, club it's also something where the institution innovation councils of uh, that the Ministry of Education wants us to do. It's it's uh, one of the capacity building programs. And uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, we are all here. And uh, the people who are going to uh, run this are, are uh, Vikas Srivastava. Vikas, you can, you can see his name. Uh, Adarsh uh, Chintalapati, then Rajeshwara, uh, who is the course coordinator, uh, deputy director for education in uh, in VDC, and there's Ashutosh Tiwari uh, and uh, myself. The only claim we lay to uh, to being being the so instructors is that we have uh, we have probably a, a little more experience than you two have in in uh, you you people have in running the course. And I hope that you can, as we learn from our mistakes, that you also are able to uh, to learn. Uh, let me emphasize that this is going to be an interactive course, so that's why you call it a workshop. So it's not that you will sit and listen to us and uh, watch us show presentations. We will talk about the, the modules in the course and we will also then have you do some activity that will uh, help bring home to you what exactly we mean by, uh, by, by the kind of uh, principles and insights that we gathered from, from the course. We will follow the 20 step structure yeah, we don't want to change that. So within that structure, there's a lot of uh, freedom for you to uh, make some uh, changes, but the structure will be the same. And we also want to uh, ensure that assessments that we all do at the end of the um, semester are also done very, very uh, similarly. So what you will see is a, a deck of slides from each one of us uh, uh, that uh, mimic the flow in the, in the workbook that you all have. Uh, use these uh, slides as a guide, okay? It's not where you want to go and uh, talk to students and just show them the slides and read through. But uh, wherever possible, use examples, use uh, cases, have them uh, get into small groups and discuss a certain uh, issue, uh, discuss their values, whatever it is, uh, and, and then make sure that they learn that way. That's, a, that's what we mean by experiential learning. And uh, we want to make sure that we do that a lot more uh, in this. So what I'm going to do right away now is to uh, put you into groups. And this is a co combination ice breaking or warm up exercise plus uh, gives you an idea of what, uh, uh, what kind of issues that we need to deal with in the first module, which is about uh, what personal values. So the personal discovery module, where we look at and, uh, and get insights out of what our personal values are and how they help us or how they impact the way we uh, may do business or the way we work, yeah? So what I will do is uh, uh, we will... Uh, uh, Sridhar, uh, welcome. I'll come back to your question later, yeah? That you have post posted on, on, on the chat. Okay. Uh, I'm talking to Sridhar Pavisati. Sridhar, Valeti also welcome to the to the to the session what I'm going, yeah so what i'm going to do now is uh, have you distributed into into groups there are about uh, 30 pe 33 people so we'll have maybe uh, five or six groups uh, who is going to do that rajesh or ashutosh i can do it sir i'll do yeah. it all right vikas will do it so i'm going to give you uh, two cases and you're going to be uh, discussing in your groups on those two cases. The odd number groups will discuss case one, the even number groups will be discussed case two. And I'm going to tell you the case, so please listen carefully. So the first case 
is about uh, is a story about two friends. These two friends have been very close to each other. Their families have been close to each other uh, for a, for the longest time, and they're now doing uh, an MBA together. Yeah, and they are uh, they are also roommates in, in the hostel, and they are uh, regular, you know, very good students who are doing very well, uh, even brilliantly. Now, one of them, in the second year of uh, of his MBA, he felt seriously sick, and he could not uh, finish his assignments and do his degree. So he basically, the second year was a washout. So which means that he has to do really, really well in the third year. Uh, so that he can get his uh, MBA. He spent a lot of money, obviously. He comes from a poor background, uh, from from a rural area, doesn't have much money. So a lot of money has been spent. He's got family to support uh, once he starts working, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what, one day, this, this, this guy comes to his friend and says, I need a lot of money. Can you give me so much? He, he asked for some uh, one lakh or one and a half lakh rupees. Yeah. So this guy said, yeah, sure, but why do you want it? He said, I really need the money. He said, why do you want it? He said, I'm going to buy the question papers for, uh, for, the, for the final exam so I can, I'm guaranteed to pass the exam. Yeah, I need to do it. If I don't do it, I, my career is ruined. My family is uh, both financially and emotionally ruined. So I really need the money. You are my best friend and uh, please give it to me. Yeah. So now... What you have to discuss, you might think that I'll ask you to uh, discuss whether he should give the money or not, or what he should do. No. Uh, what uh, the question you need to mull upon in your groups is to say, what are the implications? Yeah, what are the implications uh, to the two individuals if A, uh, the first individual gets the money and B, the second individual gives the money? Yeah. What are the implications if the, the second guy doesn't give the money? Yeah, so what, what happens? Implications to the relationship, implications to whatever, their friendship uh, and, and, and their family connection. And then what is the wider implication of uh, a person like him who has now cheated on an exam or potentially cheated? What are the wider implications in, uh, when he gets, goes to work and starts working and, and what could happen there? So those are the two things. Uh, Vikas, can you uh, now do the breakout for the, well, hold on, uh, let's, we have to do the second test, second case. Yeah, the first case is that the second case uh, is about a, a woman working in a, uh, in a big corporate uh, entity. She has been uh, repeatedly sexually harassed by her boss. Her boss is a senior guy in, in the company and uh, uh, she has been harassed and she files a complaint the company takes cognizance of that and uh, they said we want to keep it quiet so they settle for a very huge amount yeah uh, lots of money and she takes the money and she, and she is not supposed to talk to anybody she's not supposed to file a case against them she's not supposed to do anything else other than just take the money and leave yeah they don't want to take any action against the senior manager because this guy brings in a lot of money He's, he's their star performer and he, under his, his leadership, the company's profits have doubled in the last five years or so. So, uh, and so she takes the money and leaves. The sec uh, then what happens is after a, a, a few weeks, she finds out that he's been harassing other employees, not surprising, uh, even before he started harassing her. And it still continues now, even though he has... Uh, uh, been warned and, and after her settlement and even though his uh, actions have come out. So again, the questions you have to mull upon is what are the implications? What would have happened if she had gone uh, public with it, number one? And what are the implications now that she has not gone public? What, what does it say about the company that they have, uh, you know, uh, tried to bury this and they still keep on this guy because he's... Uh, He's a money spinner. He makes a lot of money for it. So those are two questions. Yeah. So Ashutosh, I'm sorry, Vikas, uh, into the breakout room. Don't put Sri in there because uh, he said that he will probably not be here for a longer time. Yes, yes. Uh, so I'm just uh, assigning uh, the groups automatically and uh, the organizers and uh, uh, the guests can uh, stay in the main room. No, no problem. We can decline that request. Thank you. <clears throat> and the instructors will kind of uh, walk into your rooms and uh, help you or, or kind of see the discussion. 
So we have, uh, let's give ourselves about 15 minutes for this discussion for each team. And then we come back and spend five minutes on uh, uh, lessons learned. Okay, sir, I'm opening all the rooms now. Because I've set the timer, so I'll, I'll send, send you a reminder when to close. Eleven people in the main room. I think other other than Adarsh, uh, Vikas, Ashutosh, Rajeshwara. Uh, uh, even, even I'll be leaving a little early, but yeah, that's why you joined us. Okay, uh, and uh, Chaitanya, everybody else, could you please uh, join a room? It's it's good uh, relearning also for people who have <coughs> been teaching this. Uh, for a while. So please join uh, the rooms that you've been assigned to. I mean, did you get the invite? Shakravartalo. He is he's actually joined, but he informed me that he's, he'll be in and out and he's in he's some other family function. He'll be in and out. That's what he told me. I told him, like, do uh, the best you uh, can. I think everyone joined now. So. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So I'm entering me, uh, room one. We can just like enter other rooms and just have a quick look, right? So we can. And the only person who's not joined today is uh, Mr. Venkateshwar He put a message in the group that he's uh, invited to some Republic Day function. So guys, just go in the groups and, you know, listen mostly. Don't try to take, <laughs> take over the conversation. I'll go to five because Good morning, sir.
I, I was in breakout room one and three. Yeah, that's going fine.
Hey, Balkmar, Shri, <clears throat> you're on mute, of course, that's okay. So uh, while I'm finishing my budgets for VDC and everything, I'm just taking a couple of stocks. Do you need anything from me for the ACIC meeting? Anything? Uh, not as of now. Uh, okay. Maybe tomorrow morning we'll, uh, we'll see whether we need to add something, right? As of now, we are uh, okay. We are good to go. Absolutely. That's what I just wanted to confirm before. I will, uh, I will put some notes for the pitch and send it to you also. So you have no problem. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> Ashur, <clears throat> time maybe? Sir, uh, Sorry? Two minutes. Sir. So last uh, one minute I'm going to close because it takes 60 seconds for it to close and they come back to the main room. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a broadcast uh, just I've done one broadcast already for five minute reminder. And now here, yeah, I'm doing a broadcast for. Ashtosh, we are trying to record the breakout rooms. I don't know how... Uh, no, inside it's not possible. I am closing it now. It's uh, 10.29. So I am closing all the rooms. Yeah, because uh, I mean, even in the breakout rooms, if uh, we, I, myself and Vikas are having discussions, let us uh, have a record it on the personal lap desktops, but it's there's no option showing up. No, it's not. Yeah, so about 15 more seconds to go. So we'll be reassembling the main room shortly. Okay, all welcome back. I hope you had a, uh, an insightful session uh, where, where you could uh, uh, talk about the problems. We won't be able to get everybody's uh, feedback, so uh, but we'll have other breakouts where you can uh, talk about. What I'd like to do is maybe uh, you have two or three people talk uh, from. Uh, so let's let's take one of the odd. Uh, our number teams and uh, who would like to share about what any any insights that came out of your discussion who would like to go sir yeah, yes. uh, the implications are uh, people will not be having if 
uh, if these ethical values are not carried by people then in future uh, the society at large will be uh, impacted because if in little things we are faithful then we can expect to remain faithful even in big things so just for getting through an exam though he is from a poor background uh, it doesn't mean that uh, he has to qualify the exam just by going for malpractice instead he can ask his friends advice to give him some uh, uh, say training sessions or coaching sessions sessions so that he will learn from him and at least prepare the important questions uh, for the exam and get through the exam maybe that is one of the ways and moreover uh, a person who goes for malpractice always carries a guilt conscience with him so that guilt will be carried with him and he'll not be that confident uh, to ask others to do what is right so whether he is working in a company he again his efficiency also will be uh, low because uh, he has no subject knowledge so uh, that may uh, seem a difficulty for him to get through uh, when he is actually into work using that degree which is not completely real okay so the few patients uh, and even his children uh, later on when he makes a family even his children will not learn uh, proper things from their parents because home is the first school where children copy their parents so if parents themselves have done something wrong in the past it is for sure that they'll continue these things in small or the other ways even in their day to day life which people uh, which children quite closely observe and they will copy the same things and that will affect the society also in the long run so so suppose you know this guy is a brilliant guy all right he made that one mistake now he is feeling so guilty about that mistake that he every single day that he works is actually doing a lot more than is necessary and it's it's making a great big positive impact on him his company his family and his society would you still forgive uh, forgive that mistake it def- definitely if someone realizes that he has done a mistake and he um takes the responsibility of the mistake that he has done but uh, uh this being a, a societal issue like uh, getting a degree uh, by uh, doing a malpractice it is not uh, to be appreciated so in life someone says say uh, <coughs> someone does a mistake in life that doesn't have any implications with with to the society maybe to the family and then he uh apologizes for that that is a different issue but this is a, a bigger issue wherein he has done malpractice to secure a degree so the, even 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 he ap- apologizes for that so there is a, uh, like it it cannot be we cannot judge that he is a very smart guy and, uh, and now he has apologized uh, for what the mistake he has done right so the mistake has to be corrected so only thing that we can do to correct that mistake is his degree has to be cancelled maybe now he is in a better position he should take the exam again <laughs> to do the exam but he, we we will we should not uh, actually uh, say okay uh, and uh, take his apologies uh, and then go ahead i don't think we should do that because the implications are at a very bigger level okay uh, i think uh, uh, look uh, sorry gayatri yeah uh, even i feel the same because uh, so what if uh, other students the i mean junior his juniors also uh, uh, taking his an example him an example so okay today i'll somehow pass the exam tomorrow i'll feel guilty so that should not be the case even if he is doing something good uh, for the society even after he has done some mistakes so i uh, completely agree with what mr sunil uh, has said so he has to retake the exam okay. now because now he is in the good position all right but for what what about all the good work he has done over the last 20 years i still are wanting him to retake the exam is that the only solution or uh, or there is something it the the point is is it as black and white as you're saying 
so i'm not uh, with this group but then i would like to add a point sure. on this sure. uh, so um, as you were telling for past 20 years he's done a really good work and you know we have to take kind of uh, uh, what you know cancel his degree or something like that my take would be that if he's really built over the past 20 years and he's very good in the company he's very good in the work it wouldn't really matter that now you're going to take off the certificate from him or not because he's proved himself and and he's also realized so maybe the company that he's working with would want to you know have him and want to continue but then at least his conscience would be clear that he is done a mistake and you know for which his degree is being removed off but i don't think the company would actually remove him when he's proved over the 20 years by just because he's lost the certificate right now okay but so that's, that's my take like okay sridhar you had your yes sir yeah i think as a society we pay a high premium on winning and many a times people misinterpret it to be winning at all costs and i think that's a frame of mind we should not forget that uh, even people uh, when they make mistake they don't know that they can pause and it's okay to fail i remember when we were uh, when i was first applying for campus placement in 1999 and 2000 uh, one of the tips that many of my seniors gave me is saying that uh, see that it's okay i mean there might have been some bump somewhere in your marks and i think one one of my engineering subjects i got some less marks than the other right and uh, they said that most likely some some the interview panel will look at that and will ask you and you know it's left to you telling how uh, how you can explain yourself and i think uh, in the interview i did i did get asked that question and i described whatever challenge i had with that marks in that subject i don't i don't even remember what it was and what the context is but that did not hamper my interview rather than one placement offer i got two placement offers in that season right i think as a society we should, uh, we should develop this culture and and i think the best thing for the friend to have done to his friend is to just say that hey you know what winning is not everything right and uh, all other things we all make mistakes right and i think empathy led way of uh, guiding is is what will take us forward yeah thank you shruti you had uh, your hand raised as uh, we also discussed the same topic sir it's just an extension of shreedhar sir's point uh, that is what i thought is contextual because if it is an indian scenario ramesh and suresh in india we are actually only bothered about certificate we are not bothered about knowledge and your thing talent so we have to go for with ramesh but if it in some other country which gives importance to talent and knowledge we can go with that suresh so i think it's contextual uh, and uh, of course yeah that's my point sir yeah Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, I have a different submission, sir. If you allow me. Good. Sir, things go on fine for a few years. Everything is positive, bright, fine. But if we look at the past instances, even within our country as well, many of the scandals who have been doing. You take, for instance, Vijay Malia, Kingfisher. So what happened with this guy? He was bright. He was successful. I mean, everything going on fine. It's fine. But one day, when found guilty, whatever they have taken up the form, at that case, both the academic career as well as the party A and party B, as per the legality, will be found guilty. Mm-hmm. And in sense, their their credentials also would be lost for the both the parties for helping out because, as per the law, helping out an illegal thing is also equally committing crime. Correct. and now we take the instances of the past all the scandals once upon a time were successful entrepreneurs and successful businessmen but what happened after few years we never know the consequences in the future the implications are not really bright and compromising on one's own ethics and moral code of conduct today we may be successful but in the long run i don't think uh, this would be a you know some or the other day will be caught either by law or by god okay whether we believe it or in or not this is what happens and we and as i quoted the example it's true in most of the cases no way right. good uh the people who have raised their hands i want to go to the second case all right so we can have but i want to ask you a different question there not not the same question 
I want to ask you a very specific question. This question. This lady, she settled for a very large amount, took the money, and she agreed that she will not uh, say a word. Now I want you to debate on that. Whether was that the right thing to do, or was that the wrong thing to do? Anybody from that group uh, who has discussed this? Uh, I'm just asking about that uh, particular thing. Yes, sir. So uh, as we had discussed previously, we kind of uh, pondered on this point as well. So rather than actually speaking about the company, I would suggest that uh, her accepting the money itself was not a good way to go about. Because um, if I was to have an employee who can be bribed easily or who can, uh, you know, she could have been a whistleblower, but then she didn't choose to do it just for the sake of money that she's been getting or maybe some other pressure, but she could have gone. And uh, so I feel uh, if I need to select her as an employee tomorrow, she wouldn't be my obvious choice. You know? So what she's done was not right from her part. Okay. Now consider that she is so traumatized by the whole uh, episode or, or the repeated episode and she is so much, uh, she's working in an environment where this guy is very powerful. Mm -hmm. The company may or may not have the values that uh, you're looking for. She is being ostracized by her family. Yeah, she's been... Uh, uh, talked about in as if she is the one who's who's instigated and as most of us know you know as uh, actually most women know it's almost always the women is who, the woman is blamed for for the issues under those circumstances she says i don't want to live relive this i don't want to do this i i would rather uh, uh, you know forget this episode and go on with my life and i think i have is it's not a bribe that i'm taking it's 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 uh, something for me that at least gives me some monetary uh, compensation for a, for a problem. I, I may not get a job, but if I go to court or if I uh, whistle, uh, the blow the whistle, I'm going to be so traumatized that it might affect my mental health. What about if that is the case? So, yeah, my take, is it only for me or my group as well? <laughs> anybody, anybody. I just open this out. I'm just responding to... Uh, to what what you said uh, that okay. she should not uh, she's not a uh, trustworthy employee right uh, so i i would still um, stand to my ground because no matter how traumatized you are and i do agree being a woman especially in that group i was the only woman that actually voicing out so uh, i understand that being a woman fingers are being pointed at you and you really don't have a support system to go along with and all that but still we are women and women have more, uh, what do you say, patience and more, uh, we can take in more in comparison. So she could have gone to self-help groups. She could have gone to the media directly. Maybe the company wouldn't have helped her out. Yes. But she could have made the issue big. And we are seeing instances nowadays where people are doing those things, right? Okay. So she could have very well gone in for something like that because this this way, it's not just the compensation way, but then she's clearing her name. She's clearing her guiltiness that she's facing, which she will face for, you know, the rest of her life that she kept quiet about it. And maybe in the process, she's going to help other women also. So I think she should have just gone and, you know, been vocal about it. Right. I think we'll take two more uh, raised hands. Uh, Sunil Kumar Garu. Yeah, yeah. See, actually, like in life for everyone comes a moment where you can become great than the normal life that you are leading. And and uh, this person has that opportunity, right? So when you stay, go ahead, like uh, keeping your, uh, yourself more than for the society, all right? So where, because the issue is not a personal issue now. It is not a personal issue that she is facing. She is facing a bigger issue and she has to respond it uh, very great responsibility because when she uh, uh, put that effort to correct the malice that has been happening there, then it is for the whole society which gets benefited from the work, from the uh, whatever responsibility that she's taking by actually uh, taking the right action of uh, about her senior. So you should like every time, every time, uh, every person gets a chance to be uh, to become great, and that opportunity has come to her. She should rise above her personal uh, sufferings, and she should. 
she should take action and pursue action on her senior and set an example for the society because uh, if she leaves the situation runs away from the situation uh, the problem is not being solved the problem is actually there and uh, it is actually that other person will get so much of confidence that he will do it for everyone like all right i get your point uh, avilash sir uh, thank you um, sir i feel uh, in most uh, workplace harassment cases the the culprits are people who hold uh, power and positions and it's not very really, ideally speaking the the woman should speak up but in most cases it's not very easy for the victim to you know come out and speak out and challenge the the, the culprit so um, taking money is like a blood money you know in countries like saudi arabia and all we can commit a crime and then pay the the family of the victim and uh, come out of it okay so, i think i think th- thanks i think we'll uh, we'll stop there with the uh, uh, questions thanks hari and uh, gayatri if you can take it up later because i want to finish off the session but before i i finish i want you all especially the people who are in uh, in the second uh, who handled the second place case none of you even talked about what is the responsibility of the company where uh, uh, this happened yeah uh, so now you can also understand what happens to women who are har- harassed or uh, raped or whatever that there's so much onus and so much emphasis being placed on you should come out you know like sunil garu said rise above your your problems this is this is a big societal issue but society is not there to help them so think about that when you uh when you when you actually discuss these kinds of cases now why did we do this why did i do this the reason i i did this is for all of us to understand and appreciate that is probably not a uh, simple straightforward clear cut uh, yes or no answer to to situations that arise that test your values and that's why we begin this course with with a with a discussion of uh, of values it's it's called personal discovery through entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is not the end goal it's it's, it's if you want uh, if you want to be a little more philosophical it's personal discovery that's the end goal and by discovering you who you are and what your values are and how you apply your values how you uh, how your values are challenged and what do you do under stressful conditions uh, will make you a better entrepreneur may will make you a better employee will make you a better worker okay that's the whole point of of doing this and and uh, when we have this when i have discussions like this with uh, with with students it really brings out a lot of very important insights because you know we have some fixed uh, fixed things and oh you have to be honest all the time all right uh, if you're dishonest that's it you make a mistake you're uh, you're out yeah what about the the chance to learn from those mistakes doesn't matter if it's a small mistake or a large mistake so how do we make our students and people who are getting into entrepreneurship uh, uh, define uh, and and live their values live their values not just on e- in easy times but when we uh, when when things go rough and they will go rough yeah you will have 100 people coming to uh ask bribes for you if you want to set up something yeah if you are if you are a big company you can reject that you can push them back but if you are small if you are uh, four people and for the last one year one and a half years or two years of the pandemic your business is uh, stalled and you're not making money somebody says that you you bribe me so much and i will do uh, you know i'll make sure that uh, i i kind of make an exception in 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 uh, rapidly clearing your application for setting up a factory yeah then you decide what to do then then it's not a question of you alone it's a question of you and the people you work for and the uh, other connected people whose livelihood uh, depends on uh, on on you and you as 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 a business owner things change somebody said that uh, i think it was shruti who said in the chat that uh, everything is uh, contextual uh, and you have to see the context i'm not saying you forgive uh you know what you see as breaches of ethics or breaches of uh, or values your values are your values all right you know a a person who's uh, 
who's very honest and he says and he's got a great work ethic uh, but he's a, a thief has as strong values as somebody who is uh, who's doing a uh, a proper job yeah so it's about trying to make people understand not trying to judge them right you're good you're bad you're this and that's the kind of thing you need to bring into the value discussion because the value discussion and and trying to understand how your values your behavior and the behavior of everybody else in the uh, environment uh, ecosystem that you work in affects the decision that you take is an important skill that i think they need to do it becomes a little bit difficult because we have first year students coming in so it's difficult to uh, kind of push this discussion but we need to find ways of doing it shridhar you had a point uh, you also mentioned that it's first year students who are coming in for me the second challenge that i find with opening many topics and concepts to the students is also that many of them are first generation learners correct the the book is a wonderful book because it's written for high school students in korea right i mean it's 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 a very very uh, drill down version very simple version but still for our first generation learners it's 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 becoming difficult to go at a pace to cover 20 steps right but and that's where you know uh, what i have benefited the 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 trick i used is to spend a lot more on the step 1 and step 2 right i mean if we have those solid things about saying what are you even thinking of what are you enjoying what are you liking right and then how do you build a team how do you even conceptualize what is a shift that we want to do right i mean and and many times the children are opening up their minds into oh can i think of this right many times the way we have positioned entrepreneurship innovation in the country is something that which only iits and iims can do right and that's unfortunately the chasm that we have built so for some kid who's moved into hyderabad or or, or visakhapatnam or bangalore to even start this course we already put this thing telling that you are going to be an innovator and all that stuff right so i think that contextualizing helps and thanks uh, bala for for putting this in that context right we need to instill those values and when i, I really had a delightful moment when i was teaching the students of architecture where i asked them to reflect on and say whom can you with whom can you be there for 5 years do you know them well enough do your values match right and that conversation opened up very interesting thing right so i think i think that's uh, i just wanted to share that wonderful moment from from thank this course thank you i mean you have, i think you hit the nail on the head because uh, not only are, are these first year students they're coming from institutions where they have not been uh, were not been habituated to actually questioning things he said i'm dumping information you learn it and you write pass an exam you know whether it's some uh, whatever the gayatri or, or or this or or even their high schools uh, unless they go paying a lot of money going to uh, an oak ridge or or something like that they are habituated to just listening and that's why your role becomes much more important is that open up their minds yeah you simple exam these are maybe a little more complex good for us as instructors but maybe you simple examples when, uh, when it can be anything even you know uh, going to the market i mean how if if you ask that how egregious is that uh, uh, buying question papers as compared to somebody who saying i got i got lower percentage of marks so i'll forge an uh, other backward classes certificate and get admission into medicine yeah this guy has done uh, it in one instance for a final exam that guy now has got into a system where he may or may not succeed that's not the point yeah you can say oh he succeeds and so what's the big deal yeah so the point is where do you draw the line it's like you know you can't be you uh, at at some point you can't say that i am a little pregnant versus i am a lot pregnant if you are pregnant you are pregnant and uh, similarly where do you say that this is yes or no i will not negotiate uh, on on these things but somewhere else there is a there is room for uh, doubt there is room for some kind of flexibility that will allow us to to not only do something but learn from uh, from from that so i think that's the whole point of doing the personal values and uh, section the first personal discovery thing where then you also look for those kinds of things in your uh, uh, in your students in your, in your sorry in your team that uh, you are building a team so what i try to do and what we try to do is say that what are the team dynamics that are at play not about what is right and what is wrong 
Yeah. What are the team dynamics? I even go to the extent of giving examples saying, how has jealousy and hatred motivated some of the great minds uh, in science? Yeah. So those are not saying that you should be here, you should hate someone, but how can you turn something into a positive and, and, uh, and, and understand that? So people need to start. And I think we will also look at uh, uh, ways of uh, providing you with more uh, simple case studies so you can use them in, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the course. Yeah. So that way we, we run that. And once you have the value system done, you kind of, uh, uh, you know, smoothly, seamlessly blend into the whole thing about what is the purpose why am I here? And if I'm here for doing something, why? Uh, what is the purpose of my com company? Yeah, it's not about making money alone. You need to then, uh, you need to uh, encourage them to talk about what is bigger. Not that I, I want to save the world. That's great. But tell me now how you're going to save the world. Yeah, very specifically, that's in your control. So when you, uh, purpose statements are very important because that is your, uh, you're telling the people, telling the world that this is how I want to do it. When I was working in Unilever, until about 2004, the purpose statement was growth, growth, and more growth. We want to double our profit. We want to uh, improve uh, volumes, etc. Then there was a certain switch that happened where they said, we want to do good yeah, to society at the same time, do well for ourselves. Completely changed, where you change the focus from saying, I want to make money, I want to make money, I want to make money, to saying that, I want to leave the world. In fact, those are the subtexts in, in our uh, purpose. Uh, we, I want to leave the world in, in, in such a way as to, uh, it's better than what it was when, when, when we first came in. and was in. So those are the kinds of things. Use those examples of big companies, small companies, etc. Yeah. So I've not gone through the slides. The slides are there for, for you. You will get the deck. Uh, but think about these kinds of things and use your... Uh, I guess you, you've gotten the, the freedom to, uh, to actually say that I'm going to set these kind of things. There are some cases in the, uh, in the book. Now, when, when students uh, actually write down their, uh, what are their values and they choose their best value, start a discussion. Why do you think this is uh, the value you love the most and why? Uh, and I've, I've seen students who have say, oh, this is not really number one. For me, number one is uh, trust. Number one is this, etc. So have that discussion. So they actually, by the time we finish personal discovery, they start becoming better persons, better people. Yeah. So uh, I think that's that's what I wanted to do for uh, the first session. Uh, Can I have a minute, Bala? Sure, sure, sure. So there was, uh, I, I was seeing that this class after values discussion and all was getting into very safe territory, right? I mean, everything was family is important, then money is important, and that's probably everything else, right? Mm -hmm. Then I wanted to, when I tried to introduce them, the purpose thing, right? Where does Where is purpose born, right? And I told them the importance of simple instances in life that change, uh, change makers' minds, right? And I said, you know, imagine in this class, suddenly for some reason, I just walk up and slap one of your friends, right? I had to break that, that, that safe boundary that they had, right? then what do you think will happen? And then they said, okay, I, we will do this, we'll do this. But nobody thought of contesting the authority, right? The power differential is so high in our students' minds that they don't think that, okay, they can take uh, this to VC, you know, vice chancellor or police or whatever, right? For, for their mind, they only said, okay, fine, we will try and do this, do that, support our friend and stuff like that. Uh, actually, and that's what I said. Uh, sorry, go, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I'll just complete. That's what I said. You know, see, sometimes you may not be able to do something at the right at that moment. But who knows? After you folk graduate, you may end up creating a new university for yours for, for other children to benefit from. And you will allow things, sometimes instances come enter our life and make sure that they persist for a long period of time. Right? And some point of time you get the opportunity to create that change. I think that kind of helps us cement some of these abstract things to their lives. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's one instance. When, when, my, when my son was uh, about seven years old, uh, I was driving in somewhere and he and his friend were talking and they were, uh, and uh, so his friend said, you know, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and all that donating so much of their money, uh, half their income they want to, their billionaires and all that. So my son says, Oh, I want to make so much money. I want to make a lot of money. I said, why do you want to make a lot of money? 
He said, so that I can give away most of it. Yeah, so you don't know where, so this is not, uh, on the surface, it's about uh, the values, I want to make money. Yeah, or be successful. But actual, the actual value underneath is, I want to uh, do something for society. That's where you pull these in. These are simple examples coming out of, uh, of the mouths of children. Yeah, so I think it's important for us to get that. So Sunil Garu, yeah. can we? Uh, yeah, actually, you know, like you said, like uh, there is a drastic change in the attitude of the people. I want to make money to something different yeah. because you no, know, the the whole society is uh, actually opening up to understand that there is not much time left for us on the planet Earth <laughs> yeah. because of the climate change. Everyone is now realizing that there is not much time. Like we, we, we are doing so bad to nature that maybe six generations down, there is no earth for our uh, um, progeny to live. So yeah. that, that is one strong reason that people are uh, waking up to, okay, it's not that only making money. We should do something better to the society, better to the earth, the mother earth. I have seen this... Uh, a realization in many people that okay whatever small thing i do it should uh, yeah. actually uh, accumulate and accumulate into a better thing so there is definitely attitudinal change because of this fact yeah and most of our students want to do something most of young people want yes. to do something yes. 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 if you see because and i worked a lot in the last uh, year if you see the kinds of projects they suggested for their assignments they're all about improving society you know, this time I had one group who came that we want to build a total artificial heart. They have not talked to Pradeep Radhakrishnan, but they have, uh, uh, that is one of the things. This, we don't know how to do it, they said, but this is what we want to do. Yeah. So anyway, so I will, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for that healthy discussion. I think it, uh, it, uh, I, it energized me and I hope it's energized you also. So to go on to the next part. Uh, so uh, Ashutosh, shall I hand it over to you or? Uh, First of all, thank you, Dr. Balkumar. Like this is this is something like which is really very important, and yeah, it laid the ground here for the training. Also, it gave us gives all a lot of thought on how to we uh, like do this because again, this this is a part which is very interesting, and sometimes it becomes a bit monotonous. Also, like if we are just asking them like find the values and all, then then they'll be kind of confused. So, like giving them this background is very very helpful. So, with that. Uh, let me just quickly open the slides and yeah, the slides will be shared with everyone. So uh, we are not covering like everything from the site. This is just to give you an overview. So uh, what we covered in the till now is basically around the first uh, step or the first model of personal discovery, right? We spoke uh, uh, in depth about personal values, what excites them, what, uh, what they are good at. Building a team again uh, was covered. Uh, these steps of defining the purpose and the mission vision of the uh, organization, that is something which was just like, uh, we covered it at a very high level. It's not a very detailed thing. And even uh, in the instruction also, we were sold like, the, the step number five, the mission vision statement is something which is kind of, uh, it can even be skipped if uh, we have some time constraints and all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And uh, in step number five specifically, what I do is I try to keep it very simple is I take uh, this thing of uh, like Tata motors and just show them uh, about the uh, like uh, Bala was saying about HUL, how they did the transition from the uh, like the last to the current uh, vision statement. I show it for Tata motors. So I play that this thing of this is where what they had earlier. This is where what they did uh, later. All right. So quickly, I'm just quickly skipping through the slides here uh, is these things are already uh, there with you. You, I hope everyone has a copy of the course overview. Have, have, has it been gone through the course overview document and understood that what, because that talks about the entire delivery, how the delivery has to be managed to be that 15 week runway that we have, how do we manage the 15 week runway in terms of the course coverage and also in terms of the assessments also it uh, talks about that part. So I hope everyone has a copy. Uh, Dr. Balkumar had also shared it by the email when he had sent the invite as well, right? Uh, Rajeshwar will be covering this uh, towards the end. He has a dedicated session in which again, he'll be talking in, in detail about the 
grading uh, and the marks and all that i saw a couple of uh, questions in the chat on that so he'll be covering that uh, towards the end of it right so yeah so this is what i was talking about this is how it has been structured in terms of the importance of the topics uh, over here so the first three topics as uh, we can very well imagine are the most uh, critical ones uh, the defining the purpose and the mission vision is something that that has been suggested that it can be also skip if there is a time crunch so yeah i'm not going through this the slides in, uh, in too much of detail because that has already been covered let me move on from here so yeah moving on now to the solution discovery part so uh, when we talk of the personal uh, discovery so first of all yeah you first of all start with understanding your individual strengths and weaknesses your personal values then you see that who uh, can you find who resonates with uh, those uh, set of values build a team identify some problems so a couple of problem statements are mentioned in the workbook but uh, typically what i suggest to them is that you are open it's not that you only need to stick to these you are open to even identify something which is of interest to you uh, which is which something which excites you or which is something which is uh, you find very painful and where you want to make a change so you are free to identify that as a problem statement right so that is what is all about the the personal uh, discovery moving on to solution discovery is when uh, they start to explore uh, like the possibilities and the, the possible solutions on that so this is uh, where what we do is that uh, yeah so in terms of again uh, the order of importance here is that uh, the ideation impact user insights concept design and uh, the last two topics is prototyping uh, is these are the most critical ones product line strategy again has been recommended that if you are uh, like short of time you can like uh, do a very quick overview or you can skip that yeah step 11 is is uh, marked as an important thing of reality check that's where they talk about building the questionnaire right so uh, again uh, in terms of the concepts and how do i drive that this ideation is again uh, what we talk about so what is ideation we just give them an overview of that this is more of an hands on activity so ideation is less less and less of theory so typically like uh, i said is uh, we can use these uh, uh, like the problem statements which are mentioned over here we can uh, pick them up right and also they are free to like pick up anything else it is primarily around what is the innovation that they can bring in this uh, suggested area so what are the different kind of a thought process or in this thing like, like dr balkma said uh, a team was interested for an artificial heart they did not have the the know how how to do that but that's uh, what they wanted to do so again at the ba encourage people to come up with their original thoughts around uh, all these topics and they can see that a uh, couple of ways so, so uh, to do that one way to do that is yeah we can start with uh, the typical funnel approach is let first of all all the ideas flow in right so we can use these as class activities we can if we are in the classroom or not uh, virtual we can uh, ask them to write down their points we can start put them all together and then start to bucket them and see the feasibility of them the, what makes sense what are what are okay for, uh, like it, we can we can do some kind of a filtering okay ideas great ideas and something which is too futuristic so again that's where we like allow these all the thoughts to flow in first and then we try to then in the step number 2 is when we start we attempt to refine the thoughts over there around uh, how they think that they can solve the problems that they have identified right uh, again uh, in terms of like uh, it helps them to make a note so again uh, that's how it's been recommended in the workbook and also so again what is the problem that they have discovered ideas to solve the problem and who the ideas for so broadly they need to understand that okay i need to also start thinking about the target audience or the beneficiaries who are going to benefit from uh, this entire ideation process whatever the problem i have thought about and the solution so so who is it for why is it better uh, these are the things that need to they need to start thinking about right so uh, once they are done with that again uh, is the final summary right so they can summarize their thing of okay uh, they might have started with uh, like maybe 10 ideas and yeah this is, personally i've seen that happening a lot in my classes uh, i'm sure many of you will be also be facing this thing is students come to you uh, that i'm confused right what do i pick up right so they might come up with three to four different ideas 
and yeah what we we try to tell them is that, okay good good to have uh, five to ten ideas uh, on the table but try to see again when you're trying to refine the idea you have to think also in terms of the feasibility of the idea in terms of who what is the who is the beneficiary what's the kind of benefit that you can drive to them so again helps them a bit to to again further uh, like shortlist uh, the ideas refine the ideas right also what i also encourage them to do is like have that discussion within the teams and debate out so each of one supposing uh, they have five different ideas so each one who has proposed the idea has has a, like a mini debate uh, he will uh, he or she will talk about the pros and cons of the idea that what are the why should why should the team uh, work on the, on the idea so again that's an internal discussion i encourage them to have so that again they can practice speaking to each other they can uh, start uh, practicing like thinking about these merits and demerits of each of the ideas which has worked in my classes so again any other uh, thought process like where, where you have been able to drive this again uh, let's hear from you guys also like everyone here yeah. Yeah, Rajesh, were you were saying something. Yeah, actually, uh, I told this point before. Somebody was asking a question. There are five to seven people in a team. How do you evaluate all of them? So, in in this ideation stage, a lot of people are like, okay, somebody comes up with an idea, let's work on it. But uh, in order to keep everyone involved, when I give this assignment, when I give this template, okay, I ask them every person in the team should at least come up with an idea, whether it's feasible or not, for grading, especially for grading. Uh, let me share my screen. I don't know if it's the right process, but I use that so that everyone is involved. If I if I think if I feel like they're not getting involved, I question them. What is your idea? Discuss it with me. Okay, can I, I can everyone share my screen? Yeah, the screen sharing is enabled for everyone, so you can try. Okay, this is assignment that one of the teams have submitted. So in in, in the ideation, so this is the registration number. This is the person, and this is the idea. His um discussing and each person comes up with an idea and is discussing it may or may not be in the same exact area that they have chosen but they have to come up with an idea and uh, if i get a doubt that these people are not putting in the effort so i'm going to ask them please discuss with the idea with me in the class for a couple of minutes okay only then you're going to get your grade so this is one of the practices i follow we can go back to your presentation uh, no before that i just wanted to hear from others also that i think someone had uh... <coughs> Yeah, one uh, attempt that I made is that uh, uh, I asked the team uh, to uh, actually record a minutes of meeting that has happened, like the meeting that they have done, discussed about the ideas. So in that uh, documentation, no, like, okay, they said like, okay, this guy come, came up with this idea, this guy came up with this idea. And finally, we uh, discussed and then we uh, figured out that we can work on this idea uh, as a group uh, with a shared value, uh, with a shared vision, uh, we can do that. So uh, I asked them to do these minutes of meeting and then uh, come up and I said that uh, when you are doing this, like when you are calling for a meeting of your friends for discussion, so someone has to take the lead and uh, tell everyone that what is expected to be discussed in that meeting. So uh, tell them like what is the agenda that we have and then record the minutes of the meeting. That way everyone will, and I said like uh, the whole meetings, whatever happens. So every time no, you can actually ask someone to take uh, responsibility. Every time it doesn't have to be only one person who is convening the meeting for the team. So every time you know, there can be a new person convening the meeting and then doc, uh, recording of the meeting. So uh, definitely it would be very democratic and uh, I would be able to understand like uh, how many of them are actually participating. Like uh, that can be little uh, uh, useful for grading them. All right, uh, thank you. So anyone else would like to share like what has maybe worked or, uh, for them, what was something which gave good results when it came to ideation? Because typically I've seen this, like students will come with five different ideas and everyone is excited. But my idea should be taken forward and it's a bit of a Okay, uh, Ashutosh, I mean, something that I do in my classes, which I've done in all my classes, in fact, that 
before moving into creating an idea the first task i give them is i want each one of you to identify the problem that you are trying to solve in the first place because if you do not have a problem in place coming up with 10 different ideas is not going to work the first approach i follow is find out what is the problem that you are trying to solve who are you trying to solve it for and on the basis of that is when i want you guys to form your ideas now again when it comes to a problem everybody has their own approach so they come up with 10 problems again so i tell them that you know sit as a team see what your values are aligning to and you know come up with a have a common ground and come up with one particular problem in total and that is when they work on the idea so before moving on to the idea i mostly concentrate on the problem that they want to identify and for who are they planning to do this so that's something i do so, <clears throat> so i just uh, can i add some point ashtosh yes sorry please so usually like when i interact with students like if i ask them to come up with an idea like especially in the ideation stage so usually in the student perspective what they do is like they just google it and they just come up with the problem statements and they might not think about the idea and they might not think about the idea so you know like what i ask is like oh, so there are four four members in a team so i ask them to first of all identify what are the problems you are facing in your daily life what are the problems your friends are facing in your daily life in his in, in his or her daily life what your parents are facing just observe your surroundings what is the problem that even your surrounding uh, problems that are facing by your surroundings you just observe each and every minute thing because sometimes we might not be aware of what are the things happen like i just gave a, gave them a live example like while you know i just asked them like while teaching the teaching in the class what is the problem that i'm facing exactly right now so they were like just thinking and then i told them see i have writing the i mean i'm just, I'm just writing something on the board with piece of chalk so the problem with this chalk piece is like they just there is a dust just coming out of the chalk which is affecting my skin and also there is there might be skin allergies i just gave them the real time experience uh, examples and also i asked them to watch their surroundings and they came up with few set of problems as a group so and after coming up with few set of problems i asked them which will be the prioritized problem which is scalable and which solves the problems of many people you know then that's how i asked them to do identify the problem and just relate it with their values core values whether their values are accepting it or not let's assume that how values play a key role let's assume that i want to start a non veg restaurant okay so but i'm a pure vegetarian and it's against my values and it's a, it's against my uh, team's value core value i can't start non vegetarian restaurant because i'm very animal lover and you know these are the kind of examples i gave them so that they might like they this came up with a good idea and also i followed the emotional intelligence templates uh, to identify the problems and to scale their problems by scoring level thanks to vikas uh, he taught me that so yeah that's how i do I thank you thank you hari yes mr kapish uh, i would like to share a, share my screen please please i think it's enabled yeah you can yeah. so one of the things that we all struggle is to kind of uh, you know work with the youngsters on thinking about the future and how to build the leap forward to that um so i looked around and i said what is a pro- problem that they can relate to and probably discuss with their family right so i asked the question of saying that okay how has mopping changed in the last three generations what was your generation like what did your parents do and what did your grandparents do because mopping is just a uh, seen as a useless activity or somebody something that we don't put focus on but if you kind of look at how it has improved over the generation uh, then probably they'll have something to discuss on and you know go back and discuss the course and other ideas so this was one of the slides that these students made wherein they went back and got the patent number for the mopping stick right and how they are able to relate to and say that oh there is something called as a patent something called as new innovation and all of these things right and the the they we are divided into three teams of three to four people i have a very small class so i am i have an advantage that uh, that i acknowledge uh, so here when they did this assignment they were they really owned the problem they said okay i know what you are talking about and here is how my grandparents said here is how my father did and here is how my my parents did and here is how we do at some point of time we went into the into the fight of saying that oh surf was not there when our grandparents were there 
and we had to resolve it by saying that okay there was something similar to that in the grandparent age and something in the parent age right so so i think relatability is very important that i use in my class and uh, and this this is one assignment that has really given me a lot of delight and they they go on and say what all happened etc so then how things have changed through the time what are the mopping styles what are the conclusion and the team that did the this was the middle generation the team that did the present generation actually got in these vacuum based uh electric ones where you can clean your rugs etc right and it was nice to see you know how they can look at old and new in that perspective so so if you know that okay innovation happens in everyday things all the time then maybe they'll absorb and start looking at the principles in their own life thank you that's a like that is a great uh, exercise that you ran so really like, nice to see the outcomes also that they were able to imbibe and understand that quite well yeah that's again and like yeah we attempt to say even like hari said my approach is like try to observe things around you right i say like one of the things that i start when i start is who is an entrepreneur i say that have you observed your mom working in the house right how she she has way beyond it right? we cannot even imagine like time management resource management money management expectation management how she is able to juggle everything and like we give the optimal thing right and i use this word optimal i don't say maximize right so this is optimal is when you have n number of variables and how do you come out with this thing so i talk about that things so, so as an entrepreneur that's the thing you are trying to always optimize the sense of the output right so i do that i try to say that can you observe people around you and see like who other entrepreneurs can you show, think of any other examples of entrepreneurs around you even like a security guard who is in the building he is maybe uh, cleaning the cars as a this thing that, that happened to me when i was in pune right he was he was doing that as an extra this thing so again he is he is is going the extra mile out of this comfort zone trying to solve a problem so again for i try to keep it simple as an entrepreneur is someone who is like looking at problems identifying problems uh, providing solutions to the problems so again he said so that is for me the basic uh, fundamental uh, definition of entrepreneur not something which is very glamorous what we see on the tv screens and on the social media so uh, great so again yeah so this is can, the, can we uh, can we also hear from some of the people who have not said anything uh, because this is indeed for all of you so some of the other especially the newer champions can you share your experience and how you do this part no okay sir uh, hi sir i'm shruti uh, so what i did actually in my classes actually uh, they have written personal values so maybe six members five to six that is the total number of a team so what i asked them a sit with your personal values and sort it out what's your group value so you can actually arrange your group value this is the second step i told them and based on that group value you can identify an area maybe it could be agriculture or service or ai or whatever it is what you are interested and based on that area please do the research what is actually happening so like uh, what she she the social a kind of thing what is the thing so i took that two to three weeks actually to fix this thing so they did research so they allotted uh, maybe country wise so they will search india uk us like that they search what is happening in their area fixed area and then uh, they actually fixed one area then they started uh, the problem identifying a problem and solving that this is how they fix their idea so this is what i did in my class so three steps i followed okay yeah this is another would you like to uh, add how you do this part venkateshwaru you are on mute uh, uh, actually i have asked uh, my students to come out uh, with the problems which they are facing in the campus since they are first year students they have come out with the problem uh, right uh, on day one when they visited the campus uh, they were seeing some uh, issues relating to certificate verification so students were expressing uh, that technology was not used uh, uh, as far as uh, certificates verification uh, is concerned so people were dumped in one big auditorium and uh, names were announced and uh, they were trying to uh, come out with some solutions and uh, uh, few set of students they were also uh, coming out with uh, certain uh, problems which they see on daily basis like uh, 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 right between 8 am to uh, 9 am we can see rtc buses flying on national highway and uh, to different uh, college routes 
So there are some buses which uh, have high occupancy, some buses with low occupancy. So I asked them uh, to find out a solution for this and how uh, they can communicate uh, uh, to various uh, 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 people who stand in different uh, bus stations within Vishakhapatnam. Some kind of uh, uh, alert can be sent uh, 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 what is the occupancy level in different routes and all. So how do you handle somebody who wants to say work in healthcare? They can't uh, uh, look at uh, these issues, right? So how, how do you handle that if it's not related to Geetam, let's say? Regarding healthcare, sir? Yeah, because they choose their uh, areas of interest and then they work further in that, right? Yes, sir. So how, how do you, you allow them to choose their problem? Uh, yes, I'm uh, uh, asking them to observe uh, problems on daily basis. Based on that, uh, uh, they were picking up few uh, problems to solve. Okay. So I also gave them idea relating to our gymser itself. Uh, right. Many a times we can see patients waiting right at OP. Uh, within Jimsar and uh, long queues uh, for OP. And uh, one of the student was uh, trying to give a solution like uh, instead of keeping all these patients, uh, now it is virus time, otherwise uh, instead of keeping these patients idle in the queue, they can be uh, made to visit uh, different parts of the campus so that they will get some awareness on what courses are being offered. Though they might not be the right audience, uh, for us, but uh, they may uh, communicate to outside world. Uh, these are the courses which Geetam offers. Okay. All right. Anjula, you had... Uh, some... uh, yes, sir. So, uh, I asked my students to first uh, go... Th I, I explained myself, like, uh, I took some of the examples uh, uh, from the, uh, the startup from India, especially, like, uh, uh, with the help of uh, Mahesar and uh, Justin sir. We had a discussion and we have I, I got some idea from them and I started explaining in few areas what all the, uh, the startup they have uh, with a very small uh, the problem, how they actually solved it and how they become so popular in the market. So that is how I started explaining them and I have not restricted them for a particular area. No, you have to go to a uh, like agriculture uh, area or something like that. So I just told them initially I explained in every area, few, few example I took like in agriculture and in uh, the healthcare or in, uh, uh, in other sector, I just took some examples and I just explained them. And later they started coming up with their own interest. Like some of them have, after uh, explaining everything, they came like, okay, ma'am, I want to go and do something in the agriculture or I want to give some solution in the agriculture. That is how they started. Uh, that is how the ideation step I started, sir. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Ashutosh. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, sharing your viewpoints again. Yeah, there are multiple ways and uh, yeah, trying to see if they can uh, relate to something, so if it's something which is very close to them or even something they are, they are fascinated about like these. Mostly when you're talking of the undergraduate first semester students, some of the things they might be very, very fascinated about looking at it. They might sound a bit uh, outlandish, the sci-fi ideas and all, but yeah, let them flow and see like what comes out from there. We, we don't uh, like force them on that. Dr. Sudhan? Uh, Yes, sir. Here, I just have one small clarification. As per the course uh, handout and others, one is we try to identify in the first part the sweet spot, uh, whatever we call, uh, based on their values, based on their expertise, and uh, based on their interests, whatever they want. We align a specific area. That is how we have done it systematically in the first phase. In the second module, when we are coming to the ideation, should we restrict them to that specific area because all their um, you know achievements you call their interests and their expertise lies in that particular area so indeed i had a little bit of uh, confusion on this but as per the curriculum or whatever has gone through we have done it in a systematic way so whether to go on with the specific area or leave them alone because on the first module, whatever we have worked out will go in vain if we tell them you go on with an idea in whichever you want to do. 
Uh, this is point number one. And the uh, second submission, what um, I have done is, uh, uh, because I come from marketing specialization, there's a concept called, we, whether we, uh, I think everybody of us agree that every product or a service is nothing but it is a customer solution that we are offering, whatever it is. So in all the areas, uh, the few cases, whether you take uh, Swiggy, Zomato, or uh, Urban Clap, or all the case studies, how the inception uh, took place is all nothing but the customer uh, solution that they are giving. So I highlighted the case studies in here, then uh, talked about the characteristics over there. Then coming to the specific areas, I tried to talk, touch upon the latent demand, what we call in marketing. There is a strong need for every product that is available in the market, but that need is not satisfied by any existing players in the market. So from the existing area, what do you think is that? And how can it add value? That's what we did in this. So, I mean, morally, broadly, that is the way indeed I took up on the class because I understood in that way correctly. Sure, sure. So I'll uh, take it one by one. So first thing, like you said, is that, yeah, when you talk, talked about the, the finding the sweet spot, that was a part of the module one, right? So this is, uh, and you're saying that we, you uh, refined something. Now we are saying that, okay, now we are again uh, opening it up for uh, discussion and deliberation. So is, is that the right way? So the way I look at it, uh, module one is all about personal discovery. So that uh, finding the sweet spot or Ikigai is, is kind of inspired by the Ikigai model is more about uh, things which are internal. So, so what do what do I want to do in my life? Those kind of philosophical questions is where it is helping you, uh, the student or anyone who is attending. Even with the teammates, we try to sort out based on the common area interest and the skills and expertise. We had the mapping on diversity in terms of what is required to be different, what is required to be same. Sure. Right. Based on that, indeed, we have done the team mapping. Such a beautiful activity and exercise we did. That's where my question lies. So after doing it, this entire activity, do we allow the students to go out of the box and think again beyond what is their interest area is my question. Because even the teammates, based on what is given, we have aligned it properly. Okay. Okay. So let's okay, hear from a couple of people have raised their hand. Let's hear from them and uh, let, then let's conclude on this one. Yes. Uh, Sir, uh, sir, actually, I am also the similar issue what Sudam is telling. Um, many after personal discovery, when we are having a team building, many people have given their own choices of different different of uh, topics. But when we are making a team building, uh, we have given uh, limitations to at least make five to six group, five to six people group, or at least I'm saying at least four or five. So. Finally, we had some 10 to 12 groups. We are okay to handle, it's not a problem, but many people raise that this is my passion, but uh, I'm forced to go to a particular group. So it's not about force, but uh, I have tried, tried to convince them, but their passion is something else until personal discovery. But when you're coming to team building, so it becoming, it took a lot of time for us to convince and to encourage, motivate them to you know join particular team. So. But I also convince them, see, uh, the passion and your knowledge and personal is something different. But uh, when it is given like a topic, when you are going to uh, go to a team, particular team, so there is a lot of skill set required. Whatever you have a skill set like coordination teams and so many things, that will be added here. That is how I try to convince them. But still recently also one of the students, sir, I changed my topic from this to that, this to that. So it's happening. Whatever it be, but your contribution is required. That's what I told them. So let's. Uh, this is actually there is a problem. So the, we try to solve it. Okay, Dr. Balkuma. Uh, Mayesh, you had something, and you can go first. You raise your hand first. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Bal sir. Um, so I would like to see it in a different way because uh, when we have 17 to 18 year old kids in the class and we are trying to, like you said, like Sridhar sir said, most of them are first generation learners coming from a school where they are asked to learn something, where they are taught and we are trying to you know, make them you know, self-learn. Uh, so they pick up a lot of things on the way, right? And it is good. It is good they, they, when they understand, okay, uh, this is not significant. I have to do something else as well. As long as they don't keep it changing every day, uh, and, and, you know, it affects the course also. But 
I really uh, promote because uh, when we are looking at that diagram, no, let's not look at it as a template or a diagram. Uh, when you look at it, uh, a 17 year old kid coming up with a, a software which can protect uh, uh, hacking, they don't have any technical capabilities, right? How can we claim that they have the technical capability to do that? So it's just an idea which they uh, fell in love with and they assume, okay, I am a CEO, I am a manager, uh, I am the technical guy here. It's just that they're assuming it right now. Uh, they didn't even know the basics of C programming because they just joined the college, right? So uh, it's okay, but uh, you should be, or uh, I feel like if they uh, get exposed to some new idea and they come up with something, it's a, it's a win in my set because uh, 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 they are trying to learn. They are trying to observe more. They are uh, trying to, you know, have more exposure. So I really encourage it at times. But again, uh, specific about that template, uh, I really don't um, encourage to be emphasize on that because they don't have any skills as of now. They just joined college, right? So, yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, there is, uh, for me in the entire uh, course, this part is probably the most inconsistent uh, that we do. We all don't do it the same way. And, and there is a reason, uh, you know, I, I encourage uh, freedom of expression, diversity, you know, but, but the process we follow should be very, very similar. Because uh, and one of the things about the flow is also that you suddenly go from purpose statement to uh, identifying an idea. You're not even uh, thought about who the consumer is and what uh, and and what you're going to do. You just say choose from these ten things. Uh, that's a, uh, in my opinion, uh, it's being recorded. That's fine. Uh, that that's a major flaw in 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 the workflow of the course. Yeah. So what we need to do is to have first of all. Uh, 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 there are two things. One is we need to have a process. And for me, that process that I want to introduce, and we have been talking about it, uh, is that uh, for the solution discovery part, I want to have a more uh, structured process. I want to introduce the whole design thinking process here, which allows us to uh, uh, take any uh, element of subjectivity, this, that, out of there and, and make the process so that uh, people actually learn how how things happen and how you actually identify a problem. Even before identifying a problem, you identify who are the consumers you're going to go to and, and then move on to, uh, uh, to a, a, a phase where you're going to have uh, a prototype that is tested and validated. And, and then you go into uh, uh, to, uh, to the other areas such as uh, uh, value propositions and business uh, decisions, etc. We need that, number one. Number two, which is a, a lot more, it's not a processing, it's where I see from uh, what people have discussed and, and, and also from the experience that uh, there are um, tendencies to actually be prescriptive. Yeah, like saying that uh, you are, don't have skills in this area, so don't work in this area. They have expressed an interest in a certain area. It's up to us to find uh, a fit for them. I'm really glad, Sudha, that you're looking at even diversity to see if you can fit uh, teams into uh, and, and get the teams to be more uh, inclusive and diverse, uh, uh, and diverse. But also, the first level of filtering has to be what they want to do. Yeah, whether it's medical therapies, whether it's nutrition, whether it's this, whether because if that you see that, because even if I quote the uh, examples, what they have worked on nutrition and wellness, people who have some idea on that have contributed a lot yeah that's that is and, uh, one, of have, one of them have one of them have worked on the ai retrieving the deleted files with their own yeah. coding one yeah. of them have worked on the interior designing gap they have developed it little prototype also they have written the coding yeah, but, but the point here is the, uh, that that is kind of meaningless at this point because they have certain skills they have certain done some things here you don't uh, you know, you teach people from the, uh, different uh, uh, groups. Okay, I teach microbiology, food technology, uh, or computer science, or whatever. We don't, and we can't expect that everyone will be working on a computer science problem. Yeah, so we need to be able to understand what they're working in and help them along. Now, the other thing that's missing also for me is is the ideation. We need to have a proper ideation uh, exercise for the students, which means that. You have to run an ideation session. That's one of the most powerful things that you do when you're trying to uh, develop a new uh, product or, or, or a service. It hasn't been possible because of the, the pandemic and going to online teaching, but we should look to see whether we can do it on, on an offline basis. So I think uh, we have to uh, 
take out the inconsistencies, make sure the process is followed, and also that students, as far as possible, get to work in areas where they're interested. They want to create a solution. Now, the people in, in, in the one that uh, I said wanted to work on uh, artificial heart, yeah, they're all microbiologists. They know nothing about the heart. But that's not the point. I'm not, we are not trying to test, uh, evaluate them, assess them on, uh, on their ability to build a heart. We are trying to evaluate them on the ability to build a business that will sell a heart. Yeah. So I think we need to keep that very much in mind. And I think it's a perspective, a perspective that everybody should keep in mind when you are doing this. Of course, you have finished now, but uh, in, in future semesters, we'll certainly be introducing design thinking next semester. So that way, and you will have training on that, of course. And uh, uh, that way, we actually take some of the inconsistencies out. Sorry. One more submission is, yeah. for MBA, we have hardly, not even a semester more, sir, more uh, less than a few classes that we had got to complete the entire modules. And uh, the assessment and the activities time was really very, you know, the plan was given till Feb mid, but for us, we have to wind up in Jan mid itself. Indeed, during Sankranti vacation, we were working for the, even VDC also, we have taken extra classes. So, yeah, yeah that's, those that are... is my submission because uh, despite working so hard, students cannot deliver quality if the semester is condensed into a trimester, sir. Sure, uh, yeah, we... Uh, we, we and I have not much control over And it. the second aspect is uh, the first year students, till the last end, people keep joining in. Dividing the sections itself takes a lot of time. Every day, new students keep walking in and students keep walking out. Yeah, well, to be honest, but it's to not bring a very out a systematic year. pattern for the second semester, it is fine. But for the first semester, till even today, also, there are students who have not registered, sir. And we are continuously working on it. Yeah, we are trying to solve and, the problem. Uh, I don't know how successful we'll be, but uh, so uh, the quality in that process may, is is affected. What I feel, sincerely, honestly, telling, despite all putting I, all, lot I of suggest, all I can suggest is uh, while we're trying to solve the problem, we concentrate on the majority who are there in the class and. Uh, uh, we'll worry about the minority who register late. It's not. It's not like twenty-five students uh, out of uh, thirty uh, register late. So we'll wor we're working on that. Uh, but uh, you know, that's an issue that we have to solve at a university level. Sorry, thanks. That's all I had. Yeah, Apologies like, if I sound straight, but uh, this is my submission. We want you to sound straight. Uh, want absolutely honest uh, feedback so we can improve. That's that's our whole uh, uh, whole goal. Thanks, uh, Sudha. Yeah, like uh, my premise is like in four months, I don't think uh, the new students would be able to find out a solution, a business solution. So I started off with the premise that, okay, we definitely the students will not give us the total solution, which is a which would be a successful business model. What I am trying to drive them is aligned with the team. So in ideation, the team is very, very important. So how the whole team aligns is very, very important. So I told them the, the best thing is the democratic way, discuss every idea, then do a voting, right? Our brainstorming, there are so many methods where a team can align to one idea and then they can come up and work on that idea. So in four and a half months, uh, I'm not sure, very sure that they will give us a successful business model. Definitely for a model to be evaluated, to be successful, it takes a lot of time. Only thing is the process. They should understand that there is a process that they can rely upon and later on in their life, they can apply that process and be able to do something successfully. So that is what I tell them, like the orientation. Orientation is important. Absolutely. It's not, it's, it is not the objective of this course to turn them into business people. It's yes. the objective of this course to uh, help them understand how entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial uh, ventures are built. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying uh, when you're assessing them also look at the process they follow and whether they're doing the things the right way. Doesn't matter if they don't, uh, don't know the exact technical details of, of, of some product they're making. It's yes. about having them to understand 
how the process works and hopefully then motivating them to take uh, to uh, to think about entrepreneurship and uh, and get into the other system of vdc which is uh, the ready set go where they will be actually trained to uh, yes. uh, set up and realize uh, <clears throat> businesses yeah thank you and the next step of prototyping is actually very good because here we would be able to suggest them that uh, there are so many methods to uh, realize your dream like uh, whatever uh, say you can look for a freelancer you can look for a uh, professional group that can help you in working on your idea or you can try yourself so prototyping is like the step of uh, prototyping it will give you a lot of avenues to work on their ideas even if they if they are in their doubt about their idea prototyping will definitely be able to tell them what is the direction that they should look into thank you so much uh, yeah in like, since just to be conscious of time so one last comment uh, quick comment before we move on to the next topic who wants to go raj quickly you want uh, so while the ideation part is happening uh, in a team uh, sometimes there there will be multiple ideas comes up that and all can be executable that where some team i mean difference of opinion comes so in order to make them align to one particular idea is there any strategy that the current team is following okay. that's a question you had so so yeah uh, raj uh, what we are discussing again is that yeah one approach is that let let the students uh, do the canvassing of their idea right so each student has an idea you canvass the idea you convince others in the uh, class to join your team that's that's one way to look at it so uh, what i do is i do this thing is like okay uh, two set of people i see in the class one is a set of people who are excited about the idea they want to work on the idea so they are the people okay you form your own teams right the pe people who are left is basically then it's kind of like a, a force feed kind of a thing that then they are clubbed into a team and they, they they are given an idea to work on so typically i first of all i start encouraging that first please come up with ideas if they don't come up with ideas then i uh, like uh, do this kind of a force allocation over there in the teams so that's the approach uh, that i have been following is a hybrid approach uh, uh, for me which is now seems to be kind of uh, working yes sir uh, uh, sir actually in this ideation point of time when some one group is coming up with ideas actual other group supposed to peer review that is what i told them if the idea is not valid the problem is not validated if it is not accepted you have to change it that's what because uh, some of the groups are coming small ideas some of the groups are coming up out of the box ideas so uh, i am giving some responsibility to other teams each and every team supposed to validate whether any suggestions feedback or you can uh, counter you can counter their ideas with some solutions already there so with that way actually uh, it is i made it like a mandatory to the each and every group they have to respond to the other groups so, so that's how i made it little interactive and the if the peer review is happening so i think most of the ideas are coming up in a good shape so interesting so that's a, that's again an interesting way to look at yeah, if you can Get can, I, can I say something there? I don't want to hog the mic, but uh, I think when you're talking of ideas uh, at the ideation stage, there is no uh, judgment of uh, whether it's a good or a bad idea. Uh, it's about selecting and then going back to whoever the consumer, not not the other teams. So you know, uh, it's a, you need to be able to follow that process uh, much much more rigorously. In ideation, you come up with absolutely non-judgmental ideas. he sit down for 10 minutes and 10 people you know, five people can come up with 100 ideas so 100 ideas you bring it down in that uh, group itself it's not does a you don't assess those ideas or judge those ideas at at uh, point once you selected uh, the ones that you want to work on that's when you start applying the feasibility in uh, filter i've seen in in classes that people have applied the feasibility filter right at the beginning They, they tell the people think about ideas, but think of ideas that will only work. Then you're not going to go anywhere. Only only things that are there will will be suggested. Yeah, so you you wouldn't have moved from uh, uh, the Nokia phones to the smartphones. Yeah, so I think you need to be very very careful there. Uh, good to have other teams sit on and 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 help in the ideation, but 
the judging has to be done only when you've got a selected idea you go back to the consumer and say do you like this or do you know that and that depends on how robust your problem statement is at the end i'm sure a lot of these issues will be sorted out once we get the design thinking process in place i keep harping on that but i think we can uh, that would make things much more consistent thanks so one, uh, everyone for your thank you one request we have already earlier made uh, interacting sure. with 60 people is becoming little tough so one helping hand definitely makes a lot of ease because we have one more time or so one one more one more the more time so one helping hand it may be not not may not be like a completely leading the teams but at least to make some documentation small small things will help earlier it was ola concepts either sir said yeah. so if it is still working definitely uh, yeah. better to us so well, mukti sir let us know let rajeshwar know what uh, help you need and we'll uh, sure. we'll definitely provide some help sure, sure sir uh maybe Uh, can i just quickly finish up uh, on the question what mukteshwar came up with the ola concept uh, we are now having a few associate venture coaches joining in the respective campuses so they will be helping and they'll be moving around with uh, you know champions and coaches and everything they will help wherever you require the help on whatever the aspect they will learn over the period of time so these are all coming probably towards the mid in the early to mid february so for this semester you may or may not get enough help but from next semester if anybody wants such kind of help this will be rendered sure sir thanks a lot okay and for sudha's comment you know regarding the students joining of course balkmar gave an answer and as a dean you know it, even i was clueless why the students were joining as the times were going up and in the middle of the semester were going new students were joining so we have put a request to the pro vice chancellor and the dean the academic affairs saying that anybody who joins after december first week they will be all taught this course in the next semester that means the next when we are doing so that at least the class doesn't get divided into different parts so those guys who joined in october uh, <coughs> excuse me in december already half the things have been moved on so at least those kind of help i am trying to push it from my end so that at least there will be an equilibrium and then kind of a, a streamlined knowledge transfer happens to all the students thank you shri uh, thank you guys and then uh, with that i may have to exit or i have to go to the another meeting now so thank you all thank you balkumar and everybody doing this one and thank you all for participation and let's enjoy it thank you very much Thanks. see you all so great uh, so yeah so again uh, operational challenges they are there yes uh, so uh, rajeshwar is the uh, the point of contact for this please keep on throwing all the feedback to him please throw honest feedbacks we are all looking for honest feedbacks here so no need to sugar coat if you are facing any pain points please uh, reach out to him and of course anyone else all the entire vdc team is here we are, i we are also teaching i am also teaching the class and also yeah i have so at least from empathy level i can correlate with you at on multiple pain points as well so yeah please feel free rajeshwar is your primary contact but others are there please feel to feel free to pull us any one of us have a discussion and see if we can arrive at uh, this thing so again broadly uh, like uh, dr balkum was saying next semester onwards things will be uh, more streamlined because uh, when we talk of solution discovery is where we'll uh, use the design thinking uh, philosophy that the design thinking methodology over there that will make it a very structured process because again that is where we we ideation is basically the step uh, it's somewhere in step number 3 it's in the middle of the uh, this thing right so uh, in my classes i talk about this thing that's a typical what is the conventional thought process uh, is find a problem uh, find a solution and that's the like that's a pathway to success right a plus b is equal to c right whereas in, in real life in exams in uh, college life it's very simple you get a question paper you know the questions right but in real life you don't even know uh, know the questions so you have to figure out what the problem is before you can uh, like try to solve it so this is where like this uh, very very structured way of using the and thinking like you use step one is empathy then you define then you ideate then you prototype and then you test so again if you, this will be very helpful okay. informally kind of we are following the same kind of a process when we are doing this but now it will be more form, formalized and formed up so quickly moving from here ideation uh, we all had some good thoughts over there uh, what i tend to do is i try to, to uh, slow slow down a bit on this one because i want to concentrate a lot i even if it takes slightly more time in ideation i that's okay with me right i let the ideation process be there the students are quite excited a lot of ideas come a lot of debates happening some sometimes uh, happy and happy so yeah 
we spend good time on ideation moving from there into again one of my like uh, other very very favorite topics that's the reason i took up these topics to speak about is around user insights right so again uh, user insights is i i assume so i have a hypothesis of a problem right but is it a problem that is where i have to go and check with the user right so this is user insight is extremely important it's broken into four sub uh, steps, uh, steps over there in the book if you see step number 7 is broken into this thing so first step it uh, starts uh, basically talking about observations right so it is observation laddering then it talks about latent needs and then it is uh, <clears throat> the last step is um, just the full spectrum use cases so these are the four steps over there uh, again i just give them an overview so when we talk of observation right, what does it mean observation can be that you are a part of the environment you are here you are here there you are doing direct observations you can be outside the environment you can do indirect observations the purpose of observation is just to understand how does a person behave how does a person interact with the different things over there so that's the main purpose of observing right there's observation template which is there i just quickly run them through you, you can keep, do some observations also little bit i exposed them to the like this concept of ethics around the data collection ethics around research so again you, you as observation in a public place is okay but yeah you have to maintain the boundaries be aware of that just give them a small a little bit of a hint of that right not this is not research methodologies i'm not going deeper into that but little bit right so that is there then i move on to the 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 intervening techniques so laddering is what it mentions about i typically talk about the five whys which was which has been used by toyota uh, a lot so the five whys for, according to them is a good way to uh, come up to the root cause right if you do the root cause analysis i also emphasize on how not to do it so uh, just for fun and humor i say that don't please don't do it the arnab goswami way right he does the five whys he does five he does 15 whys but those are in a in a gap of like 10 seconds he last few 15 whys right? so please i say please control your this thing a little bit on uh, uh, listening skills so again when you are uh, empathy again so you're uh, asking your with the intent of listening and not answering back so you're trying to first digest the information process it then you ask the next question so just laddering is that way it's again active listening is a very like it is a very intensive process just explaining those things basic things of around active listening is yeah you avoid multitasking avoid being on the phone those kind of things so little bit on that then coming on to the latent needs so yeah uh, dr sudarshi was talking a bit on latent needs uh, again a great topic to uh, to cover a lot of things around that so latent needs again unexpressed needs so again sometimes like i use this example of henry ford he has he was he had the, the very famous quote that he said that if i went and asked the people what they wanted they, they would have said faster horse horse carriages because there was no point of reference before that where before the first uh, car that he made right so again uh, just sometimes the users are so uh, that's the, the expressed need versus latent need so there are things the people are aware of they are able to express them that uh, needs which a user may not be aware of may not be able to express so uh, i run it through an example which is a, a very recent example from india uh, is about 4 5 years back uh, this company called sare gama pa so they released a small uh, music player called caravan so that is a, a way in which like that's a latent need because again that time internet was there we had access to mo mobile phones we had access to laptops everything was there why do you release a device which is offline music hearing right so again understanding the the segment of people who were having that frustration of uh, trying to play music on their mobile phones and launching that device so they were bang on over there and that's a, uh, this uh, that's one example i take of latent needs of, of a customer and also uh, i try drive that point dot what dr uh, sudha was saying this between who the buyer user and the decision makers can be separate entities so again uh, the ads and all are very smartly targeting not the user but the buyer so they are targeting the the kids to present these uh, uh, the devices to their parents so i just say that okay, this is how we like uh, the entire uh, well, latent need uh, can be looked at right last uh, part is around full full use case spectrum so again i try to simplify that what is a use case uh, again uh, uh, same thing is that a user is not concerned about you or your product right they are uh, concerned about their pain points and the solutions to that 
So, so when you talk of use cases, it is nothing but care. Solutions to the problems that they are encountering. Can you speak that language? So that is uh, for me use cases. Yes, uh, Dr. Sada. Yes, sir. Uh, just I want to add up on few things here. Uh, we can also, I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to tell, uh, help, maybe put out my ideas. Uh, in this terms, um, I try to explain also the buying roads. In consumer buying behavior model, uh, there's buying roads like initiator, gatekeeper, influencer, uh, the buyer, user. For every product we take, for instance, if you want to buy a mobile phone, for instance, you want to buy a laptop, who is the user, who is the initiator, who is the gatekeeper, so that they understand the difference between all these. And in rural areas, if it is a tractor, who influences? Perfect one. So yeah, the opinion the buyer, leaders. Yeah, so buyer, user, decision maker. So I just keep it simple. I just talk of these three entities. So I show them that Saragama Karo video, small uh, ad, and say, now tell me that in this, who is the buyer, who is the user, who is the, the decision maker, right? I, I try to take two examples. I say that one is an example of uh, uh, parents with a very, with a five-year-old kid on the checkout counter in a shopping mall, right? The, the, the kid is shouting, screaming, while she sees the lollipop on the checkout counter, she so again, there, who is the buyer, who is the user, who is the decision maker, right? I then try to take them into a more complex scenario. I said, okay, let's uh, look at a B2B also, right? I come from a procurement background. So I talk about, okay, so when I was in procurement, what were the, the things in uh, which were in, in the play over there? And how did we uh, look at uh, these things and make this sense? So again, yeah, the, I just uh, uh, take that and cover these in the three buckets. So, so that, yeah, they have a broad level understanding they're different, uh, like this, uh, parties in play over here, different stakeholders over there. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that, uh, the last part of user insights is all about the use case spectrum. So again, making them understand that whatever you're building, right? So no one is really concerned about you talk to a user with, uh, I have you know, this thing which has got 20 features in my software or whatever. So they are really not concerned. You have to, to talk to them their language. So this is where use build, when you build the use cases, you're looking at your, uh, okay, this is a problem. This is the solution. This is a problem. This is a solution. This is a problem. Uh, what couple of us, uh, we have tried that, uh, doing a couple of, a uh, lot of brainstorming is we, we picked up Zomato as a, again, from a relatability point of view, Zomato is a, a company which is doing great when it comes to all this consumer buying behavior, behavioral economics, they are using all these concepts very, very nicely. So again, we take this off before, during, after, right? So before uh, a transaction is made, so Zomato keeps on tempting you with message after message after message after message and promos and some of them, they are they are quite cheeky and all. So I, I take a couple of examples of some SMS screenshots, some holdings they have put. So again, so how do you uh, build those things over there? During this again, so the ordering process, how what did it do? How did they look at pandemic and address that? And so exchange, giving the, uh, the, or the person uh, that peace of mind Okay, this person is safe, the temperature has been measured, uh, all the records they're displaying over there. After again, handling good customers, handling bad customers, so controversy. So one was that uh, recently one lady, there's a controversy between her and the delivery boys. So she had punched or that was there. So Zomato came up with the same. How do you handle those kind of things? So again, I just explained them that before, during, after, you have to understand the full uh, cycle over there and look at the touch point, look at, okay, what are the things care? Or then how do you address those uh, scenarios? So just giving us a little bit of uh, this when it comes to the full used uh, case spectrum. So that is typically how I look at uh, user insights. And please, like now, I welcome everyone. If you if you like to if you want to share your thoughts or how are you driving something that's working in your classes. So should we should we share the methods what we are doing or just uh... no anything any any high level thing I do, we don't we, we don't want to get to specific say again that's your style is everyone has their unique style if any anything you want to share I just wanted to like open the floor any any comments or anything over here.
No, actually, once uh, the idea is complete, then they are sending. I mean, we are asked. We have. I have asked the, my students to check and validate with the user and target group. And at the same time, there are target group. You have to make in different way. Not only the target group, but you can also find some expert group. But you have in it, uh, for example, somebody is uh, working on the helping, you know, uh, needy people. Somebody working on the nutrition. So it is not like nutrition is used by every man. I mean, every person, but nutrition related questions. But also, you should also approach the experts. There are some different kind of nutritionists. So we are first time guiding them to whom you are asking question. At the same time, once you get the data, that is, I am talking only primary place. Secondary, there are so many options. So from for the primary, once you get the data, whether the age of group and all, you have to check. Then only the data what you got is valid. Otherwise. anybody can comment on it so measure i'm telling again majority only and you can cross check with the primary data with the second data what is already available in the internet or so many ways after that then we'll discuss whether it is at least we got some 60% of the valid data some 50% or something sometimes some people are say i'm not getting primary data responses properly then i said don't worry primary data because it takes time by in in way of primary surveys and google maps or maybe because of the pandemic they are not able to approach people also don't worry but at least secondary data is valid at this time that we will see i mean even also if i am not sure because some something related to computer coding related i am i may not be an expert but at least i can approach some expert i can invite a guest faculty or somebody i'll get it validated that is what i told them so maybe actually i am already completing the seventh stage and completing the eighth stage also at this time seventh stage is being discussed uh, for the last uh, two weeks that's what i'm experiencing <clears throat> i think here our uh, personal experience is also <clears throat> influencing like uh, how uh, <clears throat> we guide the students so uh, <clears throat> uh, definitely one one suggestion that i gave is a questionnaire survey like everyone can uh, <clears throat> all the group should discuss and form five basic questions all right five basic questions about their idea and everyone it's very easy they can uh, take uh, answers from their peers like it can be a cousin brother uncle mother father and <clears throat> that way no at least they should be able to gather 30 to 40 responses uh, definitely that will finally give them little orientation towards uh, what is the validity or validation of their idea and one of the final questions should be is this idea a right uh, proposition for a business so you should take an opinion from the other person uh, whatever business sense he has whatever business sense he has he will be able to tell you a little bit about that and you can just ask him yes or no if you don't want to uh, get into discussion on that so <clears throat> that is that is one thing that they can do and definitely you should um look at the competitors so who is the competitor for you in this uh, idea so and what is that they are doing uh, why they are successful what is their revenue model so if you just look at them no that will also give you little more insight into what would be uh, the quality of success that you can look for your idea so Uh, <clears throat> i myself has a personal experience of guiding one entrepreneur uh, from right the first point uh, ideation till his business and it is a very successful business so because of that experience uh, because of that experience i am definitely able to give little <coughs> um, what they say useful insights into because i know what we did when we were working on that idea and that is how so the personal experience of the teacher is definitely uh, becomes uh, what do you say the launch pad uh, for uh, <coughs> these people to learn so definitely this session like understanding so many different perspectives so it is uh, actually um, is able to tweak even my perception of like grading is one thing i am i am i am actually keeping it at a very low level i am i am not trying to judge the students while the whole thing is happening because they are just 17 years kids 
so some are very introverts and some and because of their education background no like they are not ready uh, to open up uh, so grading is not so important but their participation is very very important so how they are participating and i am actually telling the whole team that you should be able to motivate your team member so that he also contributes so i want you all to see that everyone contributes so why you should give roles to everyone so that you no know, everyone puts chips in his role and that's how you should be able to build the team develop the team and uh, walk the whole team together so personal experience is i think one of the most important <coughs> basis here like how we are going to judge personal experiences are very critical for the delivery of the scores like uh, yeah. like other courses which are more uh, like theory driven here it's the personal experience which is bringing in that context and the flavor and everything over there the students are able to relate it because that's one one thing they see a live example that this is work for someone who is standing there sharing their experiences that's one thing so one small thing is regarding what you said about the data collection part what i encourage them is that uh, looking outside their immediate circle i say that your when you go to your parents parents are always proud of you no matter what so you if you go to them is it a, is it a good idea yes it's a excellent idea so i say that try to think it is it is difficult but try and make an attempt to see that who is going to be the actual user if if the if the parents are going to be the end users it's good if the if uh, try to see if you uh, you can find a potential a uh, user of your product or service and try to have a discussion or a conversation with them so uh, that's the only small thing uh, that i try to do you know the my- first first step of speaking to someone close to you is like it may it becomes ice breaker and maybe the next step they can go to someone they don't know because uh, this is the first time they are actually asking someone about an opinion of their idea so <clears throat> when i uh, suggest them that they should go and ask questions so i i wanted an atmosphere where they are comfortable and confident of asking questions and that experience so maybe definitely will help them in breaking the ice that they have and then they can go to someone who is uh, quite a new person to them sure sure yeah. okay uh, okay let's quickly go to dr surnarayana he has raised his hand uh mukteshwar uh, uh, sorry i just tried missed out one more point after the survey because uh, questions we are making whatever the questions they are making i told them you can add number of questions but uh, uh, try to get the proper data and all after the question the inference are important that's what i told the inference is conclusion is important with a valid data with a statistical inference it's not like it, it's not your opinion again once you you it, uh, once you finish the survey it is completely based on the survey only number one primary if it is secondary then you have to add all the links links and data that's what i suggested them it is not like you find some data in the internet you don't copy that but whatever you got the secondary data you have to add some uh, you know link or uh, references properly because the document what you are going to be read by an expert or somebody so we have to come back so that is because survey has a proper meaning so whether the question may be right or wrong is something different second thing if they are unable to approach any expert as i am helping them for example the women safety team they are trying to find where we can find the problem go and find the she teams so she teams is the police officer over is i have some contacts so i told them so they are happy to contact them they are finding a proper exact problem so that is what uh, i suggested them and one of the biggest challenges that i've seen at, in this episode is uh, they struggling to frame the questions so a set of questions that can give them uh, insights right because as you guys were saying they're all just 17 years 18 years there has to be a framework that has to be in place in helping like how we are wanting to set up that ideation for ideating about problems i think so, some sort of framework some framework has to come in that will help them understand even before going to uh, i mean those all can be figured out uh, reaching out to people reaching out to the potential customers can all be figured out but what are the sort of questions that i might want to ask these uh, the focus groups i think that's where we have to focus on rather than trying to uh, figure out who these customers are and how do i reach out to these guys should i build a google form i think that should be the second uh, secondary aspect and the primary aspect how do we help them frame the right questions 
right? To get those insights that will help them with the customer value proposition or to build their prototype, whatever it is, to build a solution for that matter, right? I think some, I mean, any suggestions, is there anything that you guys do there? How do you help them frame better questions? Not better questions, the right questions, I meant to say. Yeah, actually, we, I I explained to them what uh, what would be the layout of the questions. Like mm -hmm. uh, when you ask a question and the answer is some whatever the answer is, how you evaluate that answer. So there is some <clears throat> what do you say science behind the questions, asking questions and taking the answers. So as mm -hmm. I teach research methods to postgraduate students, I have little background on that and I actually discussed with them about uh, how you do that and what are the different types of questions you have like uh, when you ask them rate then uh, how you would do that so it has to be an odd number that you ask them to rate on zero to five right mm -hmm. so one to what so the little uh, background how you frame questions what are the typical questions that you can ask and uh, what you can inform inform from that answers so I, I just uh, told them about that basic thing. And mm -hmm. I said that everyone should, all the team should discuss on the questions. And for every question, they should write the intent of the question. And every team member should understand what is the intent of that question. Mm -hmm. And with that in their hand, everyone should be asking the other, uh, the other person the question and the intent is conveyed properly because everyone asks the same question but the intent is different no? then it also defeats the whole effort so i tell them that the team discuss form the questions for every question what is the intent because if the other person asks what is the intent of that question no? they should yeah. be able to commonly uh, tell like okay this is what we are trying to understand yeah, that's uh, similar uh, what I try and do a lot of times, understand what is the objective, why do you want to make this question, yeah. whom are you making it for? Yeah. And yeah, intent, understand the intent. But yeah, it is kind of difficult with these kids, 17 years, 18 years and with the class. Yeah, that's what I told them, they just asked five questions. So okay. you leave down a lot of questions, but to finally figure out five questions and one question is the mm. simplest, what their opinion about the success of their idea. So that, that one question they should ask definitely. And the rest four can be anything that they think would be very important for understanding the validity Lastly, of their idea. For this questionnaire, I'll ask them to just talk about the problem that you're wanting to solve and yeah. understand is the problem that you're assuming is the problem that needs solving or I mean, I would rather put these five questions in that bucket yes. than talking about the solution. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, Dr. Pabashek. Uh, I, I just want to add on to what Sunil was saying, was saying that what all can we achieve in this multiple constraints, right? Uh, an ideal questionnaire to be filled up by the right set of uh, respondents who are ideal customers. Um, in the ideal world, yes, but where our students are, where the limited social networks are, you know, at best, we can only kind of build upon where their comfort zones are, right? And today in my class uh, of, uh, you know, small class, we are working with four ideas. One includes uh, uh, setting up an event management company and it says, we'll blow your mind, right? The second is a team that is saying that, you know, I want to work on uh, giving the best uh, fashion solutions, right? Compete with Manish Malhotra of the world, right? And, and, and these are things that are, they are passionate about. They are able to articulate within their groups and talk about. But will they go down the path of uh, talking to an ideal customer, uh, ideal uh, potential buyer? It, 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 I don't know, right? I mean, uh, we might insist on all of it, but how successful will they be is something that uh, I'm still skeptical at, at this point of time. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it is, you know, especially in this kind of environment we're teaching online. How do you suggest we, we do that? I mean, are there any uh, tricks we could use? I mean, I think uh, what we should try and do is, one, of course, there's an ideal evaluation metric that, I mean, ideal way of evaluating the course where, uh, which we have described and which we'll try and do. But at the same time, try and uh, give more weightage to original content that the students are submitting, right? 
so that at least we are able to see that whenever we go back to the drawing board next year saying that you know can can some freedom be given so that some original content gets recognized based on the local context in the class yeah. right yeah. and i know i mean when when uh, the vdc team is sitting and analyzing they are trying to look at uh, how do i make this standardized for 4000 students or 6000 students and and these are these are a bit, little bit challenges of how do i standardize but i think in the first couple of years maybe we can kind of look at not over standardizing the assessment but try and work with the faculty and say okay as long as you give me a bell curve that's fine you know i mean um uh, i mean that's that's probably something that we should try and achieve yeah okay because for me those three slide decks are at least important because they at last opened up their mind and applied it to it mm, mm. right otherwise we don't know if we are talking to a wall with high five sounding words mm. uh, but i don't I, i don't know how many of them understand unit economics even at the at the final year of their uh, uh, ug or pg mm. right but we are trying to magically put all these concepts into their head in 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 15 weeks right uh, so i mean that's 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 the leeway that i'll ask in my course my students i know they are applying their mind they are struggling with this concepts they are applying and progressing but i don't know how do i kind of make sure that they magically fill up all that they, we want them to fill up in the all templates right yeah so that's that's one of the things uh, we are struggling with when we try to now uh, i guess transform is the right word transform the, the course uh, first of all i want to take away the uh, emphasis of, from people saying that i we have to finish the entire course yeah. in that 20 steps or maybe there are better ways around it where they get learning but they don't have to do everything and uh, fill in uh, for every step 10 templates that's a lot i mean it's not about filling templates so i think uh, yeah what you have said and what other people have said are uh, things that we need to take on uh, take on board when we uh, relaunch the course for the next uh, semester because the experiential learning also doesn't happen as much then then they are just saying okay we we fall back on in, in to the safety of uh, slides and uh, case studies and then uh, you know have a discussion and then then end, end with it because somehow they feel left at sea if you if you can't and and physically each one of us cannot go to each of their team meetings yeah so we need to figure out a way of uh, how we can be engaged in that especially in 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 idea in areas such as ideation so that they get the right kind of idea which can be validated and then goes back into uh, the next stage because after that it's it's essentially a process that yeah. they follow but the ideation and understanding uh, and empathizing with the consumer and understanding what they want and giving them what they want once they solve that problem then the rest of it is just a, a straightforward process and and one related logistical issue this is not definitely the vdc uh, course issue but is that uh, i have not been mapped on moodle for my architecture students so we are still off the balance sheet kind of an item you know <laughs> i and dr sunil I, i and professor sunil have kind of said okay fine we'll work on it we will meet and you know i mean whatever the the zoom meeting and all of that uh, and and i know i mean everybody here is stressed i don't know who will help us out to make sure that we get on to i appear as their faculty and that grade book is set up uh, and and you know i i'm sure the grade books are all set up for engineering uh, management courses and others but the little little other institutions i don't think it's all smooth yet the moodle g learn all of those things so that's okay. another okay. practical okay. issue we have rajeshwara who is there and i'll answer this question sir <coughs> this is more of a institute wise decision sir this is yeah. like you are in the institute of architecture and if they don't have any problem if you just follow what they are doing Okay. So I, I put this message in here because I get messages from GIT, the biggest group we are handling of twenty-five sections. Yeah. Uh, they they are into this model and everything. Uh, a PG, it is not they are not pushing that much, but for UG, especially the GIT, the engineering stream, uh, they want to they are running it like a pilot. They tried it last time, it didn't happen, but this time they are pushing everyone. So VDC doesn't want uh, doesn't want to be the only uh, institute that's not following that. So if you are in studio for doing architecture if there's no problem there you please do what is convenient to you sir. okay thank you sunil has been a great help but i'm just worried that you know at last both sunil and me are at soup telling okay how do we fit into the become friend great right. oh, so even even i am in the same boat i yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> 
So again, hi, hello. This is Reema. <laughs> hey, Reema, welcome back. <laughs> Uh, why why are the other institutes not following model i mean it is a standard for all all institutes i think except for medical science uh, gym sir everyone should be and i know architecture has uh, courses on model so yeah we, we, yeah somehow shridhar's course is not getting mapped uh, so we actually put up a ticket also okay sunil can you escalate that ticket to me i'll take a look but Sure. again i think from from my side as far as moodle is concerned all courses should be on moodle all the grade books we are taking grades only from moodle so yeah and uh, no actually when we when shridhar actually shared the his uh, 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 screenshot he is not getting his gilan on his uh, um, on on his uh, portal gilan is missing from shridhar's portal so when he has gilan only then model will open yeah so we'll work with it mile i'll escalate it but again rajeshwar i think one of the things we should make sure is that everyone gets their vdc course on model they should be it should not just be engineering because they are pushing it but i think all institutes should use model for the vdc course uh, madam especially this the pg they are not that pushing that much the ug i mean we are following it but pg no, i don't know if you even, no, even everyone is mapped on there no everyone should be there is no reason why it should not be if it is escalated to me okay great so that will take care of a lot of problems including couple of mine also thank you so much for that so yeah great so uh, moving on from here let's uh, quickly look at it so my quick last topic i had then we will have a short break and then other uh, should take over uh, was around customer value proposition so again uh, oh. sorry before we go into that i had one point also i wanted to make we were talking about ideas and you know what this course is about one question i had for for the team was is there any data from the past two years students how many students have come forward to take their idea maybe incubate it further you know following the next step process right so we can understand from first years right it would be great to invite them back into the classroom saying hey look i did this in first year and this is how i'm working on my idea for the second year or you know how my team is working so if there is some data that we can share as to students from past two years who were part of the first year this course has anyone taken their idea forward sure uh we'll take in try pulling up the data uh, we because uh, the students who enroll in rsc after this one which is our uh, the incubation pro pre incubation program we can try doing that but in terms of showcasing we definitely do that we we do uh, like uh, have these uh, like town halls uh, for rsc where we invite our students so they can see that okay these are the students who have taken their ideas to the next level and also we try to uh, invite them in the classes so okay vikas has the exact number 322 students okay can we get a list is this listed somewhere is there a website yes. or something listed yes we can share the list with you yeah could you please share the yeah, list we can yeah. we, we can reach out to them right i i think it's a great thing to see 320 so students who have taken their ideas forward and i would love to see if there are some from my old classes and again invite them back uh, i think this is a great motivation sure and one request is please also uh, you can encourage the students to join the rsc town halls this is where the rsc teams they talk about their their idea evolution and where they are in the journey so that's again a great motivation for, for them to look at these uh, like their peers slightly seniors maybe one year uh, senior two year senior to them but yeah they are slightly ahead in the journey so that's a a great motivation for the students to look at their peers sure thank you thank you so much yeah so uh, quickly i was uh, talking about uh, one of this topic of uh, the customer value proposition so again uh, this topic how like i just explained to this what is this entire thing of value proposition what's the relevance of it uh, there are some examples which are uh, given in the workbook i take those examples again uh, for me the definition of value i try to simplify it at a level okay what you are what you are getting out of something uh, you you remove what you are Uh, like uh, giving it so what you are getting minus what you are giving it is basically the value and net value of that thing so typically i just talk about this thing and 
value is also perceived. This is one thing I, I talk about. But it's values perceptual in nature. What I might see as a, something of high value, someone else might not uh, give it so much value. So I, at the concept level, I talk about these things and then uh, the, the, I use the, uh, the template which is mentioned in the workbook to, uh, to help them to understand like how will they define the value for the, their respective product or solutions. So that's how uh, we do the customer value proposition over there. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Vikas. So yeah, this is uh, like the typical template is quite simple. Is again, what is the problem uh, they are solving? Who are the customers? Who are they selling their product to? Again, why are they better or why are they different? And again, uh, how, how would they like to summarize? So the example that's given in the workbook is of this uh, uh, startup, student startup from Northeastern called Eat Your, Co Eat Your Coffee. So they started with this problem they were facing, attempted to solve the problem, and now they have commercialized. So uh, like this built-in template is something that uh, typically students are able to correlate to because the idea, idea journey is quite interesting. They were students, they were getting late for the classes, and then they thought of, uh, can we have a caffeine, uh, like uh, flare this thing uh, in, the, in the snack bars. So that's not something they are able to correlate. This is how we typically do that. But yeah, others also, like we just, this is where, again, I'll take a small one minute pause. Let's quickly hear from others also, like, how are you discussing a uh, customer value proposition, right? And maybe I'll request uh, the people who have not yet spoken, right? If you can please uh, do share your insights, that would be really good. And maybe can I, if I can ask uh, Surendra Babu, uh, would you like to share, like how are you uh, talking about customer value proposition? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Uh... Last class, we have been uh, dealing with about the step seven only, sir. And this is step eight, okay? Uh, customer uh, uh, relationships we have been talking okay? In our uh, group, uh, uh, nearly seven groups are there in our my class, okay? They have been taken different uh, categories. One has been taken uh, uh, sports, okay? In the sports, they have been I have been asked them how will we attract in the customers and what are the differences. One of the examples they have taken as a decathlon as taken example. Okay, why it has been expanded very well costly when compared to the all other before or so there, and how it has been came. Okay, uh, the uh, that was the question posed before them, and I given uh, one week time, and they have gone through and they have been uh, presented a very brief, uh, uh, very brief. A history about the decathlon and everything and all. One of the main thing they have been focused is, okay, uh, it is very friendly. All the customers can move inside and uh, take the sports items, whatever they want to see, touch it, play it, and use it at that point. And this is a satisfaction with whether they can satisfy or not, they will be knowing. And then it will be implemented. Okay, and hence this decathlon has been very effectively it has been came across. Okay. Uh, if that is the one of the way they have been uh, presented. And other group, uh, uh, one other is uh, taking off education. Okay. Uh, education, they are also taken differently. One, uh, two, that means a group consists of uh, six members. They have been divided into two. One, they have been taken Vedantu as example. Other than they have taken Coursera. Okay. I also entertain me because Coursera is a certificate they giving a course one and the other one Vedanta is a tuition type it is for the intermediate 10th class lower school Okay, how they have been expanding everything they are, they have been uh, going through. So, okay. uh, in this one, uh, Coursera they have been done effectively in such a way. Okay, they have been saying that we have got the new knowledge area, new technology, what are we need. Okay, for any problem do you need, the, some of the process will be there. You can go through the process and get a solution also, whether it is in our domain or not. Okay, and a diploma can be obtained in technology where we are lacking. Okay, we can get that uh, technology from the uh, Coursera courses and then we can add to our minds and then we can apply for the solution. Okay, so in that way, the Coursera, they have been uh, trying to uh, implement it. Okay, I may I ask them to have a brief uh, uh, PPT presentation of the Coursera and also the Vedantu uh, also. In Vedantu also, they have been having a free 
subscription is also there and also subscribed version is also there. So a free version will be helping for the students uh, how it is classes are going on, whether it is user friendly or not, they can assess and they can uh, go through that uh, their classes and they know that whether they can, it is beneficial for them or not by seeing the few subscribes for free courses. Then they can add, if they feel that it is a good one, then they used to go. Okay, after that also, at 24 by seven, they can have the person and their answers will be replied immediately from the uh, faculty who has been assigned. That means they have to, a few uh, students will be assigned a particular faculty members and they used to be given. Okay, this is the way they have been checking and uh, getting the solutions of the already uh, innovative companies which have been uh, fastly grown from this. Okay. In that way, one of the company in fashion designing, they have been one of the category they have been taken. In that category, uh, uh, recently Nike, I think, uh, Nike, sorry. Nike is the one of the company which is uh, online stores, which has been very fastly grown. When compared to the Amazon, uh, Flipkart, many things are there. Even though in these all categories are there, Nike is the one which has been uh, very fast to have been found and how it has been opened, they have been also seen. seen also. Okay. Uh, this is the way they have been interact. This is the way we are interacting. Sir. And the prototype, we are not gone into the prototype. Now I've been requested the students to go through the identify the problems okay, in this area how they have become and what are the best ideas to implement for need to be implemented if you want to start. Okay, and which particular area, that means the, the, uh, their interest we have been taken in that interest, a particular uh, topic they have to take, particular product orientation, so that it will be useful for the society application and for also the customer, how it will be useful, how better it will be presently available things we have to go through and, and this is the work they are doing now. Great. great. This is the way we are going. Sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. So, yeah, uh, like you were saying, uh, we can give them some couple of examples. Like you said, Nika can be a good example that went to an IP also recently. So that can, that's a good uh, journey of a person who, in fact, got into entrepreneurship very late. She entered, a, she took up entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship in her 50s. So <laughs> that's an interesting example. So again, Good examples, but yeah, let's uh, also my session will try to a like, little bit uh, like for push the students towards applying this into their start startup ideas. Can they exactly. come up with uh, the value propositions over there for the and next? We are moving in that direction. Yeah, great, great. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else uh, would, would like to share? Uh, like one, I I I forced uh, Surinder to share, but yeah, one. Maybe more, I'll leave it open on the floor. Preferences again to people who have not spoken. Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Sridhar, sir. Yes, please. Yeah. So I, I used 5W plus H technique for uh, and asked the students to come up with the customer value proposition there. So I'm teaching design thinking as well for the second, second year students. So uh, the, one of the activities that we do there is 5W plus H for uh, coming up with the new ideas are understanding the customer first of all so i ask them to follow that technique and uh, come up with the uh, uh, customer value proposition there great great uh, thank you all right so again uh, again i know this is a very short overview session so we are, we are just uh, trying to like uh, skim through at a high level touch the various topics so uh, with that, I would like to take a pause over here. And uh, there are two options right now. One is that we can, others can continue from here to the, the next uh, set of topics that he has. Or if uh, everyone is, uh, wants, we can take a short uh, five minutes break before we continue. Well, it's already 12.40. Should we actually... Lunch break. Uh, that's so what, I, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, 115, yeah, that's 115 or so. Uh, half an hour lunch break or a 40 minute lunch break. Is it okay with you, others? Sure. We can, we'll do that. We'll convene at 1.15. We'll come back at 1.15 and then. We'll... Yeah. So let's come back at 1.15. It's been an intense session. Uh, no <laughs> breaks. So uh, thank you all. Let's come back at 1.15.
you can leave uh, you can uh, turn your videos and sounds off and leave and you can stay logged in if you wish right great so see you at 115 session that we're going to uh, there are four topics but uh, uh, one of the topics uh, that we're discussing that we'll discuss is product line strategy and so these four topics that i'm going to talk to you about are generally just informative in nature and i'm not expecting students to come up with any <clears throat> assignments or presentations it's for them to get a holistic view of the business ecosystems uh what all should they be considered about uh, when he or she is wanting to work an idea or build a business so one of the <clears throat> um important points i mean though the course says it is you can uh, ignore it but product line strategy understanding what <clears throat> product line strategy is all about and why should a business have a product line strategy so how i do my sessions is i usually um, run them by examples i don't talk a lot of theory and then from that uh, conversations and we they kind of derive the learnings right so here i talk about hindustan motors uh, one of the iconic companies that was only <clears throat> that was only able to produce uh, one iconic car and after that uh, they had to die right so i give them that example and i <clears throat> i also run them by examples like itc arun ice creams or um, pepsi on why do you think companies need that product line <clears throat> why do you think that's important for companies to have product lines so i just keep them open ended whenever i'm trying to drive topics like product line strategies or anything uh, that are largely informative so um, i usually uh, i tell them okay you should get an understanding for preferences change customers change their preferences their needs will change so based on that uh, to keep a customer with you largely you have to keep adding products to your portfolio that is one of the reasons and yeah the basic reason that i walk them through is the hindustan motors example on why if you do not have a product line what is going to happen you can have one of the most iconic cars but then you going to die at some point so <clears throat> that's what i largely walk them through in the product line strategy even in the book these guys spoke about the toothbrush right uh, uh, understanding uh, this is the example that that these guys have spoken about a toothbrush uh, what is the initial product and what all did they add as uh, the customer needs kept evolving and uh, so uh, so so on and so forth right so i'll also share my slide just a quick second on what i do here <clears throat> when i talk about uh, uh product line strategy or i just keep it product line <clears throat> yeah these are some of the examples i walk them through and i largely drive these sessions by asking them questions i don't uh, just keep talking to them i just ask them why do you think that a company like pepsi which is just what do you identify pepsi with they all say it's a cola company that is that sells uh, drinks but then do you know all the other brands that um, why do you think they have those brands why did they go into different segments from a cool drink company to snacking segment and when <clears throat> indra noyes come in she has also gotten some acquired some brands um, uh, that speak about a healthy lifestyle like quaker oats why do you think uh, businesses do that and uh, i also talk about itc is one of the very interesting i mean i hear a lot of response when i talk about itc and how did this company start and why did it diverge why did it create different product lines what do you think that is necessary and uh, that's the conversation that i keep um, we'll have back and forth conversations and uh, that's how i drive this uh, topic of uh, product line strategy right and so uh, the objective when i try to do this is to instill that the importance of product line strategy why should a business have a product line strategy and then walk them by this couple of examples to understand why that is uh, really important if you're trying to build a business yeah so now we'll come back to the audience and try and see what you guys are doing here when you talk about the product line strategy so how do you instruct this to your audiences your students when you run them by the step <laughs> so again uh, as we were all discussing since morning relatability is one thing when we're trying to bring examples um, like even uh, shri dasa was saying there has to be relatability so that's why i bring brands that these guys can relate to sunfish sunfish tp or savlan 
and all this and yeah we i kind of uh, get good responses when i talk about itc because probably i think that's because of the relatability mm, yeah that's uh, largely what i do in the product line strategy with uh, kids <clears throat> i mean actually very nice uh, just one second my battery is running sure so um in terms of itc product ranges right uh-huh. um what i find is that about some 60% of the my my cohort is from the rural background mm-hmm. um i don't know if itc they may know the brand specifically but mm-hmm. i don't know if they can really connect to itc as a consumer brand beyond tobacco uh actually a lot of them t- throw me an example of classmate because that is one of their brands right they say yeah we yeah, yeah. yeah so that's why also okay. classmate is one of so yeah but i but i agree i mean itc is a very good brand for us to focus on mm. uh, because uh, not just product line just the whole diversification game they over the last uh, decade and a half or two decades they have completely moved away from being a primarily uh, tobacco right. company right yeah so um, so good i mean i will try that out so what yeah, yeah. itc gets picked up as um otherwise uh, um, uh, i'm uh, asking them to think of a product line strategy because they do not have they're still at the ideation stage they're just thinking about product asking them to build a product line for their products is highly <clears throat> so sometimes it's easier right i mean i work with my so one of the te- one of the things that my the the uh, the team is working on is uh, being the best mall in the country Mm-hmm. right so for them they understand all of this and and a mall is a very easy malleable thing for them to go up market down market and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh, i mean at least i have been lucky in in this particular aspect where they can think forward backward and stuff like that but mm-hmm. i agree if the starting point was something else of a mm-hmm. very base product then i think product line strategy would have been tough but in my class i think this is not too much of a challenge true sir there are some ideas that i can clearly think okay i need different products to sustain the interest on my brand or a product uh, they, but for some ideas it is kind of difficult for them to think that far okay product line strategy is important for businesses trust that's uh, product line any other observations yeah, over yeah actually uh, other yes. <clears throat> i think bhavesh agrawal is one great example mm. because he is an entrepreneur who developed a whole um, a new uh, product line from being a uh, taxi hailing service to now uh, ev Elephant. manufacturer and today he tweeted about his car right mm. so when when we are talking to the 17 years kids like mm. itc would be like itc is like a 20000 uh, crore company mm. while uh, bhavesh agrawal is only one person who has built the whole thing so this would like for, mm. personally i would think that bhavesh agrawal or elon musk or nayaka would be great examples for them to uh, actually relate and then the, uh, uh, like uh, figure out like how uh, these people had made a successful business like uh, not sticking to one business but later on uh, diversifying and uh, uh, itc as you said the, like the whole uh, uh, is a book a bouquet of food right but uh, what mm. bhavesh is doing is totally different from taxi hailing to now electric vehicles one of the biggest company in the world that is a quite a different uh, business that he has took up and and he successfully did that yeah so, i also walk them through such cases i also talk about nike not at this step at a different step but yeah i use those contemporary examples uh, very often uh, and i try and keep it largely to indian examples because uh, yes, i'm a yes. little biased again a lot of um, even a lot of us we just try and keep to the indian examples that's why i really don't talk about musk and all that and yeah relatively why i talk about i one is one of the reasons is that uh, ipi noodles and nestle drawing contrast is easy for me when i talk them through because i have something that they can relate to okay noodles was at one point in time nestle was the monopoly in the indian noodle market then what do you think itc just being a tobacco company has come into the food segment and they they found that there's a gap there and there is a market to play so um, so i just walk them to different strategies i wouldn't call them strategies on how businesses think how do they identify spaces so how do they 
leverage the brand that is already built. Um, so ITC gives me that, uh, all their brands give me that leverage to talk about the other aspects of businesses. Uh, hence, I choose ITC to drive this point home. <clears throat> Again, for at MBA level, level, maybe ITC would be a great example, but mm -hmm. ideation, someone who is learning about ideas and someone mm -hmm. where we are telling them that you should diversify to sustain in the business ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, I, small I, examples would be uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah very, very I, complex. ITC would be very, very complex for them to... If I could just add upon how I went with this particular scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, that um, it, again, you know, um, as uh, previously told, it's mm -hmm. not that all of my teams are uh, uh, aligned towards the, a discussion where I can have about product line diversification. But then a couple mm -hmm. of the teams, as they are presenting, I can see that they already have a lot of diversification in the products that they are uh, trying to give in, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's when I try to bring in this concept so that these guys are already doing it and their classmates will be able to understand it much easily because their counterparts are presenting on something on similar lines. So that's how I've brought in this concept for everyone to understand. And one example that I used, which was more very simple, you know, in comparison was Amul. So I felt, you know, with Amul, they could kind of link much better and the social innovation concept, all that also I could bring in, you know, not okay. just restrict only to the product line diversification, but bring in other paradigms as well. So mm -hmm. Amul was the example that I basically took in for my class. And I try to relate these concepts with the presentations that they are already doing or with the business models that they are already presenting kind of. Yeah, nothing like it. If you have a team that's already thinking about uh, having a product line and uh, when they are presenting it, if you're able to link it back to that point and then yeah, that's the best way to do it, ideally, yeah. But you need, be, you need to be careful here, okay? Uh, if you are a new business, a new startup, you don't launch a diverse range of products. Correct. You start with one, establish it, and then build on the reputation that you have uh, gained. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's fine if they're thinking of those uh, product lines, but uh, that's if you do all of them at one time, it's a recipe for uh, failure. So you have to make sure that uh, they understand at what time diversification happens. Yeah, yeah, ITC, uh, Amul, even small company, doesn't matter. You mm -hmm. know, if, if you're a small entrepreneur and launching, uh, say you're, you're selling bread in the local community, mm -hmm. you don't want to start with every kind of bread there is and, and launch it at one time. Let uh, test the market, make sure that uh, your bread differentiates itself from, uh, from the others. Mm -hmm. And after you've established, build on the brand. So that's the lesson uh, inside that uh, your students need to get. Yeah, the, so that's what I, uh, before even talking about ITC, I just give them a little a little reading, which they don't do. I tell them, okay, try and get, this is what we're going to discuss tomorrow and try and get an understanding for how this company has evolved, what this company has started as. And, and then I'll try and put that perspective of, uh, yeah, you, as you rightly said, some of the businesses don't necessarily need to have uh, uh, product lines uh, in probably in the first two, three years or four years, right? Yeah. I also touched touch upon those uh, concepts. <clears throat> so uh, that's one thing, product line strategy and any any other uh, interesting things that you guys do as part of uh, product line strategy. Well, Gayatri, uh, Gayatri yeah. has raised hand. Gayatri, go ahead. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm not teaching uh, the students at the BDC Triple One course. I have not uh, started yet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I'm, uh, I mean, uh, I have discussions with my RSC students and all. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, when I'm talking to them and, and RSC students, as you know, I mean, they're a bit ahead of uh, the VDC triple one course who pe people who are uh, ever are uh, taking this uh, um, VDC triple one course, right? So uh, at this point, as we have, uh, we have, uh, I mean, that concept called identifying the white spaces. Mm -hmm. So where they can uh, diversify, where they can, uh, I mean, expand their product line and all. So first we have to, I, I think in my knowledge, I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, first we have to uh, tell them what, what is the importance of having a product line. So why right. it is important, why, essential, why it is essential for uh, uh, any kind of business. And then uh, where they can expand uh, the, I mean, identifying the white spaces and all. And as uh, Balkma sir said, so any any company uh, which is uh, starting uh, new, 
so they they will not start with n number of product at, at once right so there is some concept called lean uh, startup so where mm -hmm. you will lean startup that means whenever you are starting a new company mm -hmm. so you you should grow lean in the in, yeah. the in the initial stages and then after certain point of time you need to expand like a tree you know so uh, i mean it it will be uh, your trunk will be lean and straight and after a certain point of time you'll expand yeah lean in terms so, of operations right uh, when you lean in yeah operations yeah of course i mean even the product line comes into it so having this mm -hmm. uh, i mean less number of products at the at the starting point and maybe in future after uh, they reach a certain stage they can think of all these things absolutely correct yeah no, that's uh, and uh, hari you wanted to say something <laughs> so how i do in my classes like basically like uh, before starting the product line first of all i will tell them like you know i just mix up my classes are more or like like you know more like they will be interactive mm. so uh, first of all initially like i will take a company let's take itc mm. so i list on what are the products they are selling in the market so let's take like, like first thing what i do is like i'll mix up with them don't think bad like uh, i just want to tell you an example so that students uh, feel like more interact let's take cigarettes itc cigarettes like when i mean, say cigarettes what type of cigarettes are selling the company are selling to to the market they sell a bunch of products from itc so mm -hmm. after that i will ask books what type of books are selling there's a in the classmate there's a set of books are selling let's take cars when i say cars let's take maruti suzuki cars what type of products what type of brands under the name of maruti suzuki they are selling mm -hmm. when i asking the question when you are asking this questions students will be telling all these answers then mm. i will say this is what product line is exactly so and yeah. also i will tell him what is the importance of having a product line you know in this competitive world and also according to the customer behavior mm. like your customer needs a lot of choices and yeah. if you come up with only one product up to some extent you might sustain in the market but after some extent people always love choices from various price ranges to and adding to the different colors and different features and depending on the customer behavior and de depending on the customer lifestyle so i used to interact them in this way i used to keep on asking them questions where i they will mm. answer and then i will tell them this is what the product line is that's how i do in my class okay okay so anybody else who wants to talk on the product uh, line yeah um yes, i i have one question yeah uh, and so when we talk about product line and all of this so they also try to connect with their idea or their project right so i tell them whatever you have been ideating about i don't draw the contrast if your business doesn't need it they are not even there yet to talk about the product line strategy so i tell them boss this is an informative session in future if you are thinking about an idea if you are wanting to explore this discipline further this is a concept that you should be aware of i don't do that link up and all that i don't do that because that it's i understand the idea it is a very very nascent stage and i don't do the mistake of linking it up and asking them you would think of product uh, range for your idea i don't do that so that clear differentiation is always there right yeah 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 i agree Okay. Okay. Mm. So and uh, uh, in the conversation that I am having with students, when are these sort of topics are coming? So mm -hmm. yeah, while food part is one interesting area, other areas uh, that I have seen more exciting and interesting is like Hari said, automobiles is one interesting area where they get connected very quickly, and other areas they get connected with is uh, mobiles. Other areas where they will also be connected with is games and different apps. Correct. So maybe we, if we can uh, build um, more case studies on auto, I mean these these sort of sectors, then mm -hmm. uh, it become easy for uh, students to get connected and they they have their own uh, choice of interaction. Yeah, interaction happens. That's the, that's the only reason. Uh, though I am biased towards certain companies, but I still bring those because there is relevancy and the dialogue happens and there is a learning that. the exchange of learning happens otherwise uh, you can talk about million things one of the most sophisticated things and if nobody relates your audience don't relate to it it doesn't matter uh, they don't uh, yeah, yeah netflix is amazon so you, uh, all this is what i try and bring these examples that they are user soft that they use they experience those so they'll be able to relate to them quicker and understand the concept um, better right 
Right. So yeah. then, if yeah, anybody yeah. and know? also yeah, as as you people rightly added, like for service, like few of my students ask, like so for product you giving example for whatever mm -hmm. service. So for service, like usually like uh, mo most, uh, you, I mean they use kind of stuff called like Hotstar or Amazon mm -hmm. Prime, Netflix, or mm -hmm. even for LinkedIn also they have premium accounts, they have freemium accounts, and you know for let's take example of Hotstar. If you mm. want the English movies content, you have to upgrade to the highest premium level, premium account. If you mm. want Hindi along with Telugu, you have to up, um, you have to subscribe to one more account, like one more subscription. Or if you want only Telugu, like you know, the only you will get if you subscribe to that only Telugu movies, you will get the content related to only Telugu movies. Mm. Like, you know, even that's a product line of for uh, the service uh, service applications. Well, that's not actually product line, uh, Hari. That is more of a uh, business model and, and how they run the service and how they generate revenue. Product line is when we say that Hotstar gets into uh, selling TVs or Hotstar gets into selling uh, streaming devices. Uh, that is the product line uh, thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things you have to be very careful about is, and, and I have not heard that much here, is that it is always linked, first of all, to your consumer value proposition, then to your consumer segmentation. So the product line is dependent on which segment of, of the larger consumer uh, uh, target that you have selected. So if you say that I am I am making a, a, a beverage for adults and then tomorrow you say I'm going to make smoothies under the same brand name that are targeted to teenagers. So that segmentation is what links the product line to the, uh, to the consumer value proposition. Hmm. Yes, uh, Mukteshwar. Actually, it's a, uh, in BDC book, we have only positioning, not much related to ST, the segmenting and targeting. Indeed, probably the add-ons would be the basis for segmenting and targeting patterns for students' understanding, which has to be taught uh, um, as uh, I agree with Bal Kumar, sir. Sure. Yeah, as a rule, teach something that you feel is important, is relevant, you know, even if it's not in the book. Hmm. And by all means, ignore something in the book that you don't feel is relevant. Also, you know that's that's why we have this session called Beyond the Book. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we should think. Yeah, mm. sir. Yeah. Sir, I haven't I haven't uh, finished this chapter, but uh, I already gone through it earlier. Mm. So, in, in few of the discussions I was talking to students, uh, one of the teams in BA Psychology, they came up with an idea of. Um, zero waste uh, events zero waste wedding zero waste event there are a few examples but i already did some research then they came up with the ideas of they are the, they are planning to set up a event management which is completely environmental friendly so they are a part of environmental team so they did a lot of research i gave some ideas so finally they came up with a presentation like they are also coming up with some sort of products which are again environmental friendly products so they started only like a services, but they have, there is a demand for their, for their own business. There is a demand for some products of maybe like eatable spoons, eatable cutlery, something. And there are some reusable. So it is, again, we are linking with some of the uh, team members of uh, the nutrition team or somebody. If, you, if they have any kind of business, we can have a tire. It's just a hypothetical discussion. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, few more products are being, uh, you know, uh, no, we can discover, identified by the own team. And uh, I gave some examples like uh, Apollo Pharmacy. I gave some examples. Reliance. Reliance is a very big market. They started, they are into everywhere now. So Apollo Pharmacy, they started with a small pharmacy chain, but they slowly, uh, understanding the demand from the consumers and customers, they slowly introduced so many products, so many equipment, so many things. So that is how they started the business. Again, it is elaborated, scaled up in a big way. So the, is that is that exactly the uh, product line strategies bulk mercer or it is only an, another some more products they are invented because of the customer needs is this i'm just asking whether we can call this as a complete product line strategy um see again product line strategy is two one is vertical product line one is horizontal like you're talking about the edible cutlery and reusable and that uh, that is a vertical where you are just <clears throat> building you have a product and you are building line uh, to I don't know why am I the only one hearing echo? Do you guys hear any echo? There is a small. Okay. Mm, so yeah, the one is vertical, as you said. You have a product and you're just creating different flavors, or it's an extension to that. That's one. And horizontal is you're moving to different. You're an event management company, and then uh, 
you are also a uh, uh, caterer to that um, with eco-friendly products and doing that that is again horizontal and vertical it has both um, when you talk about the product line so it's it's actually interrelated business it is not a different business it's interrelated without that product this business cannot run so if they are okay they're in the same brand they will go ahead if they are okay using the same brand no no i'm saying see generally they have to dependent on somebody for to supply these kind of products generally correct you can even manage yeah and you can not also be extremely diverse as balkumar sir was saying positioning is extremely important if you are in the business of making drinks for adults then that brand has to i mean you can build the product line in that same category of making those drinks for the adults and under the same brand line if you're trying to sell smoothies then your positioning is lost people get confused they do not know what this brand is all about so you also have to make that distinction very clear when you're trying to you have a brand and there has to be some relatability all the products that you're trying to build whether vertical horizontal has to have some relevance to the brand name that you position it at okay okay look teacher yeah. it's, it's also i mean there two ways of looking at it one is okay their main uh, main service is environmental friendly events yes right? yes uh, and they are sourcing all the material uh, etc from from a third party you could continue like that for the rest of your life doesn't matter your your key expertise in this area but at some point they may decide that we have built a reputation the brand has built a reputation so i might also go into uh, into the cutlery and uh, uh accessories business then it becomes an extension yeah uh, okay. uh, uh, until such time is just a sourcing thing then it becomes a product line extension then you say that uh, you're now not only uh, uh, running your own event but you're you're generating profit from selling your uh, products to to different event management companies so yeah, yeah uh, no i mean don't split hairs there but you know make sure that this is what you understand uh, uh, every time a product line when you extend a product line uh, the idea is that you're building on the goodwill you generated for your original brand and then you can sell more of uh, both so it's a synergistic kind of thing yeah like <clears throat> the pro from making dalda getting into software like that is also product line <laughs> very uh, different the goodwill and the deep pockets that they had while making uh, and uh, they might, they have ventured into very like at that point of times uh, software service was one good thing to venture out so so <clears throat> there are so many perspectives for this product line right correct, so, correct. We, we should be able to tell them the scope for all these like muktesh uh, talking about uh, diversification in the same event management right and mm-hmm. Uh, Bhavesh Agarwal getting into different, so uh, Vipro getting into something quite different, or Maruti having different models of car, right? So there are so many things. It's a bouquet of uh, business, uh, successful business. How you should be able to sustain that success. So we should be able to uh, give them the direction that you you should be daring enough to think about all these. when you want to sustain as a successful uh, business entrepreneur so yeah. that is the direction that we have to so, uh, give them yes. Uh, so that is what we try and largely do with the rsg the pre incubation program where we have more time and there is no timeline to it and when they come we just try and create that interest there and then once people start flowing in is when we uh, take them through all these that uh, what you've been speaking about sir yeah a uh, product mix decisions if uh, would be elaborated with examples will help even a reading from faculty and those who are from non marketing background mm-hmm. in terms of understanding what is product length product width product depth consistency and uh, at line extensions in terms of stretching two way stretching one way uh, that will give a better clarity with examples for faculty as well as for students what these extensions are and how it can be done what is width what is length uh, so my personal opinion indeed, here, yeah i i indeed have taught this uh, session to students because without that understanding doing product line um, you know so, it will be that, more vague 
the expectation is not to build any product line here this course is all about they getting a feel for the discipline of entrepreneurship we are not expecting them to do anything other than that they just have to get an understanding and uh, what you have suggested in my opinion will probably overwhelm the students if i'm getting into the technicality of all that i would just that's why i use examples and keep it very simple for them for their consumption so as long as you get that that is important and that helps businesses sustain that helps businesses grow that's pretty much it i don't really go into the technicalities of uh, the product line anything beyond that Uh, yeah, uh, Nagar. Yeah, sir. Actually, uh, I offered this course to MSc Data Science students. Uh huh. Wherein I didn't use much of the jargon of marketing management, and I just gave them simple examples like Lays. When mm -hmm. I was talking about product line, Lays has three or four different uh, flavors. Like they have come out with tomato chips, they have come out with onion flavor chips, so on and so forth. So that's how I was uh, making them to understand what is a product line, uh, because uh, they are not from a business management background, and as well as my objective was only to motivate them towards venture creation. Uh, keeping everything uh, simple. So that's how I uh, delivered my content uh, all throughout the VDC sessions. So keeping at the back of the brain, uh, objective is to motivate students to enter into entrepreneurship. Uh, that yeah, was, to pick up that interest uh, in the discipline of entrepreneurship. Yeah. Right. And yeah. focusing more on ethics and moral values. Correct. Correct. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. So moving on, um, we'll go to the prototyping solutions as next um, thing that I would like to talk to you guys about. So again, uh, prototyping solutions is again, uh, in the context of the course is really abstract. Uh, what do you prototype? Right? You just have an idea that is very, and um, you uh, to prototype something, uh, you have to have a solid framework or it has to be at a certain level for you to prototype something. But what do you do here? Here also I tell a uh, story. So uh, prototyping doesn't necessarily, a lot of students, at least 99% of the students believe prototyping is uh, having a physical form. You have to have something physical. That's what they perceive prototyping to be. But I tell them, I show them the other examples of um, Dropbox. So prototyping is you being able to communicate what is the pain point that you're trying to solve and how are you solving it. So you can tell a story, you can draw a sketch, um, any which ways, right? It doesn't necessarily need to be a functional or a, a tangible or a physical prototype that explains the product or the service. A lot of them get into the business of uh, at least the applications. They start building wireframes. This, are, this is my wireframe. Yeah, wireframe is fantastic, but then you try and use a pencil, take a piece of paper and draw those interfaces, draw those things and explain it to them. Okay, this is what the product is all about and these are the problems it will solve and this is how the user face is going to look like and that's pretty much uh, uh, that's that's good uh, uh, so this is how i tell them i also the dropbox initially even before i think after they've raised their first round of funds uh, this is how they they made a video that tells a story of what dropbox is all about and how dropbox really uh, helps you manage your data across devices they didn't really show any wireframes, nothing. They've just picked up a character and the character is on an expedition in Antarctica and he has his flight. So they've given a very good context. And they said, hey, this is our, uh, our prototype. This explains the usability of the application I'm trying to build and uh, the use cases for people who might want to use that application. Uh, so prototyping, that's what I uh, largely do, whether it is products or services. Learn to communicate your idea to your audiences, whatever format it is, right? If you're wanting to do a paper prototype, absolutely fine. You're wanting to say it with a sketch, you're wanting to shoot a video to tell it, anything. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, but know how to communicate about um, your um, idea uh, to uh, your audiences. Uh, yeah, that's uh, what I do in prototyping solutions. I'll just... So the example that I talk about is, uh, let me know if you guys can see my screen. <clears throat> 
So this is the one that I talked to them about. So how do you build that uh, minimum viable prototype? So I just leave the slide open for them. I ask them, okay, just see through the slide and tell me what are the, uh, it says how not to build a minimum viable product and how to build a minimum viable product, right? Um, what do you think um, the first approach is not uh, recommended over the second one? What do you think? Are, uh, so again, it's a discussion. They'll, then they go back and say, um, for example, in the first approach, you see a tire becoming a car, but here mm, you're trying to, they've asked, I tell them, okay, probably the challenge statement here is you have to build a mode of commute for somebody. And the first approach is they've gone and built a car. They didn't really validate it, right? Here, the second approach, he's tried all the means, right? He started with uh, the skateboard, then he's built a kick scooter, then he's built a bicycle, and then he's motorized it. And then finally, it's not that uh, he's able to self-understand, uh, but he's pushing it in the market. Hey, is this what uh, you're wanting, you're thinking about? Is this really trying to solve your pain point? Okay, then this is this trying to solve the pain point, so on and so forth, right? So that, with this understanding, this is what I drive. And I ask them, okay, uh, for your ideas, uh, then there is an assignment here. So with your ideas, so what is that? You, so how can you communicate your idea? If you were to go talk to a stranger and tell him or her about your idea and to get them excited to be your potential customers, what do you do? How do you tell the story? Yeah, that's what uh, I do with uh, the prototyping or minimum viable uh, uh, product. Yes, Sri uh, Um You know, I intend to use something that Dai Kawasaki wrote in his book, The Art of Start. Mm -hmm. And he says that, you know, you can keep tinkering forever, like you did, like you indicated in the first one, right? Mm -hmm. But the customer is able, able to give you feedback only when he comes to the last circle in your last iteration of your mm -hmm. uh, upper slide, right? Uh, okay. Till that time, the customer has no clue what you're trying to do, right? So, or, or he can't even come back and tell you whether he's liking it or he's not liking it. Uh, but, in second, in, but in the second instance, you know, you are able to come back and say how you are fundamentally distinctive with all the other alternatives, right? So your minimum viable, viable product has got a traction and a feedback Correct. and hopefully useful ones. Mm -hmm. So uh, I try and tell them the approach, the approach to take when you're trying to build a product for your target audiences, what is the approach that you'll have to take? Um, um, you just try, that's, I talk about applications. Why do you think applications do those beta launches? when they have that feature product with them, they just keep doing those people launches, right? So why do you think they do that? That is to get that validation, okay? Is it the right interface that people really um, enjoying that interface or they, do they have a feedback for me? Okay, if I have that feedback, so how do I look at them? How do I make those changes before my feature product launch? Mm, and uh, yeah, that is how I take this uh, topic of uh, minimum viable product with the students. Yes, Rastor. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> uh, that, yeah, ex explaining like uh, Adash was saying, uh, me and Adash, we debate a lot, we deliberate a lot on how to uh, deliver the content. So, one is uh, for us, we, we strongly believe that, yeah, uh, for the purpose of this course, uh, it's not the intent is not to uh, like make them build prototypes, it is to make them aware of what is this at a, at a concept level, right? So, what I, I specifically do is I draw the line over there. So, what is the purpose of a prototype? Prototype is basically, Till then you have, uh, because you thought of a problem, you thought of a solution, you went to the customer, you, you, you had some certain discussions. Prototype is the first time when the customer is seeing something uh, which is more concrete. Right? Like when I talk of physical prototype, so it's something which the first customer can touch and play with. When you're talking of like uh, software solutions, then okay, maybe he can play around, he can see certain screens. So your first attempt at showing something which is slightly more concrete than just uh, words, just exchange of words, that's, one thing. Secondly, this thing, this uh, slide again, uh, I, I use this a lot is, uh, this is, there are two, uh, these, this is a difference between two approaches. The first approach here is, there is called the waterfall uh, approach it, uh, in development. The waterfall is like you go in a step-by-step -step manner. So customer asked for a car, I'll, I'll deliver a car. Right, like, like uh, Shri Rasa was saying that, yeah, it's a black box. Till the final product is developed, there's a black box over there. Right, 
So whereas the when you look at the bottom half of the screen, that's the agile development approach wherein you are attempting to to ship up a, a service or a solution to the customer, and they're saying that will this work? Will this work? Will this? Can you try this? Can you try this? So so for me, uh, then I move to the next thing. So I say that the purpose of prototyping is to do this iteration of build, measure, learn. It's a very very important uh, uh, cycle to for you to uh, keep on doing. So you keep uh, building something, you keep measuring uh, the outcomes, learnings, and go back into the loop, right? You are in this loop till the time you are able to come up with the, the minimum viable product, right? Uh, MVP is some, for me is a very simply something which is uh, like uh, solving a minimum problem for the customer for which the customer is willing to pay. That for me is an MVP. I don't believe in a, in a free, free kind of model. So that's how I explain uh, prototyping. And also I just, for them, just to give them this thing of prototyping is not something very fancy, right? It's not something where it, you, you have to be very high tech. In fact, in, our, in my class, I take the example of a, of a vendor uh, on the streets of Bangalore who sells uh, sweet corn, roasted sweet corn. And he had built uh, a, a, like a solution which uh, for him, a ground up, right? Which is basically a fan and a light how he, he thought and that there's a small video clip it's on youtube i'll try to share that link is where he he was facing the problem he attempted to 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 build a solution and solve the problem so i said it again so you don't need fancy stuff you don't need too many resources you have to do this very fast very quick very dirty it's not uh, aesthetics are, are not the priority when you're talking of prototyping it prototyping is just to validate the idea validate the problem validate do the product market fix uh, fit fitment right so that is the the primary purpose of uh, doing prototyping. That's how like I take it up in my class. And I use slide for that analogy of uh, okay prototype MVP and yeah the final product. So what should MVP be? Minimum viable product usability, not the full functionality. Nobody really cares about the functionality, but what the usability does the product have? No, right? Yeah, Rashmar. Yeah. Um, sometimes it also means that. Uh, uh, while we develop some idea, there will be a lot of assumptions. So in the process of building that prototype, a lot of the assumptions can be cleared to deliver what can be achieved. Right. So, so when you clear all the assumptions, then you your product market will, uh, fit will be very easy to clear out, hey, only these assumptions will work and these assumptions will not work very clearly. That bifurcation can be given out in a very clear format. Right. Yeah, sir, uh, you want to share some things? I think you're on mute. For me, like I, what I feel about prototyping is actually uh, <clears throat> making the students uh, uh, realize their actual idea uh, as a basic thing for the first stage, so that you no, know, then. Uh, um, they can work further on that. So uh, I, I tell them about the scope of uh, prototyping. So if it is in a software, <clears throat> then the graphical user interface and all that becomes very, very important for them. So I tell them like uh, make sketches of what are the screens that you want, right? And what are the uh, links that uh, has to happen and what is the analysis that has to happen. Uh, and if it is actually a product, then I tell them like there is so much of scope, uh, like doing a model on computer itself. And if someone of you, your team is not in a position to do that, they can take help of freelancers, they can take help of professional group and render the product uh, digitally. Or <clears throat> if, if they have little deep pockets, then they can go for 3D printing or they can do clay model, they can use <coughs> thermocol modeling. There are so many methods by which you can actually realize your product physically. So once you have that in your hand, then uh, you can review the product and it would definitely will be able to, you would be able to resolve uh, the small glitches uh, that, uh, that would be there and, and confidently you would be able to launch your product in the next stage. So prototyping for me is uh, uh, actually uh, you realizing your idea and then uh, uh, working on the glitches that are there so that you become more confident about the product. The initial glitches can be ruled out and then you uh, 
launch your product uh, with more confidence so yeah. that's what i uh, look at prototyping when i tell them and i tell them like 3d printing has become so viable now it's so easy to do a 3d printing uh, yeah. play modeling or uh, com- even uh, computer rendering rendering in computer no now 3d printing has become still more cheaper than uh, computer rendering so yeah. i tell them like there is so many scope so many um, techniques that are available for you to do your prototype yeah there are so many free tools that are yeah i give them all those options mm-hmm. so you have to translate what is in your head some yes. form has to be there whether it is digital physical whatever it is you translate that whatever is in your head needs mm-hmm. to go out and people should understand what that is all about yeah mm-hmm. let's let's uh, let's not uh, mm-hmm. necessarily complicated because hmm. a prototype is simply a visualization exactly consumer has asked you for something you have uh, thought about it and you have uh, uh, said that this is what i want to give and then you visualize it and show it to them then the consumer says oh this should be like this this should be like that or this is good and all that that's hmm. all that is when you talk about functionality hmm. it's actually at least in 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 the business i was in uh, uh, it is separated out of this whole process functionality and testing goes into what we used to call new product development there you already got a visual uh, image of what you're going to make yeah it's it's a can of a, of of uh, of a soda mm-hmm. yeah the kinks that you need to work out in whether the sealing is okay the formulation is okay the taste is okay and all that that's a whole uh, a different process that is kind of outside this uh, what we do we don't discuss new product development at all in the course yeah uh, so that is something i actually spend uh, about a lecture on that uh, what uh, kind of uh, I, i tell them this is a detour but you need to know about this is hmm. that new product development is is also a set of processes where you take this prototype which is just a visual representation however uh, high fidelity it is yeah it's you might put some functionality and and show that okay this is what it's uh, looking at but later on you have to go through a whole process of developing a product before you go into uh, uh, you know launch uh, launching it the other thing that i strongly feel that is pro- uh, where prototyping solutions is placed in our uh, scheme is actually a little too late it should come right after ideation correct and then then after you have the prototype and you're thinking of uh, what you want to do with it that's when you talk about product line strategy and uh, all that after you finish value propositions after you finish consumer positioning uh, segmentation all that anyway sure. we'll take a look at that also sure. um, yeah i agree i mean i think there are two aspects of prototyping right one is the touch and feel the visual prototyping which is the functional prototyping right and both are parallel tracks for any product to develop right and i think uh, what i think at this stage what we might need is a functional prototyping and at the earlier stage is a visual prototype right yeah. i think uh, that distinction helps and depends if you have a big company lots of money they do uh, they go straight to functional yeah uh, they're willing to spend that kind of money <laughs> small companies uh, startups cannot correct very true so yeah, the automobile the prototype has to run like a car isn't it <laughs> so you you won't you don't tell them give them a clay model and tell them this is the car so prototyping has its own limitations and so depending on the product the prototype has to be developed Yeah. Exactly. As as long as they get that concept, that's pretty much it. On based on their product, they have to think, okay, how do I how should I make a prototype for my idea? Yes. As long as they have that knowledge, I think I am more than happy. Yeah. Yes. I'll leave it at that. And mm-hmm. the next uh, uh, topic that I was asked to discuss is about reality check. Now it's the final uh, point in that solution discovery. Now you have that uh, you. Uh, talk to your customers you have some insights you uh, with that insights you try to propose value to your customers now you have a minimum viable prototype you have a prototyping solution now with these two aspects try and go into the market do a survey what do you do basically you have you you identified the solution you've tried bringing it a certain form you tried building uh, giving your solution a certain form and uh, you tried and validated uh, your targeted customer segments now with all this together again go back to the market and try and check for its uh, feasibility right so reality check basically as book says uh, just give me a quick second yeah 
this is what they talk about customer value proposition and prototypes with these two aspects try and do that reality check here is where i talk to these guys about um, the, again here is it's again like user insights here also you'll have to uh, probably have those questionnaires and everything ready to go to your audiences and give them the feel for your product and ask them certain questions and take the responses come back and do that uh, reality check i don't spend a lot of time here again because in the context of the course this is not really relevant so i try and spend as less time on this uh, topic as possible but i say this is important yeah, this is the state these are the phases when you're trying to build something and you're trying to build businesses right and i leave it at that uh, at the reality check also yes mukesh actually at the idea stage only when we are sending some sort of uh, uh, surveys because after for reality check we need surveys again whether it is working viable or not viable at the idea stage itself the students uh, i'm I, i don't know whether it's correct or not you have to guide me again i'm asking them i have this problem i have this solution do you think this is working so in this case actually solution discovery is completely the model is completely ready you are sending again for the target audience so there will spend is this is this right so there are two right one is after as as in when you're done with your ideation you're doing one uh, customer insight that is Correct. just asking is this a pain point is this a right pain point i am solving or do you have anything else that is one survey Correct. this survey is okay now i built something for you with the use cases that you told me about and see if this is uh, of liking to you is this what you might want to buy um, that's okay. what you do in okay. this okay. Uh, that is a discuss this is a experience actually what how how whether it's right or not or what is your feedback there you are largely validating your idea here you are validating your solution and the solution. product the services that you've already built for that the problem identified yeah got it as a matter of fact you'll do it more than twice you know every single time when you feel there's a doubt you go back to the consumer because they are validate the idea uh, the prototype the crude prototype the prototype that turns into a product Uh, and then the product uh, after it is complete so the, when it turns into a product they look at product functionality then mm-hmm. after that you put layer, you put uh, packaging and branding and uh, uh, and how you're going to sell it then you can go back is this packaging good is this something you like is this the way you want to open it what are what are the issues so lots of lots of things and lots of uh, areas where you need to keep going back to your uh, consumer that's why Uh, there are big consumer groups and big companies and and also external contractors are making uh, a lot of money because they they provide you with these services and the, these steps we have detailed exercises or assignments in the pre incubation program on how should you do, how do you do the full length of these things like whether physical prototyping or prototyping or customer value validation going out in the market and talking to people that's all that here we just want to give them that uh, um, flavor for okay you will have to do these things if you were to build businesses uh, that's pretty much it yes uh, gautam uh, sure. uh, just correct me if i'm right or wrong sure thing is that uh, at customer insight what we try to understand is the gap between uh, the perception of the service or product which we are having and the actual expectation of the customer very true and when it comes to here uh, your reality check Mm-hmm. there we want to cross check in a uh, detailed survey manner mm-hmm. whether what are the service which we are going to offer a product which we are going to offer is that mm-hmm. the exact one customer is looking for or not correct right yes thank you go ahead yeah yeah that's pretty much it folks uh, these are the three things that i want to discuss about um, and so uh, right after this uh, so should we get into the business models leg or vikas uh, should we do that group activity again uh, if we uh, go for the activity it will take another uh, probably 40 minutes uh, the uh, hmm. other sub uh, this is that cutter. just we need brief story on about uh, business uh-huh. model proof yeah we will do that sir uh, after then this uh, then uh, after yeah. the, then uh, it's uh, better to go for uh, group act Sure, sure i'm waiting for that only <laughs> okay okay no worries so vikas then it's over to you you may okay yeah okay thanks thanks adarsh yeah. okay so before even uh, starting the business uh, model part i would like uh, you guys to uh, answer one small poll that i have created and uh, probably uh, we can 
discuss the entire topic of business model using that poll okay so i'm launching the poll uh, i would like you guys to respond to that I'm not allowed to vote no? because you can, you can. But it's not looking like a poll. It's not looking like a poll. Like a poll. We are reminding. We are reminding us the interesting. Yeah, I think because uh, for the co-host, even I'm not able to participate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so only there are two choices. Can I, can I type my response yeah, in yeah. that box? Yes, yes. You can type the response if you are a co-host. <laughs> Both the options were mouth watering. <laughs> so. <laughs> So but again, the... I, I have a majority here, so and I'll... Uh, need need to make it specific on that samosa party. Is that an onion samosa, alu samosa? <laughs> You're not getting anything to eat, so just uh, assume yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> you... so I, just, I just sent a request telling how do I send my address. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, I'm ending the poll and uh, the majority results that i can see here have uh, voted for pani puri so let us take that example and uh, let us try to uh, see what how we can learn business model out of this uh, concept okay so initially first be even before starting i would like to uh, first understand uh, what is your understanding of uh, this word business model so like whenever you are driving this uh, in your class, what 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 do you understand by this word called business model? Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah actually we, the discussion would be on like, uh, uh, what is success for you? Uh, then uh, like uh, making money or uh, there's so many, uh, <clears throat> values uh, of uh, success. So then, then to achieve that, what is the model for that? That maybe that is how the business model is uh, developed. Okay, and uh, if uh, what what uh, is your understanding about the word business model? If you can uh, tell me. Yeah, for me, like uh, the amount of uh, time I am spending, the amount of resources I am spending, the amount of uh, capital that I am putting, what is the return on that? So that is the business model for me. Okay. So we have two participants who have raised hands. Uh, yeah, Mukteshwar, sir. No, for any business, the first, uh, the main goal is to get the profit first thing. It's, okay. If it is not, it's, it, then it's not going to business. Profit or uh, to help uh, the society with some sort of social cause also. Second mm -hmm. thing is we need to understand the uh, supply demand again. Business model, every business model requires a supply demand. Like earlier, Madam was telling latent needs and there is a most of the business failure with the latent demand also. I think that is more technical again, but business okay. model for any business model will require resources, people, and then in, finally you're getting some profit. That is what uh, simple, I'm, I'm just making a shortcut on it. Okay, uh, Gayatri. Yeah, for me, business model is, uh, I mean, what all resources you have, and with that, how you are going to generate your uh, uh, product or service and what is that, uh, I mean, value proposition that you are going to give offer your customers and how you are able to reach your customers. So the, it, it, it has different components and all together it makes a business model and how you are generating your profit. Of course, exactly. that is the main thing. Yeah, this makes sense. Okay, uh, Rajkumar Anna. Um, to me, it's like uh, understanding the user needs, building a product, uh, making the product to reach uh, the user, and uh, balancing the financials, balancing sales, balancing marketing, building the right resources. Anything that comes in and out in between uh, me and my client is all involved in the business. That's what I call it as a business model. Okay. Uh, Sudha, ma'am. Sir, every business usually we look for long-term sustainability through and profitability. 
okay so for that what we require is to deliver customer value to the utmost satisfaction for this how do we project our business in the way that we are able to create deliver and capture that value to build long term sustainability and by the way profitability comes exactly. that's what need to be projected in the business model in simple yes so again uh, going ahead with the academic definition uh, like what we have discussed just now what sudha ma'am was saying a business model basically describes about the rationale how any organization can create del- uh, deliver and capture value okay and uh, there are two main things that are uh, that can be derived from this definition that can actually be derived from this definition one is creating and delivering value and the second thing is capturing value so if you have uh, like probably while you guys are teaching this uh, part there are two very important things that we discuss in business model okay one is operations model okay one is the operations model second one which we discuss is revenue model so when we try to map this again to the definition of uh, what is a business model exactly so how we create and how we deliver the value to our end customer the operation model basically talks about this part of a business model how are we capturing the value back from our end cus- uh, users or end customers that is basically the revenue model part of this uh, business model so i i can see some people raising hands can i uh, yeah so i just want to make a point here yes, when we are talking about value value is always uh, from both ends one yes. is what value that organization is deriving in yes. terms of the revenue and what is the value that customer is deriving vice versa exactly and the second part value is not what company perceives it to be value but what customer perceives it to be value yes so again yeah value uh, is having two different perspectives and uh, when we are talking about uh, the value in the create and deliver stage the value is basically the product or service that we are creating and deliver uh, delivering to our end customers okay exactly and, i mean in this diagram exactly. indeed, in this whatever diagram. i was trying yes. to echo it's more um, yes yes very and, hard <laughs> and the value which i can we, relate more better <laughs> so the value which we are trying to capture back is the revenue that any that we are generating from our customers okay so yes, again uh, we can i uh, used a case study of uh, pringles and kellogs what went wrong in india with this case yes because yes. it is not what organization perceives it to be value but what customers perceive it value so what is that in terms for generating and building long term sustainability yes so a uh, one one thing uh, like why i asked you uh, guys to select a favorite snack is i just wanted to uh, let us create a business model so this is the exercise that i do in uh, my class so i uh, take up uh, the example of a favorite snack that uh, our uh, class group of students have and with that i just show them this part and i try and i ask them to uh, i ask them let us try to create a business model around it so as we were discussing before as we were discussing before so the part of creation and delivery the part of creation and delivery talks about the operational uh, model of a business uh, operation model of any business and the part of revenue or the capturing part talks about the revenue model so let us now since we all have voted for a pani puri stall okay so let us uh, try to dissect that and let us try to see what would be the business model of a pani puri stall where for, uh, let us first start from the step of creation so when we have a look at the operation model there are two important uh, components of op- operation model one uh, in the create segment we are having two important compos- uh, components one is r and d second one is production 
So let us take the example of a Pani Puri stall and let us try to discuss on what would be the R&D required and what would how we are going to manufacture the Pani Puri. So again, I, the question is the floor is open for discussion and I would like to hear from the participants. So what would what do you think would be the R&D that would be required to make uh, Pani Puri? One is from the product end and one is from the service end. Okay. Uh, from the product end, uh, uh, we have uh, the semolina based, that is uh, suji based and the wheat based, the two types. Okay. So the and, time... uh, that, that is related to the product in terms of the taste and preferences of customers. Okay. And uh, the functional aspects related to the product uh, of enhancers, taste enhancers, and the overall ambience the hygiene aspects, what customer basically cares and no, it depends on the region and to whom we are serving, who are our target audience. Okay. So my like love, in southern right, yeah. part of India, we have a different, you know, even within Hyderabad, we have one is some prefer this hot based Pani Puri, which is yes. more of yes. Chana based. So the other is so what, what would be those R&D activities that, uh, so again, I, we are just now only talking about the creation part. Let us uh, talk about the deliver, delivering part, how we are going to deliver that value in the second, uh, uh, in the second phase. Now let us, we are, we'll only concentrate about how we are going to create. So two important parts in operation model when we are trying to create a product is uh, how you do your R&D and how you are actually manufacturing or producing the product. So let us now start discussing about if we are uh, trying to make a Pani Puri, what research and development do we have to do? What is that? What are those R&D steps that uh, we have to do? Yeah, I, I think uh, the basic raw material, uh, what we need because we are uh, Information talking about, about yeah, production and uh, R&D and where we have to procure it from and, uh, and what all flavors that are available in the market and how we can make a difference. Exactly. And any other views? <clears throat> I thought I have picked up a most famous snack. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Actually, like if, if we can, uh, uh, most of the time, Pani Puri, uh, the hygiene, the hygiene of the person becomes very, very important. So okay. if we can, uh, like my, I would start uh, like uh, if, if I can automate the whole process. The, from uh, manufacturing till the delivery all right so if i can automate and then i have a kiosk where i can deliver pani puri of whatever different flavors right hot or cold sweet or hot uh, then that that would be the most successful model an automated uh, uh, pani puri delivery system manufacturing till uh, uh, delivery and uh, yeah that that's Maybe that's how I would start looking at Pani Puri business. Okay. Any other views? R&D can also be done in terms of uh, shape of the product. If you see Pani Puri as of now, uh, it is larger in size. For example, a small boy of five years old uh, might not be able to eat uh, uh, the shape as of now, standardized uh, Pani Puri. Great insight, sir. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very great insight. <laughs> okay. And, and anything else? Anything else on the creation part? Okay, can I add some point? Because... Yes, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Great, great. So, uh, you know, this is an interesting uh, example. And uh, you can think of, you know, healthy, healthy Pani Puri. It's like Ragi Pani Puri or oat based Pani Puri. So, the, that is what is going to make the difference because uh, uh, it is a very competitive market, uh, Pani Puri. And uh, just what Sunil Sir has said, uh, you know, sometimes over hygiene doesn't bring the taste in Pani Puri. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, and now, now, now I think we have to mix Dolo also in the Pani <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so uh, I think uh, uh, Pani Puri is something which, uh, uh, which um, uh, from from North India to South India, there are so many variations in in this, uh, you know, and there and there is so much that can be done. So, if you go to Lucknow, you have like nine different waters, 
for pani puri uh, navratan pani puri then you have uh, um, uh, you know in delhi it is different in andhra they put onion in, in pani puri so so there is so much that can be done all right uh, and uh, i don't know whether you guys are aware in uh, near hsbc there is a rajasthani guy who does um, uh, you know pani puri where they don't do onions they, they do rajasthani type of pani puri so the audience like pani puri the, the customer is there okay uh, but the only thing is um uh, can we innovate can we bring innovation or is it uh, good enough to go with uh, the traditional pani puri and still we make money so there, there are multiple variants that can be done uh, and i think um, uh, as a business you should always think that uh, how you can generate profit probably uh, the ragi and oat based pani puri will not uh, garner a lot of audience in the in the beginning Uh, uh but uh, you know it is always uh, worth trying um, uh, to to go that way but yeah i i am a traditional pani puri lover so i i won't be doing experiments but i just wanted to answer your query thank you sir thank you so, uh, now let us come to the second part of operation model when we talk about the second part of operation model it involves how what is your go to market that is what are the challenge channels through which you are trying to push the product inside the market second thing what we uh, talk in the operation model when we think from the deliver perspective is uh, how are we going to install our product or how are we do going to do that so how are we going to provide services so now let us uh, try to brainstorm and uh, think about what are those different channels that you guys think would be uh, would which we can actually use to deliver this uh, product to our end customers the floor is again open for discussion so what would I, be yeah i i think one one way should be as uh, um, i mean somebody is uh, was quoting the complete automation of the process and kiosks kind of thing where uh, you just go and select your type of uh, and what all ingredient should be in and you'll get your pani puri out okay can can we ask uh, some of the people who are um, hiding behind their videos to answer the question please Let's have more interaction and what are the issues you have faced yeah like fakrudin or uh, lakshmi garu and others hello sir yes sir yes sir. i have a peculiar case to discuss here um i was halfway through and then uh, from this business model i have to take up the course because two of the vdc uh, faculties uh, they couldn't be with us in the hyderabad campus um so i had to chip in in the halfway through so that's the reason why i have been <laughs> pretty much uh, didn't had any exposure to the first half whatever you guys are discussing sure, sure. um then there was a, a time constructing as well they were having exams uh, and while we had classes those people were having other uh, things well so um, as of now uh, as i uh, look into it i still can't be mapped in the moodle sir uh, still is not reflecting on my uh, platform so this is something that i wanted to uh, take it up okay yeah. sir uh, yes sir sir fakruddin sir you finished the course work right most of the things are done sir and then unfortunately i couldn't uh, do it on my moodle platform because they are not being mapped you are teaching for first year you are teaching for uh, second year second years yeah 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 second year that, yeah. that's over right yeah that's over sir yeah is there still an issue with uh, posting of maps yeah all right then i'll put your name also all right sir thank you either sir yes i think uh, one of the challenges in delivery is uh, uh, you know related to production one you know how uh, hygienically was it made the second is how hygienically is it being served right and i think that's where uh, new innovations have come where uh, you have machines which can deli- which can fill up the pan which can kind of put pani into the puri and all of those things right the sensor level ones so putting some tech into it and making it fun activity for uh, people to interact is one idea of uh, of improving the delivery mechanism yes it's just like you know how we do the 
like uh, how haldiram is trying to do it right now with assets you yeah. don't yeah. you buy everything uh, sanitization right? after yeah sorry sorry Uh, Haldiram is trying not just Haldiram. There are a lot of local brands that are trying to sell you the puris, all the ingredients that you need. You just have to bring it, uh, sit at home at your convenience, and make your own pani puri in it. But yeah, but traditional taste. I've tried both, but unless that guy puts puri in my plate, I don't really get that feel and taste. <laughs> no, the packed pa- <clears throat> package food is definitely different because of the preservatives that they have to go in. <clears throat> so, but if you are Uh, delivering and uh, uh, automation together no definitely the taste can be uh, delivered that will not be a big issue and uh, actually <clears throat> there is one company in bangalore which is actually innovating uh, mechanization of anything uh, cutlery like if you want to prepare noodles they are uh, delivering a automation method to prepare noodles very hygienically uh, so there is some innovation uh, that uh, can happen with pani puri also and especially, especially yeah. delivery as well but the cost saying. of that is too high sir like, uh, like no, you know bangalore yeah. one pani puri like uh, where it is fully automated but the cost of one plate it cost me like around some 80 rupees 90 rupees where i can afford like 25 rupees yeah sir actually you see when we started uh, consuming pani puri it was 1 rupee 10 pieces no we have 10 rupees one piece so now for a customer cost is not at all a factor all right vada pav is now 40 rupees uh, so for people if they are getting that experience of food uh, for them cost is not Uh, not at all issue but one of the interesting companies that i can talk about is rebel foods i don't know if you guys have come across this company called rebel foods that everything is on the cloud and largely all the brands that they have rebel foods has this have uh, n number of brands under them from behros biryani to oven stall pizza to the firangi bake to uh, the fast sauce all this is largely automated yes right? it's all done by the machines they have created those cloud kitchens and the same kitchen will have behros biryani it will have firangi bake everything is in the same kitchen i think they they did that right it doesn't need to be expensive just because you got in tech and machinery into it it doesn't need to be expensive and they've solved that problem very well that's an interesting case to go through or how on how rebel foods have everything is moving into cloud but even these guys said even restaurants can move into cloud food can move into cloud <laughs> interesting food, food. yeah i think uh, we think other is uh... Mm. yeah the case of pani puri is different from the case of say biryani <clears throat> pani puri is the experience is not just of eating mm. alone the experience is of how you are served and how you eat it and and that uh, a machine cannot reproduce so how do you get that hygiene and safety and and consistent quality out of a machine but still make the delivery uh, in such a way that uh, people actually enjoy it maybe you need to have something in the background that is not seen that the mechanization is not seen by consumers uh, mm-hmm. and all they see is somebody actually serving i don't know it's a it's an interesting a very interesting example actually mm-hmm. uh, balkma sir you are absolutely right so there is uh, you know I, i was reading somewhere the biggest confusion of somebody's life is when they have a pani puri in hand one pani puri in plate and one in mouth so and the yeah. guy is already ready with the fourth one so yeah. so you know so it's all about experience and this is a low margin high volume market okay yeah. so the margins are not uh, you know very high in 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 this so mechanization or automation ai ml uh, this is probably not going to help in a big way but you know uh, we cannot say that uh, it 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 will not have impact but um, again uh, it it's 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 a space uh, you know which uh, which is which runs on experience take any other fast food you can pack it have it at home but yeah. pani puri is an experience uh, you know it it it, uh, it is very different from other fast foods you can eat chow mein samosa everything can be packed and uh, you get get at home but pani puri is a different experience altogether so either you make the experience better but but the problem is is the consumer going to pay you a premium for that so it cannot be a premium market or uh, you cannot generate volumes um, uh, uh, for that so consumer is is very particular about it and he he will see you know wherever he is getting that taste he is getting that um, uh, uh, you know comfort he will go there 
so 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 that's how it is but yeah uh, you know uh, uh, a bigger debate is is always better to understand this so yeah. always new ideas are always welcome so that's where the value comes in of the business model that you're delivering so oh, yeah the hyper customization can go to any level right one a one one meter and one uh, spicy right you know <laughs> customers would want to alternate with everything right yeah i guess i guess it's it's interesting of how it will be but but until unless we have seen a different reality we will not know what will happen right and i think segmentation is uh, is sometimes um uh, you know we have to wait and see till a new alternative comes by right and i'm sure next time i'm going to bangalore i will check this automated pani puri and see how it is and compare it to the one in mumbai uh, in for this particular business model with pani puri because see we really have a lot of competition when it comes to pani puri every nook and corner you have someone and as previously discussed we have someone who sells it for 10 rupees also we have someone who sells it for 100 rupees also so for me what i feel is very important for this particular business model is where you position yourself so are you keeping the stall in a place which is you know close to a cinema stall or uh, close to a school or a college you know that that positioning because obviously in terms of taste and all i'm going to maintain that but where am i going to position myself because this is a very commonly found commodity and if i'm going to think of bringing in innovation and you know the margins are very less as we discussed earlier so maybe as yes, cleanliness will be one aspect but ultimately it comes to where you're going to position this particular business uh, you know that is what i would look at one very interesting aspect uh, sarvi i'll i'll uh, tell you that uh, uh, you know if you observe very closely the people who sell pani puri at a higher cost are sweet shops so it is pani puri is not their primary business you will not find any center which sells pani puri at high cost and it is surviving right and uh, that will not be their only product so those who do only chaat and pani puri they they are uh, you know stand alone smaller units and they don't do anything else and their prices are very very competitive so yes positioning is one thing but uh, you know pricing and place also have very very important uh, high importance so uh, you know uh, what is your business model like haldiram's doing pani puri is probably 1% of their total business or less than that right they are not bothered uh, you know so but a pani puri wala doing pani puri business is into mainstream business uh, that's their primary product so so that is another thing that we also need to think when we are actually thinking of technology upgradation or uh, you know adding more value to uh, to deliver a product etc so how this business is working is something that we need to understand uh, very clearly I think we had a lot of pani puri now. Exactly, the business uh, has to now, stay like that. No yes. innovation, nothing. It has to stay like that. The delivery has to well, stay. Like the thing is, if even if you look at the haldi rams and the packaged pani puris, they don't come ready to eat. In the sense that you just open the package and uh, eat it, you have to do some preparation. Yeah, and that is where the complexity lies. And that that if you can reproduce even with your automations and all that, then. you you can start looking at so these are some of the subtleties you need to uh, i think convey to your uh, uh, students is that how does you how you might have a great product but the value doesn't come just from the product itself but how you uh, how you uh, envelop it in 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 a, in a story and and then sell it you know and and also <laughs> Balkumar, yeah. we can have a Danzo Pani Puri wala. So. Exactly. Yeah, that doesn't help, right? Uh, I mean, somebody had. I think it was uh, uh, who that brought up uh, Pringles, and uh, that that's a, an interesting story about how the product was fine, but the value it was adding was not uh, the right value because it was targeted to the wrong consumers. People are complaining that potato chips uh, keep crumbling and they're not they're irregular. They're this, they're that, uh, all that. So. so uh, procter and gamble came up with this innovation uh, where they changed the formulation the design the way they did it and they had absolutely uniform chips right uh, uh, the thing was and in consumer taste uh, sensory studies they were extremely successful they were this this is great this tastes like chips nice uh, flavor and all that but the thing failed in the market completely the first launch was a big failure and they had to withdraw it and do some uh, post mortem on it and basically the the problem was that they were pitching it at the wrong people 
general population that uh, 25 and above were like, uh, no, this looks very synthetic. This is not the, the tube packaging is not good, this, that. So they were not willing to accept that. Then they actually changed the target population to say teenagers and uh, young adults up to, 20, up to 25. Within uh, a few years, it, it became a billion dollar brand. So, you know, those are the kinds of lessons that if you explain to them, people start understanding, oh, wow, I know now why this works and why this works. Why is Maggie's noodles so popular even after the controversy with the government, whereas the others are still staying where they are? You know, so all these stories make make a big difference. And also talk to them about uh, uh, products, extensions that have failed. You know, and that, that gives you some valuable lessons also. I will shut up now, Vikas. <laughs> no, no, just I wanted to... Uh... Tell, see, uh, just by taking a very small example, and we have not even finished the entire business model. We just discussed the operation model and see how many ideas uh, we generated. So when we have to, again, uh, when we deliver it the same to our students, we have to take these type of examples, which they see in their day-to-day -day life. And this is something which they understand. So uh, Pani Puri is something which they probably see daily when they come to the campus. They probably eat it every third or fourth day. So again, this is something uh, that this is the type of examples that I pick. So again, uh, uh, the questions or uh, the points which we are, are like, which we collected. So we talked about the positioning, which comes under how you are delivering value. We talked about the automation of the entire uh, process that comes under how are we creating this uh, value? It's a part of uh, operation model. <clears throat> we talked about hygiene. We talked about how are we doing this? How are we delivering the Pani Puri to our end customer? We talked about healthy alternatives. Probably that can be a uh, that can be a case study for R and D. It can it can be R and D which uh, uh, which we do in our creation uh, part. Again, uh, we talked about partnerships. Like uh, uh, we are uh, partnering with sweet shops and we are trying to. Uh, deliver this Pani Puri. So again, these are some of the questions that every entrepreneur, these are some of the questions that every entrepreneur asks themselves when they are actually trying to curate their operation strategy. So now let us uh, talk about the revenue model. So revenue model is basically the monetizing strategy. How does my business make money? So let us say uh, in case of this Pani, uh, Pani Puri stall, what can be different ways how uh, we can leverage the value back or capture this value back? Again, the floor is open for discussion. <clears throat> Many a times at uh, sweet shops, it is a franchise like uh, the chart section. No, someone else actually puts up that and manages. So the sweet shop actually gets some uh, what you say, value addition to their revenue. And <clears throat> so, yeah, maybe like uh, if you can uh, <clears throat> uh, create uh, an automated one, so a sweet shop would be the best place because he knows that that business is making money and he doesn't have to worry now there is a, a machine that is going to deliver everything. So, uh, <clears throat> and that will add uh, to the volumes when uh, Pani Puri volumes are very important. So if you don't uh, uh, get enough volumes, then we, I don't think we can start up a new Pani Puri business, right? So the volumes, uh, so a network of uh, sweet shops uh, where they, they give us space to set up our Pani Puri delivery then that that would that would be a model which can uh, create a successful revenue model okay yeah so um, i would like to say something that i've been uh, seeing you know like uh, so i'm a very big pani puri fan and literally every alternative day i end up going and having pani puri now there are a couple of vendors near my place and i prefer going to one guy and that guy is heavily crowded still i prefer going to him because his model works in such a way that after he gives us the pani puri, the sukha, uh, the final you get a sukha puri, right? Where uh, you don't put the pani and give. So he gives that for free and he gives some five or six of them. Normally others give only one, but then this guy gives five or six. 
so ultimately what's happening is he's attracting more customers his unit sales are going higher and though his margins are less you know and he has competition his unit sales are going higher because he's providing something extra in whatever he is giving so you know that's a very uh, uh, you know simple example that i can take up with uh, instead of going in for the bigger stuff yes yeah so okay and any other view economies of scale and all that we discuss about is all this concept right so it starts from here okay any any other views like okay uh, how how uh, there are multiple questions that we ask in this case so uh, how do you guys want to pay for a pani puri in future chalo let us uh, discuss something about it in future how do you want to pay only uh, right now we are having uh, options to make online payments so what else uh, if uh, being crowded uh, at pan and uh, pani puri stalls it, uh, uh, is a problem <laughs> then uh, we can uh, i mean pay online book, pre book uh, pre book your slot and go there and uh, have your pani puri and come back without any competition okay that will be so boring <laughs> so, <laughs> all all the impulsive buyers will be thrown out <laughs> exactly that will be so boring uh, you know <laughs> well there is a there is a there is a restaurant that only takes bitcoins now so uh, so maybe our our pani puri stall should only take bitcoin pani puri yeah one tenth uh, about 100th fraction of uh, uh, lowest performing bitcoin for a plate of pani puri great ashto says the monthly subscription model <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Now that you know, there can be many. Like what uh, Sorvi was saying. So what Sorvi gave an example was an add-on uh, value. So the, the get repeated customers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's an additional value. But the base value is the taste of that first pani puri that you are eating. Exactly. If that is not good, you will not go for that additional pani puri anyways, right? So even if he gives you ten sukha puri, you will not go there. so that that's the first one which has the taste is is because probably the taste is good uh, you know uh, uh, and he's probably consistently maintaining that uh, so that's where uh, he's getting repeated customer not just because of the additional pan puri that's again my thought it might be uh, wrong but uh, i'm looking purely from a business side that we get repeated customers for the core value not for the additional value so it's like you know uh, whenever i go to haldiram if i getting a raj kochodi he will add extra dahi i will not go for that extra dahi <laughs> so i will go for the core product which is the raj kochodi right so so that's a core value and additional value so that is something you know you can always debate with your students in the classroom uh, uh, what hello, is sir. hello sir this is shruti uh, yeah sorry can on my video yeah the thing is sir you are telling additional thing it won't work but what about common people they prefer that right even we can see all this offers and extra things so we are actually going for that even more we can see so that is there so most of the common people prefers that that's what i think so what is your no, no, absolutely i'm i'm not debating that uh, you know you you will uh, that additional <laughs> value is not going to so that additional <laughs> value probably will bind you ever for a, as a customer but if the core product is not good you can never have a repeated customers that that's that's the thing so if for example i i am giving you a very good uh, broom stick with a uh, pack of oil the oil is 500 rupees the broom stick is like 50 rupees but the broom is very good the oil is crap are you going to buy the broom once again are you going to buy the oil once again to get the broom stick no right so as simple as that so any additional value is always welcome but it is only welcome when the core product is very good all right so it it's it, okay there are a lot of uh, positioning activities that happen in the market there are a lot of different ways products are sold it is just one example that i am throwing uh, but yeah uh, we can we can debate on this yes sir there there is to add something to that uh, that is something like your toy in kinder joy yes sir so i'll i'll tell you one uh, a recent example which i have seen uh, near a, uh, on a pani puri stall only so that guy is giving a free mask free free mask, mask. if you have a uh, if you have a play and it for it's you anybody can uh, take that mask it's not only uh, for, uh, okay the pani puri are, guy giving a free mask and 
yeah again you know these are all debatable things it, it's like okay so what platform if i am selling netflix for 200 rupees uh, you know per month license and if i am doing uh, some alt balaji for the 200 rupees license uh, but i am giving you one additional uh, free movie every uh, week which which license will you get so but ultimately isn't the customer first attracted to a given business attraction, because the core uh, product sorry, sorry, attraction only happens with the core product yeah that's what based on the core product you have a person coming in that is true remains same but then how do you continue growing so that, i agreed right i agreed to that point that you can re, you can have repeat customers with yes. uh, you know i i agree to that point that you can have repeated customer so that's a binding with yes. the additional value you are binding your customer but the actual essence of any product is the core core value so we cannot make the core value um, you know so I, what i was trying to tell you is that you are not going for that extra pani puri you are going for the actual pani puri which is tasty you know, you know. sir, sir. <laughs> oh, if you actual sir, pani actual pani puri and you are sir. still going then you are a freebie <laughs> you like freebie sir, sir. Uh, because among all the six vendors i have all of them taste similar but then with this guy i get something additional it's as similar as that so. okay then all six guys <laughs> are not good <laughs> sir uh, one point uh, as for me customer loyalty lies with primary product 100% but loyalty lies with the primary point but uh, sometimes as i told you that uh, kinder joy and that toy example people tend to make us buy those toys uh, that kinder joy only because of the toy oh, uh, absolutely so why do you have offers you know always think yes. in that direction why do why yes. do companies offer uh, or or anybody offers uh, you uh, mm-hmm. any sort of uh, offer or discount always think in that direction you 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 will and then understand uh, you know this is this is actually science this is uh, this is not a gimmick right this is science uh, you know uh, why why do you get loyalty points uh, when you actually go and uh, shop in uh, you know because you need to become a repeated buyer yes exactly exactly so th- the binding again will only happen if the uh, the actual product is good you know you yes. will not become a repeated customer if the product is not good it, it has to be average it has to be competitive it has to be at least uh, at par with the other competitors right if not yes, you will never go yes sir absolutely sir as you said uh, core product is important so i have been to murgan idli many a times in chennai so every time he keeps increasing the price but people come visit eat idli and go mean uh, meanwhile they'll be scolding for some time so that is just 5 minutes first 5 minutes uh, when they are about to have idli but uh, it keeps getting customers on repeated base, basis because the core product is liked by many people certainly so paradise biryani for example i don't like it anymore but uh, paradise biryani is core he gives gravy he gives raita i will not go even if he gives me a bucket of raita i will not go and eat that my my primary product is biryani right so i take any product for that instance we go for core products right so and if the core product is not good if the core product is not delivering the value that you want to then it is not going to work so any additional is the uh, they are binding you any loyalty points they are binding you they want you to visit you and they are committing themselves to actually uh, you know uh, uh, do a better service every time that you visit so that that's how this entire philosophy was. it it was started by tesco uh, long back this loyalty point thing when the entire world was working in a different way tesco was working on customer data and they started uh, assessing their t- tastes preferences buying behavior everything and according to that they created uh, uh, you know uh, coupons so for example if i am buying vegetables so the time vegetable so so these are all uh, add ons that help them to retain the customer Uh, we are losing you. the same time they are actually uh, or purchase uh, again so, uh, 
We are losing in between, sir. I guess. Hello, voice is lagging. I think I, I, I think I made my point. I don't want to be repetitive. So, uh, you know. if anybody wants some consultancy work done or evaluation of restaurants and food, uh, VDC people are very good at it. So please. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Sir, I have uh, a small last example, I think. Uh, uh, I have seen one uh, small tiffin center in Warangal. So, some time back, they used to, I mean, it, it was good only. I can't say it is bad, but it was good only. But suddenly, he changed the tiffin center uh, name called uh, Millet Ahar Mandir. Some Millet Ahar Mandir. With the name itself, people are, it looks luring. And slowly, he was focusing on only the millets. After Corona situation changed and there's a lot of demand just because he changed the name and he added some millet concept to the same tiffin center. That's it. So, so he was he was trying to show we are unique. Okay, at the same time we are unique and we are health conscious. Tiffin center the main aim is to hygiene and health. So then he added the health uh, tag. Then people are rushing a lot. And uh, one of our student working on the food and nutrition. So in the, uh, the C uh, C S C. So they were talking, they discussed, finally they came up with the idea of food truck. So then what is there in food truck? Food truck is just like any other. No, no, sir. Our food truck is unique that we are having, uh, you know, uh, hydrophonic kind of, uh, uh, we had a tie up with hydrophonics. The, all the vegetable, anything comes is completely fresh with the, they can, the customer can see it, the hydrophonics because it grows in the water. So they're directly bringing so in front of them, it is entirely, in terms of nutrition, it is fresh. In terms of, um, uh, you know, uh, what do you call hygiene is, they can see it. So that's kind of thing they are working on it. So what I'm trying to say, USP, the unique thing is important for uh, any business. USP is more important and also the branding. Yes, my opinion. Uh, right. uh, you make a good point, uh, Muktesha. Yes, USP is important. Branding is important. New technology introduction is important. But if you can't match the price of, uh, of existing uh, material, people, even if perceived quality is very high, may not pay. Yeah. Uh, or it might not be a trend like millets uh, you're talking about. Uh, before the pandemic, it's, it wasn't very popular. Only Even now, it's a niche group of people who, who like these uh, health products. So the challenge that comes to us, and I say us because I'm in the food uh, and nutrition area, is how do we get people to accept yeah, one is the functionality, people not worried about it. But the main important thing is we come back to taste and uh, and quality and cost. Yeah, so that's where, so the revenue model is, is where you're saying, what are the different ways in which I can make money? Or we can make money or keep the business going to be more well, yes. holistic about it. So again, yes, uh, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, sir. Yeah, I, I guess it's, it's a little bit of uh, looking forward on, the total customer value as compared to just a transactional value that I can generate, right? So that's where customer loyalty can be mapped onto those additional hanging points for him to come back, right? So what are those simple levers, right? For example, I think uh, in the in the hotel space, um, uh, there are these hotel chains chains which even go to the extent of remembering your favorite room temperature. Right, so that whenever whichever city you go into that hotel chain and then swipe in, it's it's already preset to that temperature as you come in. Right, uh, so so how do you look at that aspect is one thing. What of your customer can you know and can you give is will give you ability to uh, increase um, uh, how much more money can you make from them, right? Because every transaction will need some amount of expense from you to attract back your customer. Mm -hmm. So, so that 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 can always work in terms of revenue model, right? Yeah, and I think you, since you all are at that step now, uh, one of the things I would strongly recommend is business model revenue operating is a little bit different, but certainly the business model and the revenue model keep linking it back to your value proposition always, because that is what is going to drive the value. And that is what's going to justify the fact that you're charging 10% more than your competitor or, or, or whatever. So keep that. Uh, so that is why that connection is there. Uh, the consumer value proposition, the insights into uh, the users, etc. Thank you everyone uh, for 
having such a healthy discussion so uh, let us go ahead now uh, what we are having okay so yeah the different types of uh, business models that we have uh, the first one which uh, we have is the consumable model where uh, it is also known as the classic razor blade model where uh, you are buying the razor at a lower cost and the add on products so the pack of uh, the blade is at priced at a higher uh, <clears throat> is priced at a higher cost so whenever uh, your initial blade is over and whenever i am replacing it with a consumable the consumable is uh, priced at a higher uh, price so un- i again ask my students to uh, talk and uh, i try to uh, take up more examples uh, of the similar sort so a lot of them talk about the printer cartridges so where uh, the printer cartridges which uh, is used for refi- which we are using for refill is very costly so that is one examples which uh, i get when i discuss this classic razor blade model any uh, example that uh, you guys discuss uh, i i would like to hear now yeah, our regular mosquito repellents yes yes this is a regular thing i used to yeah. talk any any other examples of this classic razor blade model mosquito repellents this is also known as the gelet model yes uh, gelet earlier we used to have water filters water. that the candles water used to be filters. really cost yes even even the present uh, telecommunications airtel and all so earlier the data charge was less now because of the demand and the data there is the data charge is more i mean, of course you have to use it but uh, still uh, uh, there are different kind of packages in the data particularly cartridges cartridges yes printer so uh, again we have forgot a very uh, common example now we are having this use and throw pens but refill pen yes. refill yes 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 so that some freshness the other yes. classic example is uh, even pushpa pushpa ticket costs more than skylab ticket is it it so uh, they, uh, they are doing that also a revenue model so for some some star who is having a lot of demand in the market the ticket is more and for some pictures movies which are having uh, stars uh, where the demand is not uh, so the ticket is very less that is uh, that is a different uh, model sir that is probably dynamic uh, pricing or something of that sort yes dynamic pricing where uh, where the demand is high uh, let uh, and again this type of model dynamic pricing models you can see in uh, while you are booking your uh, a tickets mm-hmm. so when you are nearer to the uh, let us say if i want to uh, travel, yeah. travel tomorrow or day after tomorrow the cost of my ticket will be very high so this is uh, known as the dynamic pricing so yes so again uh, the next model which we have is subscription model so uh, again uh, this is a very famous company uh, dollar uh, shave club so they are giving the their blades on subscription basis you can uh, uh, again take a one month subscription again monthly you can select the type of blade that you want and the blade will be getting delivered uh, at your home and uh, adish we were also discussing about some more examples right in the uh, female hygiene segment so where uh, right now there are companies who are selling premium sanitary napkins on subscription model basis so again new startups are actually uh, uh, using these type of uh, models and uh, what what other examples uh, do you think uh, are relevant when we talk about subscription models one one of the best subscription models i encountered was when my daughter was born in the us our friends donated to us a 90 day uh, diaper service subscription so you you they come and collect they, they give you new diapers cloth and and uh, disposable for travel and they take care of everything yeah so that's a that's another subscription model <clears throat> so under amazon uh, if you are ordering something so amazon pantry tries to to push you to like into that monthly ordering thing they, they 
give you some additional discount try right, to push you to move into monthly ordering uh, cycles yeah even so, uh, i think your internet service providers yes. they have different plans uh, i mean six month plan one year plan even your uh, mobile recharges your telecommunication plans so we have again one year plan six months plan you have monthly uh, talk time plans so any any other examples family plan also in uh, mobile uh, uh, companies airtel now offers you a family plan so you can actually bundle four or five members together as a whole family and you just pay for on one number and within the family the call is free so many many people have adopted to that yes the healthcare services where the healthcare uh, basic checkups were bundled sir hmm. for a subscription price yes and then udemy online uh, learning services online learning services yes you can uh, subscribe for uh, by juice for an year let us yes. say if you have a kid going in class 8 you can do a six, you can take a 6 3 month 6 months and a year year subscription so yes that is also uh, that also comes under subscription plan again uh, i don't know but there were uh, previous uh, versions of windows which were not having uh, inbuilt uh, security uh, services so at that time we used to use antiviruses so we also used to uh, buy antiviruses which used to again give uh, we we can if we are using a, a saas based antivirus the automatically my uh, i i can renew my antivirus service from uh, probably after an year i can take on so two years plan also i can take a three years plan also where automatically the money will get deducted from my uh, card so again these these are some of the examples of uh, saas based uh, uh, and uh, normal subscription and yeah hari go ahead so for subscription model even instagram is also entering into the subscription model where for example if i'm having a page where i deliver some content so so to view my content the the customers have to pay me some money like a monthly basis or year, yearly basis okay. there's a new feature that instagram is adding and mm-hmm. for few customers in india instagram already introduced that service soon it will be for everyone like great so another type of uh, revenue model is the freemium model so all our uh, yeah linkedin zoom so you have a free free account and you have a premium account and the premium account will actually add in some extra benefits than the basic services so this is uh, also one of the business model that uh, businesses use so any any examples uh, for this evernote uh, because they start with a free model and then you end Evernote, up going for yes. a premium uh, model and then even the pdf so convert a word to pdf converter and all although they start free when you have more number of pages and all we end up paying for it yes even our uh, grammarly uh, grammarly just... yes free and uh, pre- free plus premium yes so students wanted to pubg to me that they can uh, like cross some levels try something so that mm-hmm. where you can yeah you can play the game for free but again if you need any uh, enhancements in the game so yes you can uh, buy them that is something in a per- i think yes. candy crush so may not consider it as a sorry sorry what uh, uh, what was ashdosh uh, just told what i think about it is as a in app purchase that may not be considered as free and uh, premium combination so in my point of view what i feel is that is an in app purchase it is not mandated that in order to play you need to purchase something if you keep playing yes you may earn them but if you want to earn some additional uh, tool or additional device you need to pay in advance without reaching that stage so that may not be considered as a freemium model again uh, so again when we talk about linkedin also so we can use linkedin services for uh, free throughout but again uh, if we want to use their premium uh, messaging service or if you want to uh, have a look at who who is uh, having uh, a look at your profile if you want to find targeted jobs so these are some of the things which come under the the premium thing right no, in other way it is in de- uh, on demand service there is something on demand service because uh, if you take few otts like a g5 or something 
mm-hmm. you can uh, get a subscription without paying anything if you want to see some better movie or a latest movie or latest content you need to switch your service a uh, type of service even that without is paying premium. any that is exactly what is premium you are part of the you service stuck, sir. yeah you get part of the service as free and then uh, and, uh, enhance you uh, you pay money you are paying for something yes even whatsapp has something like a premium service right like a business account mm-hmm. no Which- whatsapp whatsapp for business again whatsapp for business is free uh, but currently whatsapp is not charging anything it's not slack does. slack is an example yes. of premium for, for ott mx player is the one of the best example for freemium yeah. where they are having nearly 280 million subscribe, subscribers comparing to hotstar and all hotstar like the subs, like the paid services whereas they are having only 49 million subscribers but mx player is the best example. zoom also sir Yes, Sorry? Zoom. Yeah, Zoom. Zoom yeah. Basic, and uh, we have an advanced Dropbox. Dropbox. But uh, when we take classes on premier, uh, this particular business model, uh, we also quote Candy Crush as an example because students related yes, very yes. easily. You know? So we use Candy Crush there. Also. So again, uh, yes, this is uh, basically an integration of an IoT and. Uh, a normal uh, service and uh, again this is also uh, given on subscription model so uh, when me and adash was actually we were discussing adash told me about uh, uh, an and a device which we can uh, place uh, on uh, our washing machine so at that washing machine uh, and that uh, device what it will capture is it will capture the usage of uh, the detergent it will capture the usage of other things and it will automatically order from my amazon uh, id so again that is something uh, which is very it, it's an basically an integration of both iot and uh, subscription so it it automatically uh, orders my uh, per monthly stock it collects the data and w- how much i am consuming per month every month it is uh, giving me uh, that much amount of uh, detergent so that is uh, one uh, uh, model shared economy model yeah so again so this is a very famous model we have uh, a lot of uh, people currently playing in this space uber airbnb are couple of them in uh, in india we have uh, oyo we have uh, uh, we have ola who are, who are actually doing this where you are having uh, we are basically a platform which is connecting uh, the people who are having an asset with the people who wants to uh use that asset or be, who is having a utility so it's basically a bridge between the consumers and the people who are uh, owning the assets again advertising uh, model a very famous uh, all the content creators again uh, where they can uh, earn through this model and uh, so we whenever we are trying to push in a content on youtube so uh, we you can uh, again uh, after uh, getting some limit and some number of clicks you will be getting monetized for uh, the number of clicks or number of subscribers that you are having so this is also one of the model through which your business can uh, actually make money so yes so again uh, this is an example of a very uh, old company like mnm uh, and again it's it's about mars chocolate how they have transformed uh, their business model into uh, in actually getting uh, for make generating more profits so mnm was basically doing the economies of was working on economies of scale uh, model where uh, they were making low price uh, uh, chocolates and they were selling it in higher volumes but currently they have now ventured into different uh, segments so the segments which they have ventured is again uh, a premium chocolate giving segment they have ventured out in uh, opening up new stores which can actually customize these mnms for uh, gifting purposes so this is an example of how uh, you can actually uh, innovate on your business model and uh, <clears throat> you can uh, earn uh, more money and any insights uh, on this any similar examples which you have seen how business model have transformed and uh, from uh, a particular type to another so ashutosh probably i think uh, no adash was discussing about uh, one example before baskets uh, big basket to big basket daily 
big basket daily yes yeah uh, uber uh, which has moved from uh, giving taxi service into ev bikes okay So one thing which is still in the works. I read an interview last uh, week was from the McDonald's current CEO. So he is saying that the, the biggest challenge that he is facing is that he has to move from the mass factory production model into customization model. So how do, does he do that? Will that's still in the works? So we'll get to know maybe in a couple of quarters what was the journey and what is the output. But he, they are struggling with this thing. That earlier people were kind of okay to have the same uh, food, but now. The customer are demand demanding a very personalized experience. So, will they be able to make the transition? How is something we'll have to see. Any any other examples of business model innovations? Actually, because uh, there is uh, when you talk about the razor and blade model. There is a reverse razor and blade model that Apple uses. Maybe okay. uh, that's actually a good model to tell to the students. <clears throat> they charge highly for everything. Yeah, initial cost is high, but the later on, the rest of the charges are very low. It's... Okay. So that that's a pricing strategy, right? <laughs> so that, that is called a reverse razor and blade model. There's a name attached to that. Okay. When we see the uh, business models of uh, of late, some of them are following Apple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have to again go and check for that. I'm not aware of. Uh, yeah, it is not there in our book. Uh, when I was researching some of the most popular mm -hmm. business models, this has come up. Oh, okay. Okay. I have observed yeah. one product uh, called Snack Tech. I don't know. I, I don't know how many of you observed mm -hmm. it. So they are direct competitor to Haldiram. There Haldiram, there is a huge demand. So when uh, Snack Tech introduced, I think till today also he's introducing with one plus one. It's very low price, almost very low price. Haldiram is a little costly, but these guys, uh, I mean, the products, are, the range is huge. At the same time, one plus one, two plus one, whenever there is a function, when is a, sorry, a festival, he's introducing really good offers actually. So within that, there are different. We are used to it now. Now presently, we are used to it. The main idea is about the offers only. Okay, thank, thanks everybody. Now uh, we have uh, yes. This is also one way of how we can uh, give an entire snapshot of uh, business. So this is the uh, a template of business model canvas where we are having uh, nine different segments which talk about nine building blocks of any uh, business model. So uh, this is uh, one. This is also one of the options that we can uh, actually give to our students when they want to talk about business model. So I, I also use this uh, very um, prevalently because I think this gives that a, a holistic uh, picture of it has everything that as you were saying operations like yes. channels that I use to sell my product, customer value proposition. And Balcom was saying, how do you link it? Back? You should always have the customer value proposition perspective when you're talking about your revenue models. So I think this has all of it. Like if you can build these nine blocks, um, yeah, I use this very extensively. Okay. I think the, uh, that's it from uh, my end. Probably uh, now Adish, if you want to give any more insights, I, I tried covering both uh, revenue yeah. model and operations in that. So probably we can uh, directly take up from uh, one thing that I just want to stress on top of what you've uh, spoken about operational models. So yeah. operational models, see any business when you're, when we're trying to operate a business. So mm, the uh, maximum amount of resources, the human resources or whatever it is needs to be spent on your core business, right? You should also try and understand what is that you have to keep in house? What is that you outsource? Yes. Right? So that is um, a lot of businesses fail there, especially startups are failing there. They're wanting to do everything in house. Yeah, if somebody else is good at it and that's not your core business, you have to just give it off to that guy and let him do that. And then you integrate it once that is done. And so I think just not revenue models, I think operational models are also equally important because you your day-to-day -day operations are dependent on that model. So you have to have a very tight operational model um, when you're drafting an operational model for, for your businesses. Uh, and uh, that's with operational models. And... Uh, 
Yeah, revenue models. I think it was very well discussed. Like Brian Lucas has. Yeah, that's. I have nothing on top of it. Uh, Lucas for revenue and operational models. Okay, so, so shall we go to the discussion? Uh, we'll just go to this. Yeah, the value. So what is value creation? How does your company create that impact or uh, value? So the question is to the audiences again. When do you? What do you think creating value is all about? Whom should this company create value to? customers consumers or anybody else customers is that all yeah i i mean for every stakeholder they have to create a value i think exactly right like investors customers uh, vendors suppliers uh, everywhere i think creating value is yeah as a business entity what am i involved with i'll have to keep adding value at all those uh, uh, points uh, that's when uh, creating uh, that's what creating value is all about right uh, monica you're just saying customers i think monica it's all the stakeholders that are involved or that are there or that are helping you operate your business yeah the value creation has to be a whole it it cannot be just your end customers and who are helping you make your business happen or operate your business you should be creating value to all these stakeholders like employees and, yeah employees your investors your banker and not yeah your suppliers even suppliers everybody who is part and parcel of your business i think uh, otherwise they'll not be part of your business right if they don't see value in uh, being associated with you as a materials provider if i don't see a uh, value in transacting with you why would i be even involved uh, uh, with you right so yeah a lot of people look at uh, look at uh, creating value in that perspective that i should only add value to the customer i don't really care how my supplier is going to suffer that's not how you work. everybody in the ecosystem uh, that is part of your business should be taken care of whether it's your customer your xyz whoever it is right and um, that's a creation of value and um, one of the impact so as a product as a company what is the impact that you uh, bring how are you changing lives people how are you changing people's lives for better so what is the just not the economical impact but also the ecological impact so what is the ecological impact that is one thing that's uh, a miss largely when people are they don't really pay any attention to okay if i were to build a certain business x so there is a certain exploitation that i to i'll have to do of the natural resources whether it's industries or anything right so how do i rebalance that um, if uh, all all those aspects so uh, uh, how do you do that um, and what is your so like you see right vision and vision statements if you look at tata's vision statement or somebody all these huge companies vision statements they spell it out very clearly right on uh, what they're wanting to do with their business or what they're wanting to do with that company yeah um, and that's the value creation impact so what is that's the impact part of the company and see this this integration part the fourth leg of the journey where so you've done all you've identified a problem you're passionate about or you're wanting to solve for then you've ideated about a solution for the problem and then you've done validations um you build business models revenue models and uh, you thought about operational models but now you have to uh, what i consider so how do you tell the story very beautifully okay you worked on it for four months now it is all it boils down to storytelling so how do you effectively communicate this message to your audiences right that's extremely important right if you you've done everything but then if you don't know how to tell your story how do you bring all these elements together and uh, and it just falls flat and so what do you do there is basically uh, making that statement impact statement okay this is what uh, we are all about and this is what we do and this is how we are creating that impact in the ecosystem that we belong to right and creating value again so how do you create that value across uh, people that are involved with you in your business right and uh, <clears throat> yeah so here i try and largely spend on just exchange of information they build slides they come back to me we do uh, um, uh, dry runs i'll i'll see what are the missing elements that these guys have okay is there anything else missing or should they add anything how do we make it crisp so how do you tell that story more effectively and uh, yeah that's largely what uh, we do in this uh, 
uh, stage four of the course. Yeah, I've kept it very crisp, but yeah, the, we yeah. do this about for four sessions, but yeah, this is largely what we do in those four sessions in two weeks. <clears throat> yeah, if I look at the diagram you showed, it's, it's a very, very American capital, capitalistic approach to, <laughs> to, you know, it's either profit or non-profit. Profit uh, means money making. Whereas in, in recent years, things have changed a lot because companies are not driven uh, by only uh, how do they, how do I create uh, uh, profit or share value for shareholders? Companies are moving away from that, saying that how do I create value for for my customers and consumers so that that brings more value to everybody else. So it's a different way of looking at things. Is that I am not then fixated on profit. Mm. Uh, I am I am uh, uh, becoming very obsessive about delivering quality value and. Uh, use utility to the to the consumer and, cus and customer. And I think that's a much better way of, uh, healthier way of running a business than just saying that, uh, you know, we have, uh, we, we want to create value for shareholders and investors uh, get upset if you're not doing things a certain way. And then you, then you respond to that rather than to uh, what, what you yeah. want uh, I mean, the thing with this whole uh, business model and then the value creation, I think it's something that you can cover very quickly. Don't spend too much time on it. Yeah, because that's uh, towards the end and, and they don't, they just need to do a couple of processes. Mm -hmm. And it's until step 18, 19, whatever, and, uh, it hasn't become clear to them what value they bring, then it's uh, somewhere along the line we have failed. <laughs> Exactly. So, and largely um, based on the construct of the course, we don't really get that sort of time, two, three weeks, because yeah. you have to do it in detail. You need that sort of time, but you don't usually get that. So, <clears throat> what I observe on the sale is uh, ah. yeah, any smart balance. So, uh, sorry, sir. Sunil, sir. Uh, hmm. Yeah, any smart investor knows that whatever is uh, the company telling, adding value to customer, they know that that will add value to them. Isn't it? So yeah. all the smart investors invest in the companies which create value for investor and uh, <clears throat> maybe uh, there is a thin uh, silver lining for the customer also there. Yeah, but that's changing. Sir. Even the, uh, like now you have value investors, impact investors, even those uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. communities. Why are India is getting so much of a foreign direct investment is because of that reason only. Because India is a big market and, and every investor from uh, uh, who is like a foreigner who, who actually looks for 2% or 3% uh, per year returns, he knows that uh, where whatever you invest in India will get that. So that is the reason we are getting so much of foreign direct investment. Correct, sir. But here in this last leg, I try and promote how do you tell a compelling story with all that you have done across three months as a team? How do you tell that compelling story? Yeah, what are the aspects that you'll have to be considerate about when you're telling that compelling story? Yeah, and that is what I would stress on. Because by then, these guys are into their labs, exams, this, that. So I don't stress a lot on other aspects. But yeah, and that's what I would keep the this uh, leg of the course to. All teams say we'll try to balance uh, economic and social impact. They put themselves in the middle. They don't yeah. know how. Yeah, that's you should ask them rather than just pointing out, okay, I'll stay in between. That doesn't mean, oh, how do you stay in between? Like what value do you add to the ecology? What uh, value do you add to the whatever that... Mm. <clears throat> so, in the morning session, uh, there was this incident like, uh, I want to earn so that I can donate. So whoever is in the middle, no, we can tell them that, okay, whatever you earn, now you donate. So you can be in the middle by doing that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, because so that's pretty much it in the last um, uh, leg of the course. Uh, uh, all we try and do for all the new champions and coaches who are trying to deliver this course, try and see to that uh, because this is the last attempt. I mean, you should get them if uh, they have to be interested or if somebody shows that initial spark um, towards the discipline of entrepreneurship, this is where you'll have to like... Uh, uh, help them out and help them with telling that story and then bring them on to this um, ecosystem. Yeah. 
<coughs> latch them. This is the last latch for you to. Yeah, if we can actually document uh, all the ideas of the VDC and put them as a um, a document and share it with everyone, no, maybe that would also help them in uh, <coughs> uh, like uh, understanding their. Uh, uh, their stance, what they are trying to do and how everyone, because it's about the peer group. So when they learn about what their peer group is doing and definitely uh, in so many people, when 6,000 students are working on it, someone will definitely have a very bright idea. So that will inspire this. You see, one of the teams uh, in my class, they talked about an app where uh, actually, you know, the app documents the traveler, his experiences. So this is a travel app, but it, it only gives content of travelers. So it will not talk about, okay, you can visit Dehradun, you can visit Simla, but it has content of someone who visited Dehradun. It will have content someone visited Shimla. So that way, you know, real-time experience are documented here and someone wants to go to Dehradun, then he actually gets first-hand information. So there is no icing on travel, right? So I thought like definitely it's a good idea. They can work on that, right? So <clears throat> when we can document, put together all the ideas, I think that that would be itself an inspiring story for everyone. If we can do that, uh, uh, VDC triple one, what are all the projects that all the students are working and make a small, simple A4 template, uh, write them about uh, their idea in that template and uh, put them all together in one single PDF file. Maybe everyone can refer to it. But actually, Sunil sir, this is uh, something we have been working on. We started, but again, uh, <coughs> we stopped in the middle. So can you share my screen for a minute? Okay, there is something called Idea Bank that Professor okay. Raja suggested where uh, I put my ideas in there. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back to you at the end of the semester, all the teams. Mm -hmm. So what is the section? What is the team name? What are they working on? What area they're working on? Who is the coach? We, we try to document all this. We're not able to do it in a perfect <coughs> way, but this is exactly what you're talking, right? In the future, when we get a similar team. Yeah. We can actually, no, we can actually give them one A4 template. And they can just put that because this, uh, that can be a, a startup for them, a creative, how to present their idea creatively in A4 also. That, that itself would be. Okay, a you're saying like a poster. Yes. Like a poster. Okay. Collect all the posters and document them. Okay. This is again, no, an Excel sheet. So not many will be interested and you can do this very easily. Send them a Google form. They will enter everything and. Uh, back end, you get all that, but a poster would be a very good idea. Anyhow, uh, we can do is probably we can ask them to uh, create a business model canvas. I think that's the best thing. And on a one page, you are getting the entire snapshot of the business. Yeah, and so, actually, you said canvas. There is a soft app called Canvas, which has uh, so many creative uh, posters uh, for free. So someone can select a poster and put all their information there. It's a very creative uh, app, Canvas, C-A-N-B-A, -A, Canva. That is the app. It is free, uh, yeah. <coughs> both iOS and uh, Android app. So they can just use that app, uh, select one of the free uh, posters there and put their idea there and uh, make a PDF and send us. That will be a little, uh, what you say, interesting for them to see their idea uh, uh, more, uh, like, uh, uh, more organized or beautiful, whatever they, it is. It would definitely uh, ignite them to have some focus on uh, <clears throat> what their idea is. Well, I, I think now uh, Rajeshwar sir can take over for uh, the evaluation part and uh, yeah I'll keep it very brief yes I'll keep it uh, very brief in our uh, champions group I'm going to post a list of uh, is, it's a small uh, google spreadsheet I want people to put 
uh, I, I put all the names and sections and everything there. Just tell me whether you have Moodle and GLearn access or not. Otherwise, I'll follow up with Rima and get uh, everyone uh, that access. So just a minute, I'm putting it in our group. Yeah. Uh, Jason, I can talk about the assessment more than the Moodle okay. issue. So, uh, this is something I want to do. I, I don't want to forget it. So I'm just sharing it now. It's, it only takes a minute. Yeah. It says request access to me, so I've requested access. Can you please give it to me? Uh, I think if you open with the Gita mail, it will open. In Gita, is it? Okay. Yeah, even with Gita mail, it uh, ah. asks, for, uh, asks to request access. So can you kind of okay, Just uh, let me share this. I'm opening it with uh, for everyone. Okay, so it should work now. <clears throat> and maybe we, we all should discuss about a fund where uh, all the teachers can invest and uh, uh, support the bright ideas from Gitan students. <clears throat> when everyone is uh, uh, able to invest somewhere. So we should have confidence in our students and we should invest. So we should have a fund. We, we do have avenues, uh, uh, Sunil Garu, uh, in terms of uh, uh, gap uh, gap funding and fund, uh, some, some grants and uh, and other things that, that uh, we do for, for uh, students. For who our teachers itself. Our teachers also. So for every, or you mean for this? No, no, no. Fund, funding, investment by our teachers also. Oh, investment by our teachers. We, say we should uh, pull money so and We should be able to make money out of our students' ideas, isn't it? <laughs> Support them okay. realistically. Like they get, they will definitely will be more confident. <laughs> All right, sir. I'll be sharing my screen now. Sir, it's asking for editing permission. Register, sir. It, it is open for everyone, sir. Just please check. I did not I open any kind of permission. No, we are unable to enter anything. I could open it, but only editing also, it is asking for permission. Rajesh, no, sir, it's only in view mode, sir. It's not in edit mode. Not edit mode. You need to give... Uh, please do edit. that. Yeah. It should work now. Oh, sir, I didn't get, sir. But I think you made it very strict taxes. <laughs> no, it, it is open for everyone. No, just please check. You need to change the access level. I changed it. Yeah, we can I didn't get the spreadsheet link on this in my mail. I'll post it in the faculty group, madam. I'll post it in our group also. Yeah, now it works. So I'll post it here in the Moodle chat as well. You can open it from here. I see some sections are not even mapped with GLearn. But can we continue while people go and uh, go ahead and do that? So let's move on to the other part, uh, Rajesh. Yes. Let people do that uh, mapping. Let me share my screen. So actually, uh, I will 
talk very generically if you have any questions i think this is more like like a discussion kind of thing we will have questions regarding this <clears throat> uh, please stop me and ask me wherever you have a question this is our general template that i shared with everyone if you didn't get it please ask me i'll i'll tell it i'll tell you where it is i can resend it again so the base premise of this is 30% is individual marks and 70% is group project this 30% i'll keep it mandatory for even for people who join late we have cases like uh, where uh, uh, people are coming like one month before the end of the semester so i will make them do all the personal assignments and i'll make them join a team at whatever stage the team is in and continue from there then i'll do the pro rata now coming to how we evaluate each one personal discovery journal this is actually the first 10% should be over in the week 4 all i am checking is it's a well defined structure to what they are supposed to do we can do it in templates or we can do it as a uh, write up this write up i usually use uh, moodle and with a plagiarism check because a lot of people tend to copy this and uh, i'll give it in two parts i'll give it in two parts the first assignment is something that we use as templates the same templates that we give them in the class i'll make all of them fill up these templates and then write a summary of it so this i'll call this assignment 1a for 5 marks and the summary that they write of this in their own words i'll give it for 5 marks and totally for personal discovery i'm give, going to give 10 marks then you you can give whatever way you like but personal discovery is 10 marks the reflection journal uh, we do in week 14 learning reflection journal it's week 14 that is like one week before the end directly one week before the end we do it it is more like a feedback that they give they tell us what they like what are the key points they took from the lectures and uh, how do they apply it to their own situation and what they want to learn in the future how do they want to apply it in the future so this also i'm going to check for uh, i'm going to post it in moodle and ask them to submit it is like one or two days work and participation and discussion is again up to debate how do you want to evaluate it some people give it based on just the attendance uh, i make them talk like in our today's uh, session is like vikas was asking questions and people were answering so i keep track of all the teams i keep track of all the teams that you can see here team 1 uh, whether they participated or not i ask them a question sometimes they come for discussion i keep all this who's participated and i keep a track of all this and uh, mark them for participation that is what i do just to make up for the marks i give them some certain topics at the end and ask them to speak on a certain topic any any topic in case they want the participation marks that is what i do Uh, again it's up to you how you want to do that then going to the team work ideation the surprising thing is only as of now we have only 5 marks for the ideation the templates that we give for ideation i already showed you uh, um i give some idea uh, templates for ideation so that is assignment i call it assignment 2 and i call, uh, kind of give these templates uh how to build a team how to define purpose and all this kind of stuff and ideation together each one come up with an idea and discuss it and again finally how to increase the impact of your idea explain it because it's only 5 marks i don't stress a lot on this which but it's a wrong uh, process it's a wrong process like balkuma said and everyone said ideation is a very important aspect but from the grading point of view we only have 5 marks then this second part step number 7 customer insight uh, customer insight so i make them i i make them uh, do surveys and interviews the four things they supposed to submit latent needs use cases customer interviews template that will show me and some people do the observations and interviews also observations surveys and stuff like that so i personally make them present here i don't give them any template just ask them to present whatever they have done this is the presentation i take the marks i do the cross questioning viva about the presentation i ask them what each person has contributed based on that i allot this 15 marks and they upload the presentation that is the assignment i don't give any other template for assignment this is already over for me so this is currently what i am doing the concept design the cvp i ask them to make a pictorial cvp then the competitive analysis uh, product system this is the prototype 
product line i'll make it optional in this reality check they ask me i ask you ask them to do reality check with one or two professional people that's it because the time is a constraint here i check for this again they make a presentation i weed out people who didn't work based on the uh, responses they give during the presentation and uh, the the what they upload is just the presentation i don't give any template so this is the tricky part here the business model in the last one in the last discovery integration we don't have much gap in here so for 35 marks if you don't have time this business model and this discovery integration together for 35 marks you can do a common presentation but what i do it for the because it's high weightage i sit with each team i sit with each team at the end of the presentations and make sure uh, everyone has a contribution in it based on that i'm going to evaluate here all this comes up to all this comes up to like uh, <clears throat> 100 marks even with or without model if you have this template ready personal discovery learning reflection all this we have this template ready it is just like 10 minutes work to enter it into model once everyone gets model access that is the general uh, way that i do it if you have any questions please ask how much difference are there between the team member score from the same group there can be because uh, i've seen some teams saying okay this person is not responding this person is not doing anything if they teammates teammates give up to them, give give up give them up i'll not give if they are absent and they don't respond i'll give them a zero the absent for the presentation the teammates said don't say anything, didn't do anything i'll give them a zero the teammates back them up and they do if i don't uh, see enough performance i'll give them a little like 5 to 10 marks difference <clears throat> usually i grade the teams immediately based on uh, uh, immediately after the presentation so this is a 15 mark presentation i gave the average mark as 9 somebody didn't come i didn't give them anything 10 8 just, just that way there is nothing like a, a fixed mark i i keep track of uh, what each one is doing what is the feedback i give them whether they included the feedback in the next presentation or not Uh, i keep track of all that and uh, that is how if anyone questions me again then why did you do this because this is the proof i showed them and this presentations nowadays the advantage of the big advantage of presentations online is we can record them and keep them so, so this is what i do so please ask questions what is the if please, somebody has a better suggestion please tell me let us all implement that <coughs> Sir, out of this, uh, sir, I'm Shruti, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, sir. I think this uh, out of 35, what I thought, uh, five or ten marks, maybe peer review. They can give mark to their team uh, mates, but I don't know offline mode. I thought like that, but I don't know how to do in online mode. Uh, so that's no. what I thought actually. I yeah, mean, at least five marks we can give <laughs> instead of blaming each other. They can actually give marks. Uh, uh, that's five marks for everyone, ma'am. If you do that. Uh, I don't think so, sir. Because one group actually, they genuinely actually gave two, one them zero. They put I don't know. So it's happening. So I don't know. Uh, so so that's one suggestion asking, I have. If Madam is asking if somebody joins a team after ideation presentation, there are people joining a team after two or three presentations, Madam. So what I do is I'll just uh, put them for uh, from wherever this after the last twenty marks, thirty marks, I'm going to evaluate, and then based on what they get overall, I'm going to correlate it to hundred. That's it. if they join late uh, they are not at fault because the university admitted them but if they didn't join a team there from the beginning they didn't join a team then we don't have any obligation to give them any marks so how how much weight did you give to the correctness of the information that they fill in the templates rajesh sir uh it is i don't i mean i, I exactly i'm honestly speaking i cannot judge whether the information is right or wrong i just look at the uh, the way they put presented and the amount of effort they put in how confidently they are answering that's it because when you're talking about prototypes and everything some of the prototypes even i don't know these electronic prototypes and all they give me i don't even know whether they're right or wrong yeah but that isn't really fair to people right i think uh, what i've been stressing from the beginning we need to make sure that they and un- un- they get uh, the insights right their uh, Uh, they understand the, the the process right. Not that they should have every piece of information absolutely accurate. You you know whether you know it or not. There are you know 
how how does the thinking evolve from uh, from uh, day one all the way till uh, till the end so by having them fill in templates and and then uh, grading them on whether they filled it in or not no no uh, only templates are only up to ideation after that there are no templates after that they ask them to do every work put work some very it. mechanical uh, kind of grading to it rather than uh, helping them understand how 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 to pitch i uh, i would uh, think and my personal opinion is that the final pitch is very very important Yes. Is that we understand what they have done, and that's where uh, uh, you know uh, you you grade them. That's where the thinking comes in. Otherwise, it's just filling in 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 forms. I don't know how the others do it. Um, <clears throat> could you just go back to the previous slide? Yes. Uh, so what I was thinking is when I am to grade my students uh, as discussed, I would be grading them on all these factors in their final presentation. Right now, they are doing some presentations where I'm trying to improvise by, you know, having all these things getting incorporated in a way that they understand, right? So rather than asking them to fill the operating model template or customer journey templates per se as such, if they can deliver this through their final presentations, I think that's how I would want to grade them not ask them to fill those pages and upload it on Moodle or something like that. I mean, that's yeah, my yeah. take. Yeah, it's just present it. They can present it in whatever way they want. Yes. They, uh, only up to ideation, I give them templates. After that, I post the templates, but they don't have to follow the templates. Those concepts should be there in the presentation. That's it. I okay. only check the presentation. Whether they have the business model, whether they have the revenue model incorporated in the presentation, that is all I'm checking. I, they don't have to follow the exact template. And one more controversial thing is the industry analysis. We haven't even covered that here, uh, but there is a uh, mark for industry analysis. I ask them to do, I'll give extra, I'll uh, see what kind of work they do industry analysis, but they cannot do a good job here. Some things maybe we should skip. It's up to us. <clears throat> Sir, in a model, actually, um, because the it's a teamwork, every team is uploading the same presentation because for grading purpose also, I told them. So uh, that is one thing. Second thing, <clears throat> we have made like, a, I mean, I'm just uh, it's, uh, sharing my experience. We have made like a team lead for each and every team so that I can make a one point contact uh, that based on the topic. If one team lead is for this topic is somebody's leading, other person can read it so that uh, for every time I need, need to contact so many people, all the team members, but just uh, for encouraging purpose, I told them to give some bonus for the team leads. So they are coming forward. I will take the lead kind of. Hey, but, you, uh, you yeah. yeah, in model, I got it. Everybody is uploading on their the same present. They are uploading. Mm -hmm. that, that is that is not uh, uh, that is that is extra just extra work for us, sir. So only one then how do I how do I grade it? it? One person and they will upload. How do I grade it? I mean, for grading, it is grading. Uh, pattern, uh, when you grade in the Moodle, unless even if it's the same assignment, unless each person is uploaded, you cannot actually put in a grade book, right? Exactly. But That's what yeah, I'm. No, no, madam, no, madam. I set up a grade book and we can manually enter marks in the grade book, or you can enter it here in the, in the template and you can upload this as it is. Yeah, but this yes. is again extra work for us. Rather, let them upload the same uh, presentation and across their name, we will just grade. That would be an easier way to do it, right? It's, yeah. it's up to you, madam. I mean, I would I would not want to grade so many. I don't know which one is right. Everyone in the team uploading the same presentation. So I would uh, just put it here and upload it there. It's up to you again. Again, there is no restriction on that. Whichever way you prefer. So you're grading whenever that, that particular presentation is complete, right? And uh, yes. putting it on Excel. As soon as the presentation is over, there itself, there will be cross-questioning, finding out who's working and who's not. Like It's like a viva. There itself, I fill it up. So where are the, those templates that you've given them? Uh, where are those marks uh, being added? In which uh, column here? Here, I mean, uh, for customer insight, for solution design, for each, for each presentation, uh, I add the marks here. Yeah, but you give them some uh, some templates to fill, right? You give them some ten or fifteen templates that you ask them to fill. Where yes. do the uh, where do the marks for those templates go? Here. In ideation and impact. So uh, for uh, up to uh, for personal discovery, I gave uh, some templates. For ideation, I gave some uh, templates. Uh, whatever material we have, I, I posted. But uh, from customer inside, they don't have to give any templates. They just have to upload the presentations. 
So these these marks that you gave are based on the presentation. Yeah, presentations and viva. So who's done what? I, I asked them who's done what. So based as a team, I'll talk to them and I'll discuss the overall quality plus individual work. So you didn't add anything for uh, attendance. So that you can use it in participation and discussion, sir. However, you want to see participation and discussion. If you want it as attendance, you do it. Okay. Okay. Can't give marks for attendance. You say yeah, actually that... technically there is no marks for attendance, but uh... participation and discussion is is during the class, during the presentation, and during the team meetings. It's not you. You can't give a mark of ten if you got hundred percent attention and mark of seven if you got no 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 no. This is only for uh, attendance. The rule is seventy-five percent. If they don't have, they can. Uh, they, they, the results will be withheld. I don't know if that still works now, but that's that's a different thing that you uh, register differently. For DBC, for I don't think uh, that. Uh, that for architecture department, we have no sir. We have actually in our course syllabus generally. 10% reserved for only 10% in 10% from 75% to uh, 100%. There is a grade in that generally. If there is 95 to 100, you will get 10, 10 marks kind of thing. I don't know about the GST, the other department. There is, it, it is common across all, all streams, sir. Oh, Actually, that's what I'm asking. Here, if I see here, what I did last time was if somebody has attendance of over 75%, I gave them five marks just for mm -hmm. attendance. Because okay. it was an online mode. The online mode, uh, uh, some people are saying we, we were there, but we're not able to speak because of network problems and everything. And people who come, he spoke, who contributed, I give them 10 marks. People who never spoke, but they have the attendance go greater than like 75%. I gave them five marks just because of these companies. So what you've done is uh, purely on attendance now, right? No. Uh, this was from last semester. Five marks for attendance and five marks for uh, any time to That's discuss right. in the class. What about the other guys? How are you doing it, Vikas, Ashutosh? Others and other uh, camps. We need to. Be, yeah. For me, just attendance is not enough to give uh, give people marks. I think it has to be because about participation and discussion. Attendance is a mandatory component of any course. So, uh, so we I've never seen anybody giving marks for attendance in my uh, experience. I I also don't do that, sir. Uh, so uh, the. One thing which I ensure is uh, probably uh, there are three components on which I uh, do this grading. One, again, uh, if the person is having uh, like, where, so the uh, attendance probably I'll take into consideration if the person is having 0% attendance. Right. So yeah. I, I cannot, so that's like the only case where I, I cannot evaluate that person because that person has not attended any of the session. So I don't know, like, uh, even if he's mapped or he or she's mapped in any group or not, what is happening? I'm not even sure. So this happened with me in my previous, uh, I think, yes, last, uh, last semester one, when, when a couple of uh, students, they were engaged in some sports activity, but again, so they, they were never there. So I cannot give them marks uh, for participation and discussion because they have not attended any of the session. Second thing which I see is how these guys are interacting in our day-to-day -day interactions when we are talking in uh, classes, how are they responding? So probably there will be a handful of people out of, uh, if you, you are having a class of uh, 60, what I have seen is around, uh, you'll have around 10 or 12 people. If they are there in the class, they'll probably be responding all the time. So these are the students who will be, who probably I'm uh, evaluating, who I'm scoring them on a higher bit than others. Again, I take a feedback uh, from all the groups. So uh, what I do is I create a, I make a point of contact in all the groups. So whenever I'm taking presentation, <coughs> people tell that, okay, these are uh, some of, these are the contributions. These are the people who have contributed in making uh, so and so. Let us say they, he has helped us. He has given me the information on, uh, uh, he has done the market research. I have made the slides. So. Again, if there are some people who have not contributed at all, so I, I don't evaluate them better in this moment. So the, on these three bases, I uh, do the, the judgment of participation and discussion. Yeah. So you're talking about contributing in, in the form of information and everything. That is per assignment, I would do it. So he's contributing for uh, towards the presentation for customer insight. I would give him marks for that assignment only. It doesn't count under total participation and discussion for me. 
okay so if you're asking questions and getting in a teaching asking questions they're going to answer that is what i count as participation actually no the, that is the uh, the uh, issue there because you have a group project and a group is evaluated okay uh, individuals in the group are, are, are going to be evaluated in the participation uh, participation and discussion bit if that individual has never been present uh, by exception that person uh, is a, is a zero in, in in the group because they they should not be getting anything uh, from from being named <coughs> as they were shown up in fact if they're not shown up they will probably not be part of the group anyway so uh, so that's what we you need to make sure if you if everybody in the see it's also a team exercise so if everybody unless somebody has done nothing at all and it's difficult for us to judge that some person has done a 10 versus an 8 versus a 7 okay because uh, uh, we are not there in all the meetings and uh, we can't get feedback every single time so i think uh, by default unless there's a uh, this is what my uh, opinion is this is how i would do it by default uh, if a group gets a, a certain grade based on on what they have done and what they have presented that would uh, that grade would uh, automatically be the same one for every member in that group unless there's somebody who was say who, who the group leader says or somebody says this person has never come at all uh, to the meetings even though he was there uh, in the lectures and all that then you take that call so i think first you have to do this and then uh, take the call of whether somebody has been so un cooperative or, or not involved at all that that you should uh, uh, really cut marks otherwise by uh, by default it's about what the group gets is what each individual in, in that group gets and uh, you can you can always panelize them on the uh, on, on the discussion bit right the personal uh, uh, what is that that interaction and discussion if you panelize them two places you know uh, that double penalty is not really very fair and then if some people do a lot of work you can identify some people doing a lot of work and some people just contributing a little uh, it's not fair to give all of them same marks right and so you we have some teams there some people that are already in rsg they do majority of the work the others just write no, down don't bring rsg in here no no just it's an example some people do a lot of work some people just write along bring a bring if those uh, the, those who write along you'll be able to identify i'm saying that you want to penalize them in uh, in in more than one place yeah then 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 you say that if they're just writing along so uh, we'll give them zero and everything see it's it's a, it's a bit difficult the point here is not to make them uh, uh, you know not to penalize them unnecessarily or, or double penalize it try to make sure that what uh, whether they've actually done something and and learned something okay it's a difficult thing but i think we have to look at i saw a couple of cases where you had somebody got only 5 marks yeah what is that uh, the five were in the interaction bit so they got a uh, marks for attendance or for interacting for attendance for attendance for they attendance. got the marks because they attended all the classes they got 75% attendance i had to uh, give them some marks but they didn't do anything else i gave them a zero i don't know anyway <laughs> uh, we will have to uh, kind of uh, harmonize the way uh, the course is graded we'll take that up as uh, as a lesson for uh, uh, for next semester yeah and uh, we have two students in ba psychology they are doing alone only they don't i mean one girl she doesn't want to team up with anything so she has been this is why she wanted to do only alone single team so finally i allowed it so i i didn't uh, i try to you know convince them convince her to you need to make a team so but finally you know this is my unique project i don't have any relevant i mean um, like minded people or something she told so finally going there another girl she is visiting she is a uh, badminton player so she frequently she took permission from the college uh, that uh, only once in one day in a week she is coming to college so she said i have to do alone only so we am I'm, i'm just updating you only there is nothing to do with you but there is no team actually she is there the, those two girls are doing alone single team are they submitting everything sir they are they are submitting that's it <laughs> as long as they are submitting as long as they are submitting i i don't have any problem yeah. 
they have to be i mean they should be working in teams they should not be working alone it's not like uh, uh mine is a unique idea and i don't have anybody else come on that that doesn't work we, we, it's a requirement of this class that you work in teams okay. in end of yeah i told yeah. her i finally yeah. we will uh, you you can probably work out something by saying okay lectures you may you you may miss one or something but you will not miss uh, the team assignment that's the, that's the majority of the grade there are no exams in between there is no exam sir but uh, she said uh, sir, yeah. otherwise you convince as anybody member how they can join with me that's no, what you have to convince her <coughs> what is so unique about her uh, her problem or solution or whatever Is she's that... she's completing all the templates and she has. Because everything there is nothing we can do, I guess. Because because, um, because yeah. she also asking me, sir, if you otherwise you take initiation, somebody to join in my team. So it's it's a teaming building a team itself is individual responsibility. Finally, otherwise if anybody don't have team, I am joining them. But she is very specific that I don't want. I mean, I don't have anybody for my topic. I don't have anybody. So it happened for two weeks. Finally, she is going ahead with the completing all the work. For me, it doesn't work, and I, I, I exception. Tomorrow, sixty students come and say we want to work individually. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. Tell me what you want. I have a suggestion for the grading parameter. Uh, I don't know right now if it is something that we can take in, but then it's just a suggestion, you know, because ultimately the course has been designed in such a way that everybody gets to know about entrepreneurship, and if they have something, they can you know go ahead and do it kind of. Uh, so it's not that it's a subject, and we are you know pushing them to do it, and uh, you need to score them or something. So let's do away with the scoring portion of you know ten marks for this, five marks for this. Ten marks for this. Instead, look at their involvement. Look at how much each person has contributed. How much each one has involved in it, and uh, how much have they taken out of that particular course? And then give them grades, like say A, A plus, or B, or C. You know, rather than individually putting marks like this. I, I mean, that's my take. It's just a suggestion. Finally, we have to upload marks only. Our system only takes marks and it converts into grades. But then this is a different course, right? So it's. It's not like the regular. Yeah. I yeah. could. Sorry, I... yeah. when you tell them that there are no marks, uh, they will not show interest. <laughs> they will not show interest. <laughs> so, uh, carrot and uh, stick model but marks. <laughs> but the grade also matters, no? So, like in case they need a degree certificate, they should have a particular grade. So yes. that grade will be dependent on their overall participation rather than individually telling them for attendance you get five, for this you get five, for that you get five. You know, I'm no, telling they are, you. They are so grade. smart that they they yes. see the marks and they work in that area only. So yes. if uh, uh, Rajeshwar is giving five marks for attendance, they just come seventy five percent attendance that they take the five marks. So. They're very smart people. Like uh, faith in the students. Okay. Yes, yes. sir. Like, there are few students already inquiring about what if they fail in the subject, how to uh, attend again. Uh, so there is <laughs> after reminding. You, you know, I guess great. Great. these are the common question we get for uh, people who fail in the exam. Absolutely. Uh, since this is, if it has to be treated like a lab, they have to come in summer, attend at pay six thousand five hundred, and attend twenty classes in summer just to get a pass mark. So that is a punishment. That is a punishment to the faculty, sir, not to the student. I, I handled it last time, sir. Only one faculty will handle it. It is a common process, not just for VDC for any subject that doesn't have a final exam. This is the process. But the, will the faculty be incentivized for running them through that? They said they will, but it's been a an year and they have been incentivized. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, like called RC, right? Sir? RC only, right? RC. Yeah, RC. Definitely, any creative process, no evaluating and putting marks is a very tough thing for the teacher. It's not tough for the students. It's very very tough for the teacher when you have to evaluate some creative work. So definitely, the teacher's experience itself will be able to guide them uh, <coughs> in doing that evaluating the students. So definitely, there is a bunch of students out of sixty. Uh, at least ten to twelve, um, who are uh, non-starters, who are introverts, or whatever the reason is, they will never be able to uh, show interest in the course, right? So rest all forty or forty-five. Among them, as someone was saying, you no, know, ten to twelve people are very, uh, very interesting and forthcoming. So for them, 
it is easy for us also to make a judgment but in between those 20 students we have to work hard like what rajesh rajesh sir has did the excel sheet so that is the only solution we can do sridhar did you have any uh, do you have similar situations in any of your courses in tortilla uh we have and you know what what we always uh, we thought we will not have to fail anybody right in term one we had to uh, pull off one person because that person did not even submit anything right i was like you know i mean our evaluation are like very experienced you just have to go think and write it's not even as if you have to uh, stick to a framework or anything like that if you had only put pen to paper you would have done that right so we will have these bad eggs and i think uh, uh, we are doing more work with the university leadership because of that one particular guy <laughs> right uh, we didn't want to go down to defining supplementary path what if the supplementary fails and all of those things we did not intend to do in the first year itself but unfortunately <coughs> but having said that uh, uh, you know uh, the query i had was how many of the students are still grappling with basic english in your class right it's one thing to for me to give this entire book and say fill it up and come but uh, i'm scared that couple of my students will really not even be able to get through it right so do i fail them what do i do right i think as institutions of higher education uh, failing is not our default option right what ladders do we help them put and and pass over if that person is not trying at all then it's a different case but in this case we see that they are trying but you know business model unit economics all of these things will i mean they may not even grasp it conceptually yes so how can we be fair to everybody in the class so sometimes what happens in my uh, sessions where uh, when i'm taking presentation there are a lot of time when students get uh, stuck up and they are very much scared to even speak because they are not uh, very much comfortable in with english so sometimes i ask them okay you start off in telugu no issues you switch your language because i just want to know what is that the student wants to convey so i i again uh, uh, the meet, they they have give i give them full marks for their uh, effort that they have tried but again uh, i also want to know what the, what is the content that that person uh, is uh, trying to convey and uh, yes i like probably if they want to do it in hindi or uh, telugu this i i give them an option to switch over in between the presentation if they are not comfortable this is the way to go because by the time they come to the end they will definitely show some improvement yeah yeah they, they, they will catch up initially we should not demoralize them because they can't speak english we will oh, let no. them speak in any way by the by the time they come they will automatically catch up they and gradually i have seen by the end uh, some of them actually come and give a presentation so they they take they, they i tell them uh, boss you can come to me if you need any help you can take help of uh, so and so people who have done well in your class so uh, again take help if you need anything from my side tell me i am definitely here and if you show that faith to them definitely they will improve and you can see that the students uh, are progressing <coughs> in the direction even I personal think... discovery people have questions about this language they are afraid And that also we can tell we're not going to evaluate you for your vocabulary we're only going to evaluate for you for your thoughts that's it I yeah think... i mean so what i will do is uh, uh, rajeshwar has discussed i'll run the first template uh, the first template i think all my students will be able to do uh, the second template is what we will kind of see how that uh, works through right and then as you said the 70 the, the 70% of the mark uh, it's we can make a subjective assessment Yeah. yeah it it need not be just section wise 5 10 15 but that's a broad guideline but yeah. overall if i can give a sense of saying where this 70 where they are on this 70 i think that should be fair enough mm-hmm. so okay. Okay. so let's work out uh, sorry balmanch is it's one one more thing sure. we'll just kind of sort out this moodle wala thing in the coming week right yeah, and yes. then uh, uh, a message for a general message through vdc2 because reema anyway said she wanted yeah so i will i will send Great. it thank you help me with that and then uh maybe i'll sit with you and uh, revise uh, how they have submitted what they have submitted let's uh, let's do it like this because we want to solve that problem here uh, and we already over time is that uh, continue the way you're doing it uh, maybe in uh, by early next week we'll sit together and figure out a, a, a balanced fair way of how you want to distribute the mark 
and then everybody can follow that. So at least the, all the students are treated fairly. Yeah, uh, it's up to you to decide uh, who's uh, done well, who's not. But uh, the criteria, at least we can uh, we can think about. So Rajesh, uh, Vashutosh, uh, Adarsh, and uh, Vikas, we need to sit together uh, before that and, and come to an agreement so everybody can use the same way. And then we can make drastic changes uh, or, or any bigger changes for next semester. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's park that discussion on on the grading uh, and what they need to submit now. Uh, I think we are we are at the end of the uh, of this uh, session. We kind of deliberately uh, made it a workshop like thing where we could uh, interact and get a lot of uh, feedback from all of you. And hopefully uh, that has happened. Uh, you have you are happy with uh, with with interaction. You're happy with some of the. Uh, maybe some of your doubts that you had have, uh, are, are clear or they're not clear. If they're not clear, please uh, contact us and, and let us know. We want to make this uh, 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 a very useful course, not only for you, uh, but for, for, for the students. I mean, let me be uh, very clear. We are extremely proud of this course. Yeah, uh, not many people say that about courses they teach. We are proud of it because this is teaching them some life skills that are of, uh, of, uh, of great use. They may not become entrepreneurs, that's fine. But this gives them the skills to actually also uh, become very effective and successful in, in any jobs that they do. And, and I think that's, that's something uh, we want to hang on to and be proud of and make, make, uh, keep making improvements. All that you have suggested today, uh, a lot of stuff I've written down, uh, uh, we will take into account and then come back to you. And then uh, we want to constantly strive to make this, the course better and better. How do you make it more experiential? You know, <clears throat> reduce the amount of lecturing that we do and increase the amount of interaction that you do. Uh, to be honest, the first, uh, when, when I uh, was thinking about the two problems in the morning and I said, I'll do it that way. I was uh, just taken aback with the, with the whole, way the whole discussion went and it was beyond my expectations. We need that kind of engagement for, from our students also. Otherwise, they just listen to you and then go back and then say, uh, which, uh, which is what is in the portion and what shall I read and what shall I not read kind of stuff. Yeah. So let's keep continue to, uh, uh, to do this. We have about two weeks left in the, in the current semester. So uh, make sure that uh, you know, it goes well. Uh, you don't concentrate on finishing the, the whole portion or something, but at least re, re, bring them to a point where they say, okay, you can uh, you can have a nice uh, presentation done at, at this end. If they don't do a, uh, somebody doesn't do a business model canvas, fine, but you can always question them as to why it is important and, and uh, things like that. Any help you need, uh, we are available if you want us to help you with the grading or sit in on uh, on your presentations of your students. I'm, uh, we are all happy to do. Uh, and so let's work together. Yeah, Muktesh, you had a question? Sir, uh, I would like to invite some of the senior coaches for the next presentation if anybody has time. And uh, so that just just to have some <laughs> look at the deal. So uh, who can help? In the champions group, just uh -huh. the timings where your uh, presentation is. And then we, uh, whoever is free will come. Just yeah, I'll I'll keep in touch. So if possible, I'll I'll give my timing. So only just uh, to confirm, give is everything going right or wrong? I mean, not wrong. To so some suggestions may be required. That's it. Yeah. And <coughs> one, more, one more suggestion is like, can we have uh, both the fifty minutes club together in the timetable? Like fifty fifty minutes is seems to be very um, very tight to do something. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So if we can have both the 50 minutes together in a week, no, definitely the delivery would improve. Yeah. Because just 50 minutes, no, going there <clears throat> and uh, starting off and then how to end the in 50 Attendance. Minutes. Attendance and all, we are losing a lot of time. The global uh, Geetam timetable and see how we can fit that. So maybe one more aspect to think about uh, for next semester yes yeah okay so anytime any questions come up keep the dialogue going uh, uh, write to us or put it in the group uh, uh, please free feel free to contact any of us one of us individually too so thank you all thank you so much uh, for spending this holiday 
and uh, sir balkuma sir i need one minute from you yeah gautam sorry to stop you there uh, so i think uh, we just have listened about an example someone told uh, after having so many issues maggie still is doing good uh, if possible just try to spend 20 to 30 seconds on that in spite of issues maggie is still doing good i i have a view and uh, maybe that's not the right view but uh, it it goes back to the history maggie established itself uh, Uh, very very strongly when there were no no competitors so it became the the snack of choice for uh, people so while we were, as we were talking about the pani puri thing is the original the quality of the original concept yeah sure. it's convenient they're not selling quality and great taste and all that convenience and okay taste so that you can have a cheap uh, a snack and that really uh, you know uh, pounded the, the the point into everybody's head and uh, people embraced it even when this this sloppy uh, handling of the entire controversy came which was uh, obviously was some ulterior motive there he um, uh, and nestle stuck to their point nestle stuck to the point that it does not have higher levels of msg it is within the limits and we are we are standing behind everything that uh, even the indian company does the global so that's one thing that raised the trust in people and after that once the ban got lifted they just uh, came back with a bang and you should not underestimate the other players they didn't do anything during this time they didn't say we will fill that gap that nestle is leaving because they just didn't ramp up production or 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 uh, 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 run an advertising campaign that would help uh, their product so you know ultimately from 80% before it's now what 70% or so 70 75% uh, now so that's my take maybe other people have other thank you sir thank you the, the only reason why i asked about the, the i personally got connected to maggi and that was the first recipe whatever i cooked so far so i just wanted to ask that question thank you sir all right so thanks again everyone and uh, special thanks to uh, vikas rajeshwar ashutosh adarsh and uh, raja for their time and uh, really helping us along in the journey so Take care, everyone, and uh, see you online or offline somewhere. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all, and a good trip for everyone. Thank you for your participation. Thank you, sir.